has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome in to the finals day here, playoffs in the Ford Futsal Super League 2023. Uh, we've got an early start, but a very exciting day lies ahead for us. Um, we'll take a quick look at the fixtures before we crack into the discussion. So first up on the live stream, we'll have the women's semi-final. Canterbury United Pride playing Wybot Power. Obviously yesterday Wybot Power delivered Canterbury United Pride their first loss of the season. So the Pride will be wanting to fix things up ahead of that game and it'll be super exciting to see how that result turns out. Over on court number two in the women's semi-final is Capital Futsal playing Papakura City and we'll be delivering you live updates uh, as that game progresses. At 10 o'clock on the live stream court, the men's semi-final will be Capital Futsal playing Southern United in the first v fourth place, second v third place semi-final, I apologise. And then over on court number two is Auckland City playing Canterbury United Dragons. Still to be decided, obviously, at the result of these women's semi-finals at 12 o'clock will be the women's grand final. Uh, and also at 12 o'clock on court number two, the fifth and sixth playoff between Southern United and Central Futsal. And then, last game of the day, 2 p.m., the men's grand final right here on the live stream. Uh, and following that, we'll be doing the prize giving, uh, giving away the awards and the, obviously, trophy for the champions of the 2023 Ford Futsal Super League. My name's Jack Senning. It's an uh, honour to be here and delivering a super exciting day, the, the penultimate day of this year's competition. Uh, we'll be joined by Katie Barrett uh, for commentary on this match and we'll throw it over to the commentary bench to look at the lineups. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the first semi-final of the day here in the finals of the Ford Futsal Super League 2023. Exciting game coming up here on the live stream, Canterbury United Pride playing Y Bop Power. And we'll take a 
quick look at the lineups very shortly. Joined in commentary today by Katie Barrett. Katie, pleasure to have you here with us. Thanks, absolutely buzzing to be back down at Arco Tangi Sports Centre. Plenty of fond memories down here myself and excited to watch some entertaining football this weekend. Yeah, and I'm sure that's absolutely what we have <laughs> coming up. Obviously, yesterday we saw Wybot Power beat this very strong Canterbury United Pride side two goals to one for the Pride's first loss of the season. As we get their lineup on screen now, looking at the starting five for Canterbury United Pride, Mackenzie Falco gets a starting goal, Jennifer Merkin, Serena Patel, Frankie Morrow, and Brittany Lee Nicholson round out their starting five. Very strong lineup for the Pride there. And on the sub bench, Scarlett Gray, Samantha White, Elena Firth, Lily Fisher, Elise Jackson, Rachel Brody, Daisy Myers, Dasha Keegan, and Petra Boyek. And coached obviously by Ronan Nyka over on the Pride. Flicking to uh, Wybot Power team. Uh, we've got Nikki White starting in goal, Courtney Stone, Stevie Lee Tiller. Jamie Evans and Lily Muspratt will be our starting five for the day. And on the bench, Kate Snowball, the backup goalkeeper. Brooke Barclay, Neve Simpson, Neve Carter, Morgan McCormack, Fatima Hussein Ali, Emma Brown, Eve Mastuski, and Alossi Bloomfield rounding out that bench. And coached obviously by Kieran Mastuski. So very exciting matchup here for the first game of the day. Obviously on paper, you'd say the pride. Uh, the, the better of the two teams, although <laughs> given the result yesterday, uh, Wybot Power with their win, uh, anything can happen. Any early predictions for the game, Katie? Yeah, I would have I would have probably gone pretty confidently with Pride, but after hearing that result yesterday, it's it's always a tricky one. Do the Pride, does that play on their mind a little bit going into this game? Does the Power come in with some confidence? Or does the Pride just show them why they've been finalists for many years? Um, and do they come out on top? It's, it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I expect Patel and uh, Nicholson to be a real impact right from the start. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. So it's, <laughs> it's an exciting start to an 8 o'clock morning, that's for sure. Yeah, it'll get us. Uh, don't need the morning coffees with this bit of action uh, lined up for us. Um, as you say, Patel and Nicholson both very high up on the Resine Golden Boot goal scorer rankings. 13 goals for Serena Patel, putting her clear in first place. Um, and Brittany Lee Nicholson, joined by her teammate Frankie Morrow on nine in second. Also worth mentioning Jennifer Merkin down in fourth place on seven goals. So I've got goal scorers in this team. Can't count out the defensive record of the Pride as well. Uh, with the two goals conceded yesterday, that makes only 12 goals conceded across the entire competition uh, for the Pride. So just as strong going forward as they are going back. But as we saw yesterday, the power, they know how to beat this team. And they'll be hoping to pull off another potentially surprising victory here. Certainly would be on paper an upset, but as we know and as the Super League has shown us this season, anything can happen in futsal. Absolutely, and that's the great part of this new format of the Ford Futsal Super League, I think. You're giving all the teams a chance for finals futsal and to have four teams really competing right at the end, I think that's a credit to where the women's game has got in the last couple of years. So. Yeah, it's anyone's game, and I can't wait to see who's in the game at 12 o'clock later on today. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously over on court number two at the moment, we've got uh, Capital Futsal playing Papakura City, another rematch from yesterday. Uh, we'll be giving you live score updates from that court. Looks like it's kicked off and is underway. And we get underway here for the first game of finals in the Ford Futsal Super League. Canterbury United Pride to start. And... An early interception there on this left flank gives Canterbury United Pride a kick in. And solid defensive work there from Jamie Evans on this left side. As you say, the women's game uh, growing, leaps and bounds. There's obviously a few familiar faces in this Pride team, but also a few young players on both sides starting to come through and show what they're worth. Uh, what can you tell us about some of the players that you're familiar with uh, on the court, Katie? Yeah, I mean, we've seen Patel and Nicholson for many years in the Super League absolutely dominating at times, um, especially with their individual 1v1 play. But you look at the likes of Daisy Myers, who I, I remember as a young girl coming to watch Canterbury Pride week in, week out when the tournament would be down here. So it's really cool to see her playing with who used to be some of her idols, and hopefully she'll go and be an idol for someone else. As Patel has a little breakaway here, 2v1, playing in tomorrow. Just wide of the goal. Nikki White did well to make herself nice and big there. Yeah, good early chance there for the Pride as they start to show this 
Why not tell a team what they've got? Obviously an early start for both sides here. Maybe you could say, you know, wouldn't blame them for a bit of a slow start, but it certainly hasn't happened as shots come away for both sides in this first minute of the semi-final. Good shot there on the right-hand flank. And I mentioned about the Pride players, but we've also got to mention Hussein Ali for Waibot Power. I saw her here for New Zealand Secondary Schools this, this week, absolutely ripping it up on the court. Plenty of flair while she's dribbling. Plenty of goal-scoring opportunities that I'm sure will come from her, and she'll be a big part of this power side going into the game. Oh, absolutely. Very exciting young player is Hussein Ali, and also uh, going through fast for the moment with, uh, with for Ramadan. So playing on... You know, no no food throughout the day. Uh, I spoke to her throughout the week at uh, the secondary schools competition. She actually says that she thinks it makes her play better while fasting. So it's um, interesting to see. And, and I wouldn't be able to say that I could play good on an empty stomach, but it certainly works for her. And as you say, great to see that young talent showing through. As Morrow just cuts that chip ball out there. Does well to bring it down and drives forward. Finds the feet of Patel, who tries to find Nicholson. Free in the middle. Calls for handball from the Pride players, but nothing doing as a breakaway here from Muspratt. Just can't quite bring that under control, and it rolls all the way back for a restart through Falco. Good shot for a handball, but it did come off the foot of Muspratt into her own hand, so the referees made the right decision there. And some experienced referees here in the Super League. We've got Richard Jones, Jacob Porter, and Max Lauridsen. Um, on the on the ref squad today, so lots of experience between those three. Uh, the chance there for Nicholson will try to bring that under control, but crashes into the advertising boards on the far side. And another restart here for Nikki White in the Wybot Power goal. Muspratt does well there to to flick it on to her teammate making the run down the right flank. Space at the back post there for Evans, I believe it was, but they can't quite link up there. Promising signs, though, for both teams early on. As you see that press, not too intense there from the power. Pride able to beat it with a few good passes. Into play nice from them. Nicholson trying to find Patel at that back post, but crowded out well there from Evans on this near side. Yeah, Evans has been relentless in her defensive work today for the power. I've seen her play for Central in the past and she's been a great young up and coming player so it's great to see her still playing her futsal even if it is in orange rather than green and yellow. Both interesting colours to be playing in. <laughs> yeah, she was integral to the performance that the Power put in yesterday uh, to beat the Pride here on this very same court. As the ball crashes a couple times into the commentary bench but we're okay. No fear. Everybody at home and Morrow tries just to turn out a danger there, but the power managed to clear their lines only as far as Merkin in the Pride defense. And does well there to find Nicholson. Patel offering support on the left flank. Patel now with the ball, beats one. Manages, does well there to hold possession and drop it back as the shot comes in from Merkin and forces a good save there from Nicky White in the Wybot Power goal. See just a rolling substitution there for the power. Stevie Lee Tiller coming off for Neve Carter, the captain of this Wybot Power side. And Morrow does well to fashion a bit of space there, but closed down well by Muspratt, and the shot flies wide of this near post. Long ball there, searching for Barkley up front. She will hound Merkin, but that's well defended by Merkin, just to see it out. And Nicholson now on the ball, <laughs> not quite on the ball, just rolls underneath her feet there. Unlucky for her, the power will take that as the shot flashes in, almost finding the run of Evans on that near post. And again, Evans there applying the pressure on this left-hand side. Cutting out that passing lane. So good link up play there between Patel and Morrow. Great save that was by Nikki White. Yeah, White's been fantastic for the start of this game. I've seen her play 
uh, outdoor football once or twice and she was a massive presence in goal there and you kind of know when someone's going to be a big presence in there they're going to be an even more outstanding futsal keeper and she's, she's shown just that with that save before. Yeah, she's been huge for the power this campaign. Made lots and lots of saves yesterday to keep the pride only to one goal and featured a lot in their win against Capital earlier in the season. I think for the power's first win actually in National Series 1. Another exciting goalkeeper coming through the ranks in futsal. As Mackenzie Falco just tries to find the ball underneath the, the spectator seating there. It looks like she's located it. And rolls it off short to Merkin, who will find Patel on this near side. Patel does get around her player there and makes a pass, but it's a bit too much on it for the run of Merkin. The Simpson who got us back underway there. A long ball searching for Barclay up front and Nicholson will just see that all the way out as she thought was coming across for the rolling substitution. Just hold fire, the call from head coach Ronan Naker. And Mara does well just to hold the ball up there, but a loose back pass. Barkley with a bit of time and space to find the shot. She does, but Falco, comfortable save for her. And looks to be a goal on court number two. An early start for Capital, I believe it is. We'll get confirmation of that for you in just a second. As a long shot comes in, a wayward one from Carter. Not her best work, just flies over onto the balcony there. And here now we see the rolling subs for Canterbury United Pride. Nika going for an all-four substitution. It's always a little bit of a tricky one, this one. Semi-finals, playing the final a couple of hours later. Do you go all out? Do you rest players? You know, how are you going to go into this game? Do you go all or nothing? Or do you look at, are you ready for a final if it's to come? And I think Nika's done a great job of rolling his substitutions anyways. But it is important that he keeps fresh legs if he is to go through. Oh yeah, absolutely. They'll definitely be playing with the final in the back of their mind, but they're not there yet. Still have to beat this difficult Wybot power side. As Bloomfield now, spacing behind, gets a shot away and well held there by Falco. It's interesting to see there, they have opted so far this season, the Pride, for rolling banks of four subs on and off. Potentially players that have been training together uh, throughout the week, you know, with certain combinations as, hold that thought, we have a 3v2 here from Wybot Power, a bit of space on the right flank to get the shot away, but doesn't trouble Falco in the goal. And we do just have confirmation that that is 1-0 to Capital in the other semi-final. Goal to Danielle Olsen. Yeah, so good start for Capital over there. They'll be happy to get that early lead against a strong Papakura City side. Still plenty of futsal to be played in both matches. And as we know, anything can happen in this game. So I would not expect that to be the only goal. It's Firth now with a bit of time on the ball. Plays out to Boyek, who rolls it up for Samantha White. And does well to find the feet of Fisher on the far side, who flashed a, a, a shot cross into Boyek in the middle. And couldn't quite direct that one goalward. Good ball there from White. Just to find the runner Simpson on that right flank. Tidied up there by McCormick and the shot comes in. Almost for Bloomfield on that far pose. That was an incredibly close effort. I like the way all players have been making sure to shoot for the far post, but the runs just haven't quite matched that shot as Wybop get their own chance. Sorry, Pride, should I say, with Firth, but White looks nice and comfortable there. Yeah, it'll have to be a chance of some quality to beat either one of these goalkeepers on the court today. Both very, very good. As we get Firth with a surging run down that right flank, and again, a wayward shot. So 
Some rolling substitutions here for the power. Emma Brown taking to the court as well as Hussein Ali on the ball now. And her pass cut out initially by Firth, but does well to challenge for the ball and regain possession. Firth, though, keeping that pressure high and turning the ball over for the Pride in the midcourt as a chance comes in for Fisher and a shot. And I believe that shot placed wide of the post. Looks like White had it covered, but we'll get the replay on that one. This game looking very much end to end. Both teams want goals. They're not sitting back. And credit to Power, who maybe could have come into this game and sat back and defended their goal, but they're out there pressing and they want to score goals of their own. So fair play to them. Yeah, I think if you invite this Pride team on, if you do sit back, then they're going to punish you. As Power found, the way to beat them is by going forward and, and attacking them head first, giving them the time and the space to pick their passes and just settle into the game is a recipe for disaster and I'm sure coach Kieran Machuski has identified that as he set his team up here to play. There's that long throw there just cut out in the middle by Fisher who rolls it back to White and it'll end up back with the feet of White. A bit of space there to wind the shot up. Good save in the end by Nikki White in goal. And Boyek just crowded out by two power players on that far side. Earns her team a kick in, which she'll roll back to Firth, who plays it across to White. And tries to find Boyek again, but... It's a bit short on that pass there. And power to get us underway here again with a kick in on the far side. Going long, trying to find the feet of Muspratt. Rolls all the way back to Falco, who adventurous, comes out. A goal box there. And first plays a good ball up to Fisher, who finds a bit of room on this right flank. Links back up with Fisher, who finds White on the far side and forces a great save there by Nikki White. It's a good effort from Samantha White there. She wraps around, but White just looks comfortable. She's not going to be beaten at the near post as the ref just stops for a little bit of what seems to be an injury on Buick. Not sure what the cause of that one was. There was a bit of a collision maybe at that back post. She looks to be in a bit of pain, does Buick. And it's be worrying for the coaching staff of the Pride, as you were saying. Obviously, should they win this game, they'll be playing the finals in a relatively short turnaround, two hours between the two matches. Um, so they won't want to take any chances. As the team physio just comes out to check on the player there and so seven and a half roughly minutes gone in this first half both teams definitely contesting into end futsal what have you made of the first uh first seven and a half minutes here katie yeah i think like you said it's been end to end not necessarily a lot of structure from either team just because of the way both teams are pressing it's allowing quite a bit of free play um but i think it is going to be a game of who can score more goals uh like it's going to be tight there's going to be lots of goals in this game i would imagine touch wood for our sake um but i think focus is really going to come into it it's eight o'clock in the morning and i know we've said that a few <laughs> few too many times on the commentary here but the keepers need to keep their focus defensively teams need to keep their focus because those little moments may cost a team at this stage and it's going to be harder to get back into the game yeah, absolutely. With tight games like this, it's often a bit of brilliance or uh, a mistake that might cause the difference. And neither team will want to be the team that causes a mistake. It's a good turnover there for the Pride. Morrow gets a shot away on the left flank. And this sails wide of the post there. Point to be made potentially about daylight savings ending overnight, giving the teams a, an extra hour of sleep, which I'm sure they, they savoured every minute of. But it's still an early start nonetheless. And both sides obviously playing 
games yesterday, so there will be a few tired legs as this game progresses. It'll be interesting to see how both coaches rotate their squad, especially heading into the final few minutes of the second half. A good tackle there by Tilleran Patel. Wins the kick in too, does well. And finding the head of Muspratt, who tried to link up on that right flank. Pride just miscommunication along the back there. Wayward back pass goes out for a kick in which Tiller will take and feed back into Evans on this near side. Nicholson does well there in the battle to win the ball. And <laughs> Robert Powell will see that eventually run out of play. Good shot there by Merkin. Forces the save from White down into her right. I see Morrow take the corner kick here. As it rolls all the way back for Nicholson. Just can't quite find the feet of Patel and Muspret now. It's going to turn out of danger there and cycle it back to hold on a bit of possession. But that press coming in straight away from Patel. And does well there, Muspratt to uh, link up with Evans, who can't quite bring it under control on that right flank. Yeah, Power looking nice and calm under pr the press from Pride, but just struggling to link up with that final, final ball. Sometimes it's in the air, sometimes it's just a little bit too far in front. So they'll just need to combine a little bit more in that last third to really get a proper opportunity. And that might be Evans here. Great save, Falco. Yeah, it's happened a couple times there, but a space on the flank for Power. That's where... Their goals look to come from as another good shot comes in there from Evans again. And Morrow now almost keeps that in play. Did well initially to hold it up, but just ran away from her. Patel now a bit of space to take the shot and there it is, the first goal of the semi-final. Serena Patel, well placed, bottom corner finish and the Pride players are loving it. They come up and show their support. We'll get a replay of that very shortly. Yeah, great turn there from Patel just to fashion a bit of space and that's a dangerous player to have in the front third there. Patel, probably one of the best finishers in the country. Takes a lot to have the composure just to, to slot the ball past the keeper like Nicky White. So a great finish, 1-0, Canterbury United Pride. Yeah, great finish, improving why she is at the top of the Resine Golden Boot ladder. I'm sure she's more concerned about making the final, but there's always a little bit of a player that's competitive and wants to keep on the Golden Boot rankings. So fair play to her. It's a really good finish right in the bottom corner. Not a whole lot White can do with that one there. And with that goal, that puts Patel up to 14 goals in the competition. Five clear of second place. You would think that that may make her a shoo-in for the award. But players like Nicholson, teammate Morrow, breathing down her neck as a strong challenge comes in there from Tiller. Potentially a bit of a knock on the pride player who's gone down there. Keegan looks to be okay. And that press from Patel does well there to nick the ball, but falls to wide and a bit of space now on this left-hand flank for Stone to drive into. Tries to find the feet of Evans, but can't quite bring it down. And the prize straight back on the counter-attack, but Muspratt there. Bit of tricky footwork to tidy that up. Good challenge. Audacious volley there from Patel. Applaud the effort. Good ball initially by Nicholson. And Barkley just pouncing on that defensive error there from Merkin. Gets a shot away, but Merkin tidies it up. Good block in there to fix up that mistake. Oh. 
a good effort there, a little, oh, I don't even know what you'd call that, a half scorpion, half bicycle from Barclay. <laughs> They came out of absolutely nowhere. Wybop definitely aren't going out without a fight, though. They're working relentlessly to get down behind the ball. Great yeah. play by Evans. Uh, good composure there, just to keep a foot on the ball, laid it off, but the long pass cut out there by Merkin, who... Tries the shot, blocked well. And Nicholson holding the player back there potentially. Calls for foul from the bench and it will be. First foul of the half there, 12 minutes in. That is the way of Canterbury United Pride. Yeah, Buckley's looked lively since she's come on. She's got great technique, gets her under player well. And that's what we saw there, maybe a little... Lack of focus from Nicholson, and she's turned her, got away. Oh, and she's earned herself a yellow card, which you can't see on screen, but the referee has just shown her a yellow card. It's a, a little bit of a harsh decision, and that's a, that's a card that she's going to have to carry all the way through to the semi-final and hope that she doesn't get herself into a spot of bother in case they are to make it through. Yeah, absolutely. You could say maybe a professional foul there. She identified the danger of... Letting Barkley through on goal, but won't be happy to have picked up a yellow there. Still eight minutes to go in this first half, and she'll have that at the back of her mind now for the rest of the game, not wanting to earn a suspension before the <laughs> final as an attempted back heel flick on from Evans. Doesn't quite come off, but good idea. And it's Keegan now on this near side, he just cuts inside and... Lays it off for Nicholson. Links back up with her. Cross ball to Patel now. And the Pride just comfortable to make these passes along the back. Looking for a moment of brilliance just like that from Patel who gets the ball across in the middle. And that was Myers with the shot there. Make a good save in the end by Nikki White. Let's get down quickly. Yeah, and those are those little bits of magic we look for from Patel as Keegan has a shot, but very comfortable for White, who's a big figure in goal. Yeah, had a good game so far, has White. That goal that Patel put in, not much you can do there in the way of making a save, and it's power now on the offense. All four Canterbury United Pride players did well to get back there behind the ball in transition, and Patel now will have a kick in on this near side. And Nicholson just taking on her marker on that far side. Two power players coming over trying to crowd her out, but she does well to get out of that. And Keegan, good challenge there to maintain possession. Finds the feet of Nicholson, but just a bit too much on that through ball there as it rolls out. It'll be white again to restart play. A good defensive header there from Keegan finds Nicholson who has a bit of room to drive into here. Finds the teammate on the right flank and drops it back for Patel who gets a shot away and well blocked. But straight out to Keegan who with a dazzling footwork gets the ball caught underneath her feet and opts just for the safe ball. Roll it back to Falco. And just a bit of miscommunication there from Falco. Maybe caught in two minds as to where that ball was going to go. See a timeout sheet handed here by... Jerry Mischewski, the Wybot power coach. And Patel, good turn there. But comfortable in the end for White. Ops to go short this time. Mischewski trying to find the feet of Barclay there on the far side. Doesn't quite come off. See a couple substitutions now for the Pride, Patel and Nicholson. Coming off, replaced by Firth and Fisher, it looks like. And Myers does well there, bit of link up play between the players as a shot comes in from Fisher, but well blocked by Carter. Yeah, and great little build up from Pride there. I like, like, I'd like to see both teams just be a little bit more composed in position. We've seen great counter attacks, we've seen end-to-end -end futsal, but there's a few more times where teams can just be a little bit more secure in keeping the ball. That little play there from Pride, really good. Yeah, it was 
The shot opens up there for Firth. Good block by Barkley. Looks to feel the effects of that one on her ankle, perhaps. Goes down, which we don't like to see. Shot in the interim. Flashes across the face of goal. And we'll have a quick one-minute timeout here, called by the power. Chance for him to just revise their tactics. Look at the whiteboard. Approach how they've been set up. What have you made of this first half here? Yeah, I think it started off pretty cagey in the end, uh, but we've started to see some moments of brilliance from Patel. She's got on the Maradona a few times, linked up well with other teammates, and prior to starting to have a little bit more of the chances. Wybop started off strong with the really good high press. They look dangerous on the counter, but I think now it's really important that Mastruski just tells their team to relax a little bit more when they get into the attacking half, just to enjoy having the ball for a little bit longer so that they can have real clear-cut opportunities because they've got players that can finish those off. Yeah, absolutely. And it's only one goal, the difference. They still very much anybody's game. If Wybot Power do manage to get one back before half-time, it'll certainly change the way that both teams approach that half-time team talk. But... And saying that, as the Pride, if they can manage an extra goal, an extra two goals, obviously only conceding 12 across the competition up to this point, um, it's no easy feat to, to make a comeback against this side. So Powell will want to make sure that they're not committing too much forward, still keeping it tight at the back. But as you say, they do need that goal. Yeah, and I think if White continues to frustrate the Pride with her presence and goal, That'll lead away at them a little bit and the opportunities, opportunities will start to come. Yeah, absolutely, there's an opportunity for the Pride there through Fisher. Just floats it across the goal into the middle, trying to find the run at the back post from White, I believe it was, but cut out well. Good defensive work there from the power. Yes, I see a bit of a mistake on that far side from White, the power. Potentially you could say it was due to the press, although not too in her face. Uh, good tackle there from Firth in the back line. And power now with another kick in on that far side. And that's good play by Bloomfield, but equally good defensive work there. By Firth in the back line. Fisher does well just to turn out of trouble there and cycle it back to Firth. Uh, Firth, yep, to hold position for the Pride. And you could say that's the difference between the two teams at this stage. Pride happy to turn and not trying to force the ball forward all the time. Only when it's on, as it is here with White, holding the ball up in the corner, but a good challenge there. Whereas Power, they seem to be looking for that attack more often than not. They're, they're just saying in that timeout, Potentially forcing things a little bit where they need a goal. Yeah, I think you can see Pride's experience coming through a little bit more. They've played in a few more games like this. But why not just need to trust in their players? They've got good players. They've, they can compete with this Pride squad, so they just need to relax a little bit more. The goal will come. They don't need to rush for it. As we see a 2v1 counter-attack here, plays it into White. Oh, and that ball just gets ahead of her, but it's well defended by Wybop. They have done an excellent job at getting back and down under the, underneath the ball. Yeah, absolutely. They showed a lot of that yesterday, uh, especially the whole second half. They went into halftime 2-1, remained 2-1, and a lot of that was pride attacking. Um, they're, they're mobile. They're good. Uh, in transition, they get players back quickly. And certainly in the D, the defensive D, they're good at scrambling and just getting bodies in front of any dangerous shots or, or crosses. You see a corner now for the Pride. Chance for a set-piece routine as the pass comes in there. Does well to find the feet. And it comes out to Myers again on this near side. Cut out well there by Evans. Roll out for another kick in for the Pride. Five minutes to go here. This first half, 1-0 to the Pride. Scores still 1-0 to Capital over on court number two as well. So two very tight games in the semi-final so far. As the Pride just get their lines mixed up there and balls roll, ball rolls out for a kick in, which Evans will, will take. 
As we see Stone and Tiller take the court for the power. A long ball there, trying to find Bloomfield. And again, maybe there was just an opportunity to string another couple passes along the back line, get a few rotations going. Bit of combination play, but they opted to go long again, and it's turned over for the Pride. And White there with the strong challenge, deemed to be a foul by the referee as she came through the back of Tiller. She did well there, Stevie Lee Tiller, just to hold position initially and draw the foul. And again, a searching ball for Evans, just rolls harmlessly for Falco. And the Canterbury United Pride goal. Yeah, good link up play here from the Pride as they come forward on the right hand flank. Cut out again by Tiller and then a clearance. Falls away of Pride, but Tiller now, 2v1 situation. Bloomfield on her right. Will she take the pass? She goes for the shot. Maybe not the right option there. Bloomfield in a bit of space on the right hand flank. Yeah, and we talked earlier about how focus was going to be an important part to the semi final, and I think that's where. Holding position for longer will really benefit Wybop. I think the more you shift the ball around, the more touches players can get, the more focus they have going into the game so that when it counts and when they need to be switched on, they are because they've been involved in the game. Whereas if they're constantly in transition or on the counter, it's going to be really difficult. Well, absolutely. And also just the, the energy levels. If you're constantly up and down and up and down, chasing the ball from loose passes and tracking back to get players on defense, um, certainly a factor as we approach the second half and either team leading will be very conscious of that tight turnaround before the finals. So if the power do find themselves ahead, they will want to have some left in the tank for that final match here as no ball boys in the Ford Futsal Super League. Players have to go find the ball themselves. And Samantha White does well there. A little bit of a premature Easter egg hunt, I guess, for all of these players <laughs> if they want it. Yeah, we see Muspratt take the ball, take the court now, and potentially an opportunity for her on the right flank. Jas runs away from her from that long ball. And the pride now. Press coming in from the power through Muspratt, trying to force a mistake. Pride do well to play around it and can't quite find the target up front. Rachel Brody goes out for a kick in on the far side. Stone will take. Good ball there for Muspratt, does well, just recycles possession through Stevie Lee Tiller and Chip ball really to nobody in the middle there. Pride get on it and happy just to turn around, hold position. As Firth does well there, shake off a couple challenges from the power and keep that ball for her side. Jamie Evans again showing that defensive acumen on this near side. Did well initially, but Firth manages to <laughs> just play the ball on the ground and link up to maintain position. And Evans again with a cutout on this near side. Be first to get us underway here. Take the kick in. It falls out to White on the far side. And Fisher now. Bit of room to drive into. Good challenge. Stevie Lee Tiller. Shut that down. And a kick in in a relatively dangerous position here for the Pride. White to take and she'll roll it back off to Firth. Who finds Brody on that right flank. And the ball just rolling a bit too quickly for Fisher there. Can't quite get it under control. As we hear cheers from court number two. We will get confirmation of that. Looks to be Capital have scored another. Oh, there's a chance for Fisher on court number one. We'll get confirmation of that goal for you on court number two very, very shortly. And 
And two and a half minutes to go now in this first half of the women's semi-final in the Ford Futsal Super League. 1-0, Canterbury United Pride over Wybot Power. Still a very close game, only one goal in it. The Power will certainly feel that they're in this game. And we'll be hoping to peg one back before half time, but Pride will also hoping to be extending their lead. A one goal buffer isn't really a lot in futsal. And just confirming that that was 2-0 to Capital on the other court. Sco uh, goal scored by Francesca Grange. So that'll be a little bit of an upset over there. I guess two competitive sides, second and third. But Papakura, obviously a renowned futsal group of players. They're a good side, so I'm sure there'll be more goals in that game over on that court. So we'll, we'll make sure to keep you updated. Yeah, and I'm sure Marvin Eakins, coach of Papakura City, will have some words for his team at half-time. Certainly good enough to come back from a two-goal deficit. That's a good shot there from Berth. Maybe already sailing over the post, but White made sure just to tip it over. And we enter the final two minutes here and getting a replay of that chance. Oh, the good tackle there from Tiller. Shot comes in, but charged down by Lily Muspratt. Did well to clear her lines and just stop that chance from Firth from developing into anything more serious. And turned over there in the mid-court to power. Muspratt opts just to turn back and maintain possession. And the long ball there just cut out again by the Pride. That press not really too engaged there and on the back line. The Pride comfortable just to slow things down. Two up seconds in this first half. Want to maintain this lead as they head into the halftime break. And perhaps even extend it as Fisher plays a good ball back to Firth. And the pass from Morrow just cut out there. And Evans now on the ball. Potential 2v1 situation. Trying to find a player on the right flank. And a shot comes in. And almost, almost the equaliser there. Just wide of that near post. Good chance, Jamie Evans. Yeah, she's been lively for the power. She's been really exciting. And she's someone that they're going to need to find coming into the second half. They're going to need to get her involved more. And more clear-cut opportunities like that one where they're comfortable to play the ball around. And she gets a real breakaway. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the power's chances are coming from turnovers in the midcourt, just like that. Stevie Lee Tiller now, 3v2, and finds the feet of Evans with a soft ball, but they managed to hold it and just crowd it out there. But the chance is not so much coming from good combination play for the power, more these challenges in the middle and, and counter-attacks, whereas the Pride, a lot more comfortable in their, their passing play. Comfortable to wait and maintain possession and then look for that killer ball. There's a bit of great footwork there from Patel. This would be a great goal if she can finish it off as well. And White came out well there. Two players colliding. Nothing malicious in it. Yeah, I think we would have had goal of the day contender if Patel could have got through every single person there. She's a fantastic player when she's on the dribble and still has a smile on her face at the end of missing an opportunity like that, which shows the type of person she is. Yeah, definitely. I believe um, she was the, the Futsal Player of the Year in New Zealand in 2021-2022 uh, season. So, just loves the game and obviously very good as a ripper of a shot comes in there from Nicholson and White. Had to be aware to turn that out for a corner. Got 12 seconds here left in the first half, barring any late drama. Canterbury United Pride will be heading into half time with with the lead. And just a bit of miscommunication there between Nicholson and Patel. Not quite on the same wavelength. Five seconds left on the clock for the power. Surely just have to rip a long shot here. As good challenge. Silences that attack and rolls out. It's half time here and the women's Ford Futsal Super League semi-final. Canterbury United Pride leading one goal to nil over Wybot Power. Still certainly both teams in this game. Chances for both teams. Um, over on court number two, obviously Capital Futsal leading 
Papakura City, two goals to nil. Um, thoughts on the first half, Katie? Yeah, I think it started off with a hiss and a roar end to end. Pride probably got a little bit more comfortable towards the back end of the half, but Wybops should still take a lot of confidence out of that first half, I think. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them a lot of the game. They had their chances. They defended incredibly well, so they need to stay confident going into this game because all it's going to take is one other opportunity, and they know that they've got White and goal who will defend for her life in there, so I think it's going to be a close game. Pride just need to make sure they get through this game without any other injuries as well. Yeah, definitely. It'll be at the front of both coaches' minds. Um, we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll see you back very, very shortly for the second half here in the semi-final of the Ford Futsal Super League. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. We believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. Awesome, and welcome back everyone to the women's semi-final of the Ford Futsal Super League. Uh, you are with the semi-final between Canterbury United Pride versus Wybot Power. Canterbury Pride currently leading one goal to nil. A rather cagey affair, I would, I would say. It's been pretty transitional. Pride looking a little bit more comfortable in position, but Wybot have been defending incredibly well, and I think that there's still more goals in this game, hopefully, because it's 8 in the morning, and I would like to see some more goals. Um, in the other semi-final on the other court at Arco Tangi Sports Centre, it's Capital Futsal versus Papakura City. Capital Futsal currently leading two goals to nil. Both teams will be desperate to make the final of this Ford, Super, Ford Futsal Super League, uh, the final to be played at 12 o'clock on the stream as well. Following this game, you have the men's semi-final at 10 o'clock. Oh, I think that is Capital versus... Southern United. Sorry about that one. Coaches just getting their final messages in before sending their players out to the court. Both teams looking a little bit calm and in control, which is good. And the referees just waiting to get proceedings underway. 
We've got the same starting five as the first half for Pride. Morrow, Nicholson, Patel, Merkin, and Falco. We'll get back to you on the power lineup. Yeah, it looks to be Bloomfield, Brown, Evans on that far side, and Miss Chusky. Nikki White keeping her place in goal. Good first half from her. Couple big saves. Really uh, equal to everything she could have been equal. Obviously that goal from Serena Patel, but the magic from her, well placed finished. Not many goalkeepers could stop that one. Uh, and everything else, White's been all over it. Falco, relatively quiet first half. A few good saves been called upon and held the ball well as a chance down this left flank for McCormick, sorry, not Evans. But nothing comes from the shot as it just flashes across the goal. Big second half ahead for Wybot Power. I'll be wanting to get at least a goal to tie things up. And the Pride obviously want to <laughs> increase their lead and just settle the nerves a little bit. One goal lead is not a lot in futsal as Bloomfield does well to shake off a marker and tries to find the player in the middle. Counter-attack now for the Pride, but Myra can't quite get underneath that ball and rolls out for a kick in on this near side, which Brown takes an <laughs> ambitious attempt there from Mastuski, smile on her face. Already a little bit of a difference from Wybot Power, starting to play into their pivot a little bit more than being comfortable to hold the ball up. Good chance there for the Pride. Patel found a bit of room to run into on that right side flank. Tried to link up with Nichols. Nicholson up front. Um, but rolled underneath her feet, did it Nicholson. And back on the ball now, finding Patel. Just shown the touchline by Liz Chusky, the Wybot Power defender. And a cheeky cut out there from Patel. 2v1 opportunity now, Patel finding Lickelson in the middle and a great save there from Nikki White. That's brilliant goalkeeping. Didn't have much time to react to that one. Got down well and a big arm up to make the save. And it's Merkin who just attempted a ball into the middle there. Cut out well by the defensive wall set up by the pride, uh, the power. Merkin just lay the ball off for Patel. Good ball into the middle to find the feet of Morrow. Better tussling in the mid court there as Power come away with the ball and Bloomfield she got on there. Was a bit of space to drive into, but just a bit ahead of her. Patel now on the ball, finding Morrow on that right flank who gets a shot in. And that's a goal. That's a great goal from Frankie Morrow. The Pride off to a blinder in this first minute and a half here. Two goals to them. First goal of the half. That's a great start for the Pride. Great finish from Frankie Morrow. Yeah, that's an outstanding finish. As we see, Pride just nice and comfortable with the ball, but she absolutely oh rifles that <laughs> into the top left corner. White might be a great keeper, but there's nothing any keeper can do about that. Morrow wants finals futsal, that's for sure. <laughs> and with that goal, that puts Frankie Morrow to 10 goals in the Resine Golden Boot ranking. Second place behind a teammate Patel on 14. And... Brittany Lee Nicholson, her other Pride teammate, on third with nine goals. And a difficult task just got a bit tougher for the Power, who now face a two-goal deficit. Still plenty of time in the second half. They can pick a goal back soon. The complexion of the game changes. But that is not the start that they were hoping for. Pride, on the other hand, certainly will be happy to get an early goal in the second half. Just settle the nerves a little bit. Obviously a one goal lead is a, is a shaky one. All it takes is one moment to tie the game up and put their finals place in jeopardy, but two goals, they'll be a lot more comfortable. As initially good hold up play there from Bloomfield, but Patel comes in to help Merkin and win the ball back for her team. 
again, there's Powadis. Maybe rushing things a little bit too much there. That shot never really going to test Falco, and it's turned over. Half chance there in the middle for the Pride through Nicholson, but the player able to get on the end of that. As we see Merkin just roll it across to Morrow, who tries to beat her mark on his left side. Good pressure there from Brown, forcing the ball back all the way to Falco. Chairs on the far court. Looks to be a Papakuta City goal. Another early goal in this first half. Second half. We'll get confirmation of that for you here very shortly. But an exciting start to both games so far in the semi-final. We see the captain for Wybot Power, Neve Carter, take the field. <laughs> Mastuski in the back there smashes the ball out for a clearance, almost taking the head off of some of her teammates sitting on the sub bench. A little wave of apology and a smile. And the power now, a chance to break. Mastuski on the ball on the right flank. She'll get the shot away. Couldn't quite get her foot around that ball. Turn it goalwards. And Morrow, a bit of room to drive into. Well tracked back by McCormick, but Morrow's still with the ball. Drops it off to Merkin, who finds the feet of Nicholson. Links up with Morrow in the middle, but the one-two didn't quite pull it off. If I want to get the ball past Falco, they're really just going to have to need to create proper opportunities. They just look a little bit too excited when they enter the attacking half. They're a good side. They deserve those opportunities. So they just need to relax and know that they will come frequently. So just to take them seriously and trust, trust each other, look after the ball a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. They're probably in the back of their minds thinking two goals. We need goals. Um, and whenever they do get that, chance or half chance their eyes just light up maybe just a second of uh, composure needed from those attacking players there they're certainly making the chances and they've got players that can finish them so as you say just a bit of composure needed from them they want to get themselves back into this game and Patel now does well to find Nicholson um, but can't quite bring it under. A few rolling subs there for Wybop. Sees Neve Simpson take the take the court. Good ball forward to find Hussein Ali, who again just can't quite wrap a foot around that one. Gonna have to be a thing of absolute beauty, a strike of top class to beat Falco from that sort of angle and distance. And the kicker not quite in the right place initially, but referee's pulled it back and they get it underway. Good cross-court ball to Merkin, but can't quite find the feet of Patel on the far side. Turned over. And that press from the Pride, winning the ball back high through Nicholson as the shot comes in. Good shot there, connected well, but off target. And Hussain Ali now with an ambitious effort. I think a shot. Registered that in the stats, but not her best work. And again, that's what you're saying there. Just that potential lack of composure in the final third from the power. Rushing a few of their chances. Good ball there to find Nicholson on the far side from Falco, but big ask to control that one on the, on the hop. As ball turned over to Keegan in the middle and rips a shot. A toe poke from range. Off target. And Muspratt now with a bit of space in behind the Pride defensive line. Bring it down well and turn to get the shot away, but Falco read the danger out to it. Yeah, hopefully Wyvok can take a little bit of confidence from that. A proper shot on goal that time. A little bit more of a decent effort. 
I'd like them to just try see them keep the ball a little bit more in these moments, though, because Falco's a good keeper. We've seen her in plenty of Super Leagues in the past. She's, like you said, it's going to need to be a proper effort on goal to get past her. So I think just combine a little bit more, bring some players to life. Yeah, and they'll look to do that now as a <laughs> long ball, as I say, that cut out again by the Pride. And it's White there who tussles for the ball, brings it back down, finds the feet of Keegan, drops it back off to White. And I'll just recycle a bit of possession here with the Pride. Nicholson in the middle. Drops it off there for Firth. Finds Keegan, great ball there, first time. Switch play to, to White. Assessing your options, but opts to go back to Firth and links up with Keegan. Another great first time switch of play there to Nicholson. That's that final pass missing, but that was a good bit of play there from the Pride as it's turned over to them again and a bit of room to drive into now on the right flank for Firth. And well defended in the end by Lily Muspratt. Out for a goalkeeper. Restart. As they go along there, trying to find the captain, Neve Carter, but Pressure put on by Lily Fisher in the Pride defence. Turns it over. Keegan now on this near side. Drops it off to Firth. Who, through good rotation play, finds Fisher. The press coming in from the power, trying to force a mistake. Keegan does well there again. Finds the feet of Fisher, who switches it out. To White, cuts inside, drops it off. And now Firth with a bit of room to drive into. Good block there initially, but finds the feet of Fisher. And good defense in the end from Wybot Power. Rolls all the way back to Keegan, who looks to shoot. Cuts inside, fashions a chance on the left foot. Shot comes in there from Firth. The uh, defender was well placed to put the block in. A good shot there, just over the post from Keegan. She's had a good second half, Keegan. A few great passes in the middle. Yeah, she's definitely had a little bit of a spark. Uh, great at dropping in between lines, playing a one-touch one pass around the corner. She's shown us she's got that in her locker. So I think I'd probably like to see her combine, like get on the court with Nicholson and Patel a little bit more and see how she can combine with them because, yeah, she's looking to really play that final ball and it's clearly something she's good at. So she needs someone else on the end of it. Firth can't quite come away with that one. Tried to beat her marker as the ball. That was a fine muskrat there, but... Pride come away with it and turned over there for the power. Run forward from Stone, who will just drop it back off. And Tiller now on the ball, driving forward. Cut out well by Fisher, but Tiller does well to bring that back. And Fisher again, good tussle over on that far flank from the two players. Still pressing is Stevie Lee Tiller, trying to get something back from that, but well defended in the end by Fisher. And Falco going for the long ball. Can't quite find the feet of White, but Stone, just a bit of an error there from her. Will be a Canterbury kicking on the far side. White to take. Fisher looking forward. Keegan again, another good pass, but just can't quite find the feet of White. Rolls all the way across. Well defended there from Firth, just to shut down that pass to Muspratt. Game slowing down a little bit now. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of an explosion in it. But after the hectic nature of the first few minutes here in the second half, it does seem both teams settling into it and just uh, losing the momentum a little bit as a attempted Ball to the mid-court there, comes off in the end for the Pride. Keegan drops it off for Fisher, and Muspratt does well to get a foot in there, and half chance on the counter, but just runs away from her. Yeah, 
And Tiller takes this kick in. A tussle on the left-hand flank. Shot from Stone, not far away at all there. Good chance for the power. Yeah, definitely something we haven't seen from them yet. Stone has a lot of pace. She's got a good left foot. So maybe that's a different type of outlet that they can try to use. Invite Pride to press, play the ball in behind for someone to run onto. Yeah, there's a good chance came in there from White, just fashioned a pocket of space, a bit of footwork. Rolls back down now. Falco played it out to Fisher on the far side, who manages to find Keegan in the middle. Good defending in the end from Evans. Had to be made that challenge and stops that pride attack. They're kicking now for the pride, who brings it all the way back down to White. Rolls it out to Fisher on the far side. Firth now on the ball, back to Fisher. It's taking the time here, the pride, trying to find that right ball. Cut out well by Evans. And a good one-two there on the right flank. Shut down in the end by Tiller. Wins inside the free kick. Ah, the kicking. Good defensive hitter there from Firth. Altello with the attempted long ball, trying to find Bloomfield. Doesn't quite come off and comfortable for Falco in the end. Well, Fisher on the ball now, driving across the court. Sees the options on her right and tries to find them, but Evans, equal to it, came across and shut that down and pried on the ball again through Keegan. Good one-two there off of Fisher. Keegan cuts inside and will just drop it back for Firth, who tries to find the feet of Fisher on the far side. <laughs> Challenges coming in from both teams in the middle. Ends up with a kick into the pride. Uh, the power on this near side here. And interesting note on those injuries in the first half for Boyek and Carter. The pride and power respectively. Both players not returning to the court. Look across, I see Boyek just getting a bit of treatment from the physio. Might be her game done. They'll be hoping that they see her again in the final, should they make it. And Carter, who had a sore one on her ankle following a block, looks ready to go if, if called upon, but they haven't resorted to using her yet, have the power. As long ball there, overshot by Falco, trying to find Nicholson in that pivot roll, but nothing doing. Yeah, I think as this game goes on, it's going to be interesting how Pride take this back end of the second half. Do they treat it like a dress rehearsal and get everything ready come 12 o'clock? Do they look after players and rotate players, make sure they try to keep the ball in the court as much as possible, get this game over with so they can rest? Or do Wybop really give them a fight and they don't have a second to switch off? Yeah, I don't think Wybop can really take the chances now to rest players, so to speak. They're two goals down with 11 and a half minutes to go. They'll, they need a win here to advance to the next stage. The Pride, though, different, different story for them. I'm sure as the minutes tick down, Coach Ronan Nyko will be thinking ahead to the final and managing the numbers for his, his personnel. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the Pride starting to just set up shop a little bit more as the cross came across from Patel, I believe it was, on the far side. White got a hand to it, but couldn't hold on to the ball. But, yeah, especially if the scores stay like this, I wouldn't be surprised to see Wybot Power turning the heat up and Pride trying to just turn the heat down a little bit and, and setting up with a good shot there from Nicholson and White. Stretch the leg out to make the save. But with just over 11 minutes on the clock, I, I do think there's still too much Time to be played in this half for certainly the Pride yet to be looking at setting up defensively. Yeah, I think another goal will do them a big favour. And as the famous junior under nines and under tens football coaches will tell you, 2 nils the dangerous scoreline, <laughs> kids. So they've got to stay switched on. You never know what can happen. And 
it's really important that they don't lose their focus. But also, if they are to go into the final, they'll want as many positive patches as they can to take some confidence into what right now will be capital football, capital futsal, sorry, but I'm sure that game between them and Papakura City will go right to the end. Yeah, absolutely. I believe score as it stands on court 2-2-1 two, two, yes. to capital futsal. Early second half goal from Papakura, but no action after that. Mirroring this game, really. Early ga goal in the first few minutes for the Pride. And a few chances either way since then, but nothing is clear cut as the chances we saw in the first few minutes from both teams. KG affair, this one. And the Pride now on the ball. Nicholson with a good run forward. Has Patel open to her right, finds her, and back to Nicholson, who just plays it. Patel plays a little bit behind Nicholson. Hard one to bring down there. And Nikki White now assessing her options. Rolls it out for Hussein Ali on this near side. Tried to beat her marker and Rachel Brody there, but Brody equal to it. And Patel now just gets on the ball. Hops to go back to Nicholson. Just hold possession. Not wanting to force anything. As Patel, smart futsal player she is. As the power, tussle for the ball, trying to get a turnover. They get the kick in on the far side from that bit of pressure. Good ball there from Tilla to Bloomfield. Not sure if she entirely intended it, but it was a good ball nonetheless to find her. And Hussein Ali making the run on this right flank. Doesn't quite get rewarded. The ball to her feet. And the Pride now, good opportunity for them. 3v2 situation. They find, or almost find, Brody on the far side, but uh, McCormick has got the foot in there. And Nicholson tries to force it through. Crowd of bodies. Bloomfield gets a touch on it, and the Wybot Power come away with possession. Press coming in from the Pride and forces a long ball from Tiller in defense, and I'll be happy with that one just to see the ball roll all the way back. Behind for a restart through Falco. Just over 10 minutes gone in the second half. The Pride with an early goal, putting them two goals ahead of the power. How do you see the rest of this game playing out? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think it could go two ways. Pride could keep the ball in court for a long amount of time, keep position, just look to combine. Of course, they'll want to get goals when they can. Or oh, we're also starting to see them experimenting a little bit more in the attacking half. We've seen Falco kind of roll out of her goal at times and join as a fifth player. And that does invite opportunities for Wybop. And all it's going to take is one little sniff or one goal and the game's all on again. So I think Power just need to stay in it. And when they have their opportunities, really treasure that. Keep the ball. But it, could, it could, really could go either way here. Yeah, I think a lot hinges on... The next goal scored, whichever team it is. Uh, certainly Pride, if they do get a third, they'll be <laughs> looking for one now. But the, they'll be certainly looking to set up shop, so to speak. Um, three goal lead, they'll be pretty comfortable defending for the remainder of this game. As you say, though, if Power managed to get the next one, 2-1, uh, it'll, be, it'll be all on again. And with the momentum potentially on their side after that, It'll be make for an exciting finish to the semi-final here. As it stands though, 2-0, <laughs> almost 3-0, Brittany Lee Nicholson. She's got goals in her locker from that distance, but couldn't quite find the target with that long shot. And good throw there from White, finds McCormick, but well cut out by Patel on this near side as Powell with the kick in, and I want to do more with their opportunities than that. Well, the power if they have any chance of getting back into this game. Good ball out quickly from Falco. Finds Patel who with a bit of shot just flashes that across goal. Not far away at all from Patel. And that has often been the point of difference between Pride and Power. As you just see that replay there is when the Pride are trying to play balls in behind or in front of someone to run onto, they're well matched with the run 
They're not rolling out of the court, whereas Power are just a little bit over eager with that final ball. I've seen a lot of times where players are chasing after a ball that even if they do manage to keep in, it's going to be really hard to string anything together afterwards. So they just need to really work on the detail of that final ball to give themselves a real chance as Patel breaks through here. Great little Maradona. <laughs> Good block in the end there from um, Brown, I believe it was, but... Great footwork there from Patel. Would have been another one for the highlight reel. Had that found its way in the back of the net, and so would that have been from Nicholson. And well defended there from Nicholson again. Just puts the pressure on McCormick up front and lets the ball run out of play. And the pride now with a kick in. High press coming in from the power, looking to pounce on any mistakes and maybe force a few long balls that they can gain possession back with. They get the block in there, and it'll be another Canterbury United pride kick in as Nicholson goes long this time for Brody. Does well there to bring that down Brody and maintains possession. A shot comes in, she scored from that range not too long ago. At this time, comfortable for Nikki White. And pressing straight again there was Brody. Does well to find Patel, who bit of footwork on the edge of the D. <laughs> Good defending there from Power, scrambling. The Pride recycle it out to Nicholson, though, who beats McCormick and feigns to drop it off to Patel. Tries to get it across. Hussein Ali in the right place there to block it out. Patel and Nicholson link up on that far side. And that looks like 2-2 on the other court. Papakura with the equaliser. It's going to be a heck of a game over there. But I like what I'm starting to see from the power now, starting to get back to the team they were in the first five minutes of this game. A high press on, on the pride. They've got to win the ball back to be able to score and have a chance in this game. So the high press is going to be important. Yeah, absolutely. I think the only way that they will get back into this game is by not necessarily res respecting the pride, but by taking the game to them. They do need two goals to have just the chance of taking it to added time now. Um, and with about seven, eight minutes on the clock, it's a tough ask, but not undoable from this power side. They obviously scored two goals uh, yesterday against this pride team. So they'll know that they can do it, but the pride see that clock tick down further and further they'll just slowly start being a bit more conservative with their play looking to chew down the seconds and hold possession and we'll be happy to see a two goal lead I'm sure as more goals would be nice especially for us on the commentary bench as well uh, the pride won't mind it at all um, the way that the second half has, has played out as we see the flying keeper here for the power. Seven minutes on the clock is a risky one. But Lily Muspratt at the bottom of your screen there is on fifth man duty. Love to see a fifth man. But for the power, with seven minutes to go, they'll want to be extra careful. You were saying earlier about focus, and now they need it more than, more than ever. One loose ball, one mistake here. This Pride team will capitalize. They'll know the goal's empty. And a third goal here would be devastating for the power. Yeah, that would be the end of their day, you'd imagine. But I, I have mad respect for power putting out the fifth man this early. I've once played in a team that did it straight away at halftime under Callum Holmes, and I think, <laughs> I think you need goals. And why does it matter if you get them in the last two minutes or now? So if they go, if they get one, it'll be interesting whether they keep the fifth man. Um, yeah, but respect. For to power going out to win this game they could easily be just happy to be here but I think they, they want to be in the final just as much as the pride do so I'd like to see Musbrook get on the ball have some shots on goal and maybe this is giving them the focus they've needed yeah absolutely and I mean nothing to lose really for the power already finding themselves down so uh, I think with coach Mastruski that the fifth man is their best chance at breaking down this pride defense <laughs> Bloomfield almost gets on the ball there and Falco was 
providing that outlet on the right flank would have been an open goal had she managed to get a toe on that. Yeah, that's just that little bit there that the power probably need to be a bit more ruthless in their press. They're 2v1. They can go in a little bit more aggressively. They've not given away a single foul this half. So I think their press can be a little bit more intense, a little bit more aggressive to try to win the ball back. Yeah, absolutely. And interesting to see there that pride press still going strong. Two goals up in this half as Evans finds the feet of Bloomfield with a good chance on that left side and a great save there from Falco. Yes, yeah, she hasn't had to do much today, but she came out big when it counted. That's a great save. But I think Power have a little bit more spark in their game now. There's a little bit more confidence. There's a great chance for Bloomfield and Musbritt's back on the court here again for fifth man. Yeah, positive signs from them following the, the timeout. Good chance for the coach just to relay a few tactics and perhaps provide a bit of inspiration for this power team, reminding them that they can certainly do this as a goal on court number two looks to be Papakura. Yeah, and it is. That's 3-2 to Papakura. Coming back from 2-0 down. Yeah, they'll be stoked with that one. The halftime team talk must have done wonders from coach Marvin Eakins. Um, still... Probably about six, seven minutes to play over on that court. So Capital will be looking to peg one back and get themselves back in this game. But over on this court, we see as we approach the six minute mark, um, a power side coming out looking to attack the pride and get, get a goal back of their own, overcome their own two goal deficit. And Muspratt back on the ball and the fifth man. Tiller finds her and they drop it back off. Good ball there to Bloomfield who has a good chance there. Hard technique to get that on target on the volley, but promising signs for the power. Yeah, they probably had their most meaningful chances they have all game. So I think, I think they're going to be confident. I think Pride may start to get a little bit shaky, um, but they have been in this situation before the Pride and I think their experience will really play a big part as we see Musbrook come back on again, back into fifth man. Absolutely, and I'm sure they've practiced defending this fifth man, probably expecting as we get into the finals futsal that teams will try to pull it out. Um, so now a test of their defensive setup. Yeah, and they probably won't mind this going into the final to get a little bit of practice defending it if they are to see it. It also means the ball is in court for longer, um, so there's a little bit more of a chance to just relax. I mean, they do have to stay focused, but there's less running around, less transition, which we have seen. So I don't think they'll be too unhappy as long as the score stays the same. And they're still managing to keep good position on the ball out of the pride, as I say that, and it just rolls way with into the commentary bench. But you're right, with the fifth man in play, Power possibly looking for a few more combinations, a few more passes. Um, which all obviously chew up valuable seconds as a good chance comes in there and Falco looks to capitalise on the fifth man. Open goal there, <laughs> Muspratt scrambling back but off target in the end thankfully. I think that was on target, that was going to be going in for a third pride goal. And the power now back on the attack, attempts the through ball in the middle there to Simpson but cut out well. And Stone just across to tidy that up. Muspratt still in goal for the power as there's that press but Fisher does well to just skip past a couple of players there. And a good tackle over on the far side by Jamie Evans, who, got to say, has had a great game defensively, has Jamie Evans. Yeah, she's been a real star in this power side, providing a lot defensively, but also showing her chances for attack as Merkin has a small chance there, but doesn't trouble Musbert, which I'm sure she'll be grateful for. And calls just to switch on a little bit there from the Pride defense. Couple power players unmarked and behind their defensive line. And that's the danger as we get closer and closer to this full-time whistle. And the Pride have been relatively comfortable for the most part of this game, but these final few minutes will test their focus. And all it takes is a couple seconds of players switching off and one goal back for the power, they're straight back in it. And Falco will have another chance at the long shot. That looks better. Just wide of the far post there. Again, the danger for this power side. They won't want to be cheaply giving the ball away through 
you know, half opportunities or, or, or weak shots. Because um, Falco, every time she gets on the ball, will just look for that long shot. And Morrow almost pounces on that cross ball there. But nothing doing. Rolls out. The Pride back in position now. And the Wybot Power bringing a good press, forcing a mistake there. Coach Kieran Mastruski happy with that one. And interestingly, it looks like Muspratt's boot is untied. Her right boot. The lace is there. Oh, what a shot comes in. That's brilliant. Stevie Lee Tiller almost out of nowhere. Certainly caught me by surprise on the commentary bench. Maybe caught the Pride players by surprise as well. Let's get a replay of that one. Yeah, I think they've just set up there thinking the ball's going to roll out to Muspert. They didn't expect the shot. Keeper's not quite ready, and now we've got a game on our hands. It's all hands on deck now for, for the power and for the pride. Yeah, this is definitely a, a different, different complexity to the game. The power will be stoked that they got that and full of energy now for these last four minutes. And the pride may be a little bit shaky, a little bit uh, concerned that giving away such a not necessarily cheap goal is a well, well, strike, well struck ball in there from Tiller, but certainly a little bit of drop of focus, letting that one get in. Long shot there from Fisher, but nothing doing. And be interesting to see now, Powers, yet yeah, still continuing with that fifth man through Muskrat. It certainly works for them. And with four minutes on the clock, let's see what drama this game has in store for us. Pride do well there, creating a 2v1 situation, but Evans again mopping that up, getting back and finding the safe hands of Muskrat, who plays a short ball, not quite aware of how high that press was. And she's forgotten she's a goal <laughs> goalkeeper, I think, with that one. We've got a two touch violation. S smartly putting White back into goal to defend this one. A little bit unlucky <laughs> from uh, Tilla there. I think she's done the right thing if Muspert was a fellow court player, but unfortunately, because she is the flying keeper, two-touch rule applies. And as a result of that uh, foul, we see, I believe, a six-metre penalty. All Wybot power players on the line, and this is potentially a massive moment in this game. Nicholson lining up the shot here. And well blocked from the power there. Defensive shape works well. Stoked with that one on the bench. Seen Nicholson slam those home from that distance, so they'll be happy that they kept that attempt out as a long shot comes in and charged down by Bloomfield. The power now cheering on every single phase of play, every moment from their team on the court. Hoping to give them that little bit of extra motivation just to take this game and, and get an extra goal here. And the press forcing a mistake there from Nicholson. Again, you could say momentum starting to swing in the power's favour. Yeah, a little bit. Power definitely looked the more confident side, although they're at the wrong end of the scoreline, I think. They know that they can score two goals against this Pride side, and the Pride probably know that just as much. So it's a matter of holding on, I think, for the Pride. But the power, they're in and they're ready. They're not going out without a fight. As calls for out, but... Oh, ball didn't initially cross the line. It does in the end, and you'll be happy to know at home that Lily Muspratt has tied her laces, so both boosts strapped up there. As we get a kick in for the Pride now through Nicholson, who will drop it back off there for teammate. Plays along to Fisher and tries to find Patel, but cut out well by Tiller, who can't quite keep that one in on this near side. Full of confidence will Stevie Lee Tiller be after that brilliant long shot goal to get her side back in this game. And Nicholson now just can't quite find the feet of Patel on that far side. They're kicking to Wybot Power as we enter the final three minutes of this game. I believe score on court number two, still 3-2 to Papakura City. But still plenty of time for both of those score lines to change as we enter the final few minutes. Fifth man Muspratt getting involved. 
And Power just knocking it along the back, trying to fashion an opportunity. Bloomfield free at the back post, and Muspat tries to find her. Spills back out to Muspat and drops it off to Tiller, who gets another shot. Fisher aware of that one, has just bounced off the roof here at Akutangi Sports Centre. And the power now, two and a half minutes to go. Let's see what they can muster with the kick in on that far side. They'll drop it off to Stevie Lee Tiller, who in a similar position takes another shot, and that's not bad. Not on target, over the post. I think Falco had that covered. But a very high line starting out here from the power, and the Pride look to beat it, but can't quite force it. The bench applauding that press from the power. As the Pride now just setting in. Not wanting to break their defensive structure conservatively. Good ball there from Muspratt to find Stone on this right side. And an unorthodox challenge from Nicholson. Does the job. Coach Ronan Naika turned ball boy. Getting that play restart as quick as he can. And good challenge there on the far side by Evans. Calls for foul from the Wibot Power bench. But a good challenge from Patel. Right here on the live stream there, the chance from this Wybot Power bench there. Actively supporting every kick of the ball with their team and entering the final few minutes here. Turnover for the Pride, dangerous position, no keeper and goal. Nicholson gets a shot away and can't quite get that one on target. Power now, good ball forward, trying to find Bloomfield. Falco picks that one up and attempts a shot, but that one's not going to trouble the goal as almost takes the head off a few supporters. And it looks like maybe a goal. I think it might have been a narrow miss for Capital. Still 3-2. Off Muspad, whose shot doesn't go far wide of this near post. She scurries back to get White back and goal on this defensive phase. And final two minutes here, Katie. Over your, your thoughts of the past few minutes. Obviously, the game's changed quite a bit compared to the rest of the match, especially since that Wybot Power goal through Stevie Lee Tiller. Um, any, any thoughts on how we might see the final two minutes unfold? Yeah, well, we did say it could have gone either way before, and I think... Look, it's either, it's, I'd be surprised if it stays 2-1, but it probably will now that I've said that. But I think we've got either a goal from Falco uh, because of Power employing the fifth man, or Power might sneak one here. Certainly a goal from Power would make for an exciting finish. Obviously extra time and penalties here, and the score remains tied up in the semi-finals of the Ford Futsal Super League. And don't forget folks, right after this game at 10am we'll have the men's semi-final. On this court will be Southern United playing Capital Futsal as Muspratt does well to block that long shot. Playing a fifth man roll, goalkeeping on the halfway line. And Nicholson, well cut out there. Gets a shot away, but comfortable for Muspratt just to tidy that up. And they look to build on this right flank. Calls for out from the Pride bench, and the referee agrees with him. As we enter the final minute of play here, surely a goal for either team would result in some outrageous scenes. Nicholson now finding the feet of Fisher, linking up Ice with Patel and an opportunity for a bit of possession for the Pride. Haven't had so much joy in that in the final few minutes as the press comes in from power. They do well to beat that, and if Nicholson can get away from Tiller, which she can't, it would have been a good phase of play. 40 seconds to go now. The Pride will look to just eat down the, the seconds on the clock. Try to hold on to the ball. Not give the power any chances. Nicholson maybe seals the game with a... Half chance there, but turns into a wide bot power counter attack and ball almost destroys the commentary bench, but a good challenge 
from Power. 30 seconds to go. And if it's going to happen for them, it has to happen soon. Yeah, probably just looking comfortable sitting in front of their goal. I think, of course, they'd love a third, but the, the most important thing is that they defend their goal, and I think that's going to be their aim for the next 23 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Probably the longest 23 seconds of their life here as they find the goal won by Power of Equalise. Courtney Stone has ripped a long shot, much to the delight of the Wirebot Power bench. That's outrageous stuff here in the Ford Bulls of Super League. 23 seconds on the clock. And Wirebot Power have found the equaliser, 2 all. I have absolutely no idea where that's come from once again, but we talked about Courtney Stone's left foot. She's fantastic when she gets the time and space, and she's put it past Falco. We've got ourselves a game. As they have a chance here, Evans! Oh, 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 oh. 3-2! Oh. <laughs> you can't write it! That's outrageous! Wirebot Power, two goals in two seconds. And... They've taken the lead now with 15 seconds on the clock. And now it'll be if they can hold on to it. Does this game have more drama in store for us? Out of nowhere. Power <laughs> put themselves in front after trailing for 39 and a half minutes in this game. They find themselves 10 seconds away from a finals playoff spot. I tell you what, who needs morning coffee? <laughs> Falco with the long shot. Rolls out. <laughs> I just can't believe what I've just seen. <laughs> Five seconds on the clock. Pride are going to need to win this ball back as soon as they can. Nice and high from White. This is going to be it. Two seconds. And that's it there, folks. Why Bob Power beating the Pride again. The only team to beat the Pride this season, and they've done it twice. Absolutely outrageous scenes here. Wybot Power, they held on the entire game. They defended the prize attacks well. Fair credit to the Pride who played that game incredibly well. And really, it just took three moments of brilliance out on that left flank. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked about focus being a key, a key thing in today's game. And I think we saw focus when it counted and then a lack of focus when it was really important. 23 seconds left on the clock to close out the game. and. Pride are a great squad and it's it's a really tough time for them. I'm sure they'll be absolutely gutted not to make it through, but I'm glad that everyone got what they needed out of an 8 a.m. wake up today. And uh, we'll be with you soon for some post-match interviews as well. Four long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. 
our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome. Awesome, and I'm joined here with Jamie Evans, player for the Waibot Power, goal scorer, goal game winner for the Power. Jamie, it took your team a while to get into the game. I'd say Pride were pretty dominant for a lot, large patch of the game, but you guys didn't give up. What are your thoughts on the game? Uh, it means everything to Waibot. I mean, we came here with nothing to lose, really. We're always bottom of the pack, but we wanted to prove it, that Waibot can play. Awesome, and that you guys did, I think. It was 23 seconds on the clock. You guys were 2-1 down. Courtney Stone with the left-footed goal uh, to equalise, and we kind of thought we were going into extra futsal there, but you said, nah, you were defending for your life. Talk us through the moment that you scored. Oh, I just wanted it so bad, you know. We fought so hard to beat them yesterday, and we didn't want to lose now, so just wanted it, just determination. That's all. Awesome, and you've got Papakura City in the final um, you guys have played them twice now. What's the key messages for your teams going into the final? Just energy. Do the same as we did to Canterbury. Awesome. awesome. Well, all the best and we look forward to watching.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's Ford Futsal Super League men's semi-final here at the Akutangi Arena in Wellington. Today we see a huge contest between Southern United and Capital Futsal. First referee, Chris Sinclair. Second referee, Sean Lau. And third referee, Anthony Riley. Final words between the players as they gear up for this contest. Fraser Hunter and Thomas Pedersen up for the toss now. All right, so we're starting off with Capital Futsal. Starting with Sean Beresford in goal. Matthew Pedden, Thomas Pedersen, the captain. Luke Saker and Mickey Malavuk. On the bench, they have Seth Mitchell Webster in goal. Tyler Erickson. Dominic McCann, Janish Barner, Matt Bergen, Khalid Razouk, Lucas Silva, Jerson Herodier, and Jonathan Steele, with their main coach Grant Baker and assistant coach Thomas Whitnell. Over with Southern, we have Fraser Hunter, the birthday boy, happy birthday Fraser, in goal, also wearing the captain's armband. Also alongside him, in Wantanabe, Oban Hawkins, Michael Sanum, Sean Cooper. On the bench they have Lewis Wall, George Willett, Adam Hewson, Myra Manikam, Cooper Wink, João Paulo Diaz Bra, Marcus Reed, and Connor Stevenson. Head coach Benjamin Farrell, assistant coach Michael Sanum. Mickey Malavik back in the starting lineup, back in the team for Capital. They've missed him over the last couple of days, or the last day, should I say. And we're off. Southern United with the ball, looking to set the tempo. And Capital, lively on their feet, looking to put on some early pressure as they regain the ball straight away. With me today, I have the big man, Todd Bryant, alongside me. Todd, how are you? Kia ora, uh, Dom, how are we? Uh, welcome everyone to the Akatangi Sports Centre for the first uh, men's semi-final uh, of the 2023 Super League. Um, I'm good, Dom, yourself? I'm great, mate. It's good to have you here. It's been a while. It has certainly been a while. It's uh, exciting to uh, have a full futsal calendar back uh, here in New Zealand. Um, and um, it's been an eventful weekend, eventful uh, league uh, for all these players both the men's and women's for the first time uh, in the uh, Super League, same format. And uh, I'm, I'm sure this contest will be uh, a thrilling one. Um, personally, I'm supporting Capital in this, uh, in this battle, Dom. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on the uh, outcome of this game? Well, look, yeah, I think your, your top there gave it away. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I guess I have to be slightly biased towards Southern. Look, to be honest, I have, haven't seen a whole lot of Southern recently. Capital looked pretty good yesterday against Auckland. They were without Mickey Malavuk and I think uh, Matthew Bergen as well. So we'll see if he, uh, Matthew Bergen can uh, step onto the court today. I do think that uh, Capital are looking very strong. It's one of the best sides they've had in quite some time, in my opinion. But I also have seen a bit of the Southern team and I know some of these players and what they can do. Open Hawkins on the ball here being one of them. Michael Sanum under pressure there. As uh, Peterson presses high and wins himself a corner. Capital uh, well versed and uh, been in semi finals and finals, but they've never actually managed to uh, go all the way in the Super League. Malavik shoots and save from Fraser. So um, uh, personally, I'm, I'm hoping this year they can do it, but um, some would say they do have a curse on them, Dom. Yeah, it can look like that to some people. Sometimes uh, some of the teams, the way that they've started their campaigns and the way they've sort of just bulldozed through the league, it's looked like a sure thing. And yeah, at times they've just been tripped up along the way. Um, but like you said, I don't often recall seeing them not having made at least a semi-final. 
So yeah, I mean, I guess it's just a numbers game, right? Certainly is. Certainly is. Capital get us back underway now through Beresford. Goes long to find Saker. Controls the ball nicely. Rolls back out to Malavuk. Peterson now on the ball for Capital. Peden. Peterson again. Finds Saker. Healthy touch from him. Goes inside. Loses out. Well, one and there by Wantanabe. So that was Sean Cooper. Wantanabe now on the ball. Opts not to go back to Senem. Loses out to Saker. Can he find Malavuk? He can. Lost out in the end. Ooh, a fair shot there from Matthew Pedden. Oh, Von Grant Baker there. I'm looking at Peden and saying, you need to put those chances away. So a healthy save there from Fraser. Capital uh, could have gone up 1-0 early there. Um, but they've got a set-piece corner as a result. Todd, do you recall seeing a southern side that hasn't had Fraser Hunter and goal? Uh, no, I have not. I have not. He's uh, certainly um, a reliable man between the sticks. Saker now in a bit of space. He's going to shoot. And uh, another good save there from Fraser. He uh, right in the bread basket, you could say, Dom. Oh, absolutely. It's going to take a lot to beat him on his birthday. <laughs> Mickey Malavuk now. And goes with a selfless option. Squares it to his captain. And that's a goal there to Thomas Pedersen. Capital go up 1-0. Capital applying uh, a lot of pressure there to Southern United and uh, Peterson puts his side up 1-0 early in the semi-final. With the replay here, yes, Malavuk just, you can't give him the ball in that space, Todd, you can't. It's just, he's, he's lethal. I mean, you can already see the impact he's made in the first, what, three minutes. I heard he's uh, fighting fit as he didn't play yesterday, Dom, which um, I imagine has been a controversial uh, Part of uh, the weekend, Capital bringing 16 players in. Yeah, I'm just not going to say anything about that. <laughs> Southern United here struggling to maintain possession, and it looks like Baker's got his team pressing pretty high early on in this first half. And Saker with the uh, kick in here for Capital. Finds De Silva, shoots. So De Silva makes his way on, as does Matthew Bergen. Good to see him back on the court sure a side did miss him. Kick in here for Southern United just inside Capitals half. Hawkins now. Going to get around Malavuk. And they've earned themselves another uh, kick in here. Deep in Capitals half this time. Willis Wall on the ball, back to Hawkins. Looking for the safe option. George Wilson now. And scrap for work there by Urban Hawkins. He's done, done pretty well there to find Hall. He can't quite get his foot on it. Find his way back to Beresford. Got to say, Beresford's probably been on this Capital side for a while now, hasn't he? He's uh, it's one of those players that have come through the system, Dom, and uh, <laughs> he's uh, definitely uh, put his foot on the um, being the number one goalkeeper here in the capital. I actually do have some stats uh, of some of these players, which I'm going to try to find. I'm sure we could just ask Sean at half time if he better tell us. So a few players that have uh, been through uh, <coughs> the Super League and previously known as the Men's uh, National Futsal Comp. Mike Sanham's uh, done a many years of service for Southern United and it's good to see him still popping up this year. It is. As with Fraser as well. Oh, and Tyler Erickson makes his way onto the court, finds himself with an opportunity, not quite. It's cut out in the end. By Sean Cooper, Oban Hawkins looking to storm forward, cut out this time by Lucas Silva. It's Hall now. Back to Hawkins. Good active defense here by the capital side.
Ball comes across now to Hall. Quick shout out there to the legendary Sam Masterson who's watching from over in England. Sam, hope you're enjoying it, mate. It's good to have you here. Beresford goes long and Ericsson tumbles, but no foul given from the referees. And Southern United makes some changes and Fraser gets us back underway here. Well done there by Razouk to cut that out. Oh geez, that's Hedera. That is Hedera, yeah. Silva goes out wide to Banana. Good rotation here from the capital side, but uh, well defended here from Southern United. like uh, Southern United have themselves. No, Hedera restarts. Looks like it's a uh, free kick. And Capital have themselves a kick in deep inside Southern's half. Silver shoots and looks like it was an incorrect Kick and the referees give him, him another chance though. Yeah, something now they're going to have to be pretty careful about uh, Lucas Silver on that left foot from those kick-ins. Silver threads the needle through to here Dara. Erickson now, dummies. We're going to find it on his left foot. Recycles out. De Silva on the ball. Ericsson. Movement of this capital side's uh, healthy, but Southern United doing well here to defend them. De Silva down the line, and Sanum tidies up, plays the ball inside. Houston now, cutting inside. Losing that now to Barna. And winning it back once again. Ericsson. So Todd, mate, while you're trying to find those statistics on your laptop there, do you mind telling me your thoughts on the game so far? Well, I certainly think that uh, Capital probably have started out the strongest side, but Southern have soaked up a bit of pressure. Um, I'd say it's, yeah, pretty balanced. But um, scoreline 1-0 to Capital over Southern. As both teams look to... Get through their subs, get one on the court. Legendary Khalid Razouk now out in the court for Capital, as is the other legend, Jonathan Steele. Cut out by Razouk. Momentarily had a bit of a 2v1 situation until the Southern, Southern United defence did well to get back there as Hewson slows the ball down and looks to start things up again. All right, Dom, I've uh, managed to find these stats. As we were saying earlier, Mike Sanum is the uh, most capped player in New Zealand in the uh, Super League. He's played 136 games for Southern United, 56 goals. With that experience in your side, he's also won the title before for Southern. So uh, well-versed. Also got a uh, Mickey Malavuk, who's... Uh, we're in the shirt for Capital today, but 118 games and 103 goals to boot. Beresford shoots. It's an open goal there. Oh, and the finish there. Birthday boy, Fraser Hunter with the goal. 
Southern are up for this. Sort of begged the question, what was Beresford doing out of his, uh, his goal there? And Fraser Hunter capitalises for Southern and they uh, make it all square here at the Akatangi Sports Centre. Yeah, it's not quite like Beresford to run out like that. He'll be uh, reflecting on that, I'm sure, Don. And a few taunts coming from the Southern United bench there as Beresford receives the ball. Ooh, and potential there for a bit of a flare-up, but fortunately Chris Sinclair is at hand to defuse the situation. Quick smart. As is Anthony Riley. I don't think Fraser could have hit that any better, Dom. <laughs> it literally just went over a Razook's head and Grant Baker, the coach of Capital, will be uh, disappointed. They started out so well and Southern have managed to edge their way back into this game. We well, certainly love to see a player score on their birthday. It was good. Also yesterday to see Jonathan Tobias scoring on his 100th cap for Wybop. Probably his third goal, I'd say, for Wybop. I'm just teasing there. There's a little bit of a running joke back in the day with Jonathan not quite scoring many goals. I think at one point he was about 50 caps in with three goals. But he's managed to up that in recent years. Luckily he does a lot outside of the goal scoring for his side. Anyway, back to this game. Southern looking a bit buoyed up after their goal and looked to have conceded a, a foul in the uh, attacking zone there. Calls for a penalty shout, not given. Cut off there, Todd, with the stats. He's still got more to go. <laughs> There's a few on here, Dom. Lucas Silva, also on the capital side. 101 caps, 57 goals. So I just want to quickly go back to that. Did you say for uh, uh, Mickey Malavuk, 118 games and 103 goals? That is correct, Dom. That's a pretty ridiculous output. Yeah, he's... Uh, been a steward of the game, you could say. As I was saying earlier, though, this capital side have never gone all the way. And I'm sure this uh, weekend they're hoping to do that. Uh, but Southern United here putting up a <laughs> very good fight against this capital side. Still on the ball now. Back to Peterson. Out to Peden. McCann shoots. Like his uh, shoelaces uh, come loose there, and he's jumped onto the bench. And Saker takes the court again for Capital as uh, Southern United get us back underway through Hunter, the goal scorer. Hopefully, we can get an update to you guys soon regarding the uh, other men's semi final occurring on the other court. We have Canterbury United facing Auckland City Futsal. Dom, I've also just found a uh, statistic here for yourself. 94 games. 94? Okay. 17 goals. That's interesting. For, uh, I've, I've been being told it's 85 all well, this time. it's 94. All right. I'll take Stats it. Stats don't lie. Let's just, let's just, like, not mention the goals side there. It's like uh, Southern United earn themselves a uh, set-piece corner kick. Or kick in, sorry. Mm. Hawkins recycles to Fraser. Still now on the ball. Loses out to Hawkins. So good footwork there from Southern. The chance. They go down and Saker says no, I didn't touch him and the referees let the play go on and Capital now have a kick in just on uh, the other side of halfway. Speaking it's of Saker, it's 98 goals, 60, uh, sorry, 98 games, 62 goals, that's not bad. 
Saker, yeah, this, this will be his 99th game, and I, uh, if they do make it through, Dom. What are you saying? Potentially his 100th in the final? Potentially. Cool. Alabuk now with a chance, shoots and oh. Oh, Fraser. I think, I think he surprised himself with that one, but he clicks the ball. I think he did well there to step out the way he did, close the angle down very early. I think he heard us reading out the stats and thought, no, not taking any chances on this one. Oh, Southern certainly uh, sort of fought their way back into uh, this game now, putting Capital under uh, quite a bit of pressure. Chance here for Southern shoots. And Beresford says no. As Southern have a uh, corner kick set piece. Another good save there from Beresford. If you got them handy, Todd, I'd like to know um, some of the stats for. Uh, Who's uh, his, his name's escaped my mind now. He used to be a target for Southern. Brazilian guy. Carlos. Carlos Herman. That's Carlos the one. Carlos Herman. I don't know how I forgot that one. 117 games, 108 goals. <laughs> I actually think that's the most. Yeah, he's uh, he scored the most goals in the uh, Futsal Super League than any other player, Dom. Uh, he's not here this, uh, this season, though. No, he's not. Capital now through Saker, looks to find Malavuk and uh, lets that one go through, does Malavuk. There's Southern restart now. Hawkins on the ball to find Wall. And Capital come away of possession here. So Southern stepping get. up very high here. Forcing an error from this capital side. As De Silva comes back on the court for capital. Exciting morning here at the Akatangi uh, Sports Centre. We uh, had the women's uh, semi-finals, Dom, and... Oh, yeah. There were some scenes there, sort of uh, trying to sit up there on the mezzanine to catch both games. Getting quite uh, quite engrossed in the uh, Capital versus Auckland, uh, sorry, Papakura City game, and uh, saw that Capital up 2-0 initially. Papakura managed to take it back to 3-2. Just as I'm sort of trying to catch the last 50 seconds of that, we hear some noise over from this court where Wybot Power managed to come back from 2-0 themselves against Canterbury United and scored, I think it was two goals in about five seconds within the last 30 seconds to win the game. And we uh, have the final of the women's kicking off at 12 o'clock. We have um, Papakura City as a foul there to Ooh. Silva. Uh, pushes Hawkins in the face. The uh, Futsal Whites teammates uh, going right at it here. And uh, I think De Silva might get himself into a bit of trouble. The referees uh, having a discussion. Sinclair. So we've got the replay here. There's definitely a foul. I mean, it, it looks like they're both coming together to push each other. One's a little bit taller than the other. Sean Lau, the referee, and Sinclair having a discussion. And uh, I imagine they might be going to their pocket, Dom. Uh, the question is, is it going to be two yellows for both players? Is it going to be a red for one of them? We'll have to wait and see. Can't ask for a more experienced referee to be at the head of this decision. As Chris Sinclair offers his advice to his third referee, sorry, second referee, Sean Lau. 
And the players are brought over, the yellow card is out, and your initial assessment was correct, Todd. Yellow card apiece. Good decision, I think, yeah. personally. Oh, and it's followed by a second from descent from Lucas Silva. It's not like him. It's disappointing from De Silva. He's he knows better than that. Emotional decision from him, and uh, he's been sent off here for the capital side, and they've gone down to four players for two minutes. I'd like to say I haven't seen it before, Dom, but De Silva will be uh, out for the rest of this game, yeah. and also if they go through, he won't be able to be on the uh, the team list for the final. It's actually the second time yep. he's been sent off this season. But, yeah. um, do, do you think that there was a second yellow card following, so the initial tackle, yellow, and then the, the push was a yellow? Yeah, it looks like a Two second yellow. yellow cards? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I was wondering initially if it was for descent. But. Southern now shoot, Beresford saves, and uh, I'm sure Southern here are going to look to capitalise on uh, the uh, competitive advantage they have for two minutes. Set him on the ball. Hawkins. So if anyone's not familiar with the situation following a red card, the team conceding it will go down a man in the court, as you can see here, Capital with defending with three. And this will remain the case for two minutes following the red card or until a goal is scored. Southern United, a very good side at moving the ball around, like we can see here. Trying to stretch the capital defence out, trying to make the most of that one man advantage. Ambitious there from Capital, as they're still trying it on. I think it'd be wise for them just to soak up some pressure here. See if they can see this two minutes out. It's a healthy ball there for, uh, from Senum. And they are shot in from Willett. And uh, Capital surviving. Imagine there's some uh, <laughs> Grant Baker's nervous. That is Coach Grant Baker. As uh, Southern certainly have a uh, strong foothold on this game now. See if they can capitalise. Hawkins darts inside. Great work there from Barna. Will it now on the ball for Southern shoots. Prize for a handball, but Capital uh, come away with it, and it looks like a foul on uh, McCann. As uh, Capital look to uh, slow this down a little bit, Beresford on the ball goes long to Jonathan Steele. What are your thoughts on how Capital should be responding right now to being a man down? Well, they've done well. They're sort of recycling through uh, players when they can uh, to give everyone a bit of a rest. And I'm sure, uh, oh, through ball there from <laughs> Hawkins loses out. I think that'll just be survival mode, Dom. Uh, they can't be long left. And Southern now get another chance. It's interesting seeing them they are, they are going for the counter-attack when it is somewhat on. Houston shoots, and that's a goal. That's an unfortunate one there for the capital defender, but fantastic finish in the end. Looks like Adam the uh, uh, goal scorer Adam Houston puts uh, Southern United up 2-1 in the semi-final. And uh, can't say they didn't deserve it, Dom. They've been playing well. They've been playing well when it's a tricky situation that Capital found themselves in following that red card. But the goal has been scored and we have returned to normal configurations for the teams. Mickey Malavuk and Luke Saker on the court now as is their captain, Peterson. As he doesn't quite manage to get his foot around the ball properly there. Hewson, seeing goal once, he's going for it again and just wide this time. Cries for a foul as well, but the referees uh, let it go. And Capitals certainly under a bit of pressure now. 
as there is uh, just over four minutes to go here in this first half. Malavuk on the ball for Capital to Peterson. And Peyton goes long. Fraser rolls to Sanim. Well done there from Mickey Malavuk. Is he going to get a shot off? He is, just wide. What do you do now, Dom, as uh, the coach of Capital? You're down 2 1 just for half time. What would you be doing if you were uh, in charge? Put on Tyler Erickson. <laughs> now, I think, look, what they're doing, they're, they're cycling well, they've got depth. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a matter of just individuals, the key individuals, sort of putting their hand up and saying, look, I'm going to take charge of settling this game down, getting their foot on the ball. I mean, Southern are pressing quite well and quite um, vibrantly, but. At the end of the day, Capital have more than enough ability and experience in order to just move the ball around, shift the defenders around, and yeah, sort of stamp their authority on the game, get some court presence going. I think it's a big one on these occasions. And of course, the momentum comes with goals, right? So it's about getting yourself up there in attacking positions and uh, capitalising on them. Beresford uh, cleans up there. Payton in a bit of space. He takes it. Darts inside. Gets a shot away. Saker shoots. with the shot. Oh. It's a very good chance there for Saker. And he uh, won't be happy with himself there. He should have put it away. The fantastic replay. Fantastic ball here from Pitt. And through the legs of the defender, Saker. Yeah, it's a fantastic save there from Fraser Hunter. As Houston cuts out a follow-up attempt from Saker, who links up with Pedersen once again. Who looks to square it. Pedersen can't quite get there. That's better from Capital. Southern United have a uh, kick in deep inside their own half as uh, Capital now uh, chucking it back at Southern is at the back end of this first half. Hey, Currently a, trailing 2-1. Have a look up the uh, the foul count there, Todd. Four fouls accumulated for Southern United. Could that come into play in the last three minutes of this half? Potentially. It's uh, always exciting when a team's on five fouls. Uh, and they do commit another one, they go to the 10 metre spot. I'm sure there's a few players in this capital side that will uh, be asking for the ball. And Southern now in possession. Saker there is uh, on a foul or a kick in? A kick in. <laughs> Houston storming forward, Houston with the left foot shot and it's in the bottom corner. Adam Houston with the second goal of the game. He's caught the capital side sleeping there and um, almost like Beres would just watch that go in. And uh, Southern, 3-1 over capital in the semi-final. And Houston picks up uh, his brace, two goals in the first half. Referees um, yellow card there for Houston for the celebration, was it Todd? What did he do? Not entirely sure, but he's uh, being t instructed there by Benjamin O'Farrell, his head coach, just to leave it and get on with the game. No point sort of making that any worse, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Certainly have a game in our hands now as uh, Luke Saker does well to get out of the corner there. Collected by Fraser Hunter, was it? And a yellow card this time for Saker. All right. I, uh, if I was Grant Baker here, I would probably be calling a timeout for Capital just to settle themselves. There's still plenty of time here in this first half and Capital uh, have been known for um, being frustrated. And uh, want to make sure that all the players stay on the court. 
Right, Todd, just to make it all about myself once again, I've uh, just got a message there from Nicole Mills. She's adding that my stats include BOP games as well, so apparently I've played 85 for Waikato and the remaining for BOP. Anyway, enough about me. Back to this game. Yeah, it's quite interesting, Todd. I feel like Capital certainly been into this game as favourites. 3-1 down at this moment. Two minutes to go in the first half. How are you feeling? Well, obviously, as I disclosed earlier, Dom, I'm... Uh, Personally, would like to see this capital side go through. But um, I think Southern have uh, certainly been the better team in the first half. They've well balanced, um, soaked up pressure, uh, taken their opportunities, um, and they haven't sort of brought into the the fiery capital. Uh, we saw a red card, quite a Good. few yellows. So. Um, as I said, I, I, I'd like Grant to get his, get his players together and just sort of calm them down. Get them settled. And uh, cries for a foul there from Southern and uh, Campbell have a kick in. Just over a minute 30 to go here in the first half. First semi-final. And the other one's going on the other court, Dom, and I'm sure at halftime we'll get a score update. Yeah, I'd love to see what's going on over there. It's a pretty interesting one. I mean, again, going into this game, the other court, Auckland City would be the favourites. However, they did lose 3-0 to Canterbury in their first match in, uh, in Auckland. Manikin on the court to Hawkins out wide on this far side. Mara Manikin, very seasoned player in the uh, Super League. Spent a lot of time playing for Auckland. Now he's found himself down south as he cleans up after Fraser Hunter's initial save. Heavy pressure there from Matt Bergen. Somehow Hawkins has managed to keep it in with the sh shoulder. Goes to Matt Bergen. Matt Bergen with the shot. And is that a save there from Hunter? Follow up. Certainly a save the second time. And that's our scrambling defense from Southern United. And uh, looks like we've got to play down on the court. And there's another foul from Southern. Potentially, which uh, could mean they go to five fouls. Jao Paolo and just and that is it. Yes, five fouls for there. Southern. Oh yeah, you're right. So uh, over a minute, uh, just under a minute. Sorry to go here in the uh, first half. As it looks like Southern are going to get us back underway. Uh, you can argue Capital certainly have had their chances in this first half, Dom. Yep. I can't argue that. So you can see here Capital bringing on the likes of Tyler Erickson, John O'Steele, to sort of run up the defence of the Southern, try and make the most of this five foul situation. As you know, in the game of futsal, anything can happen. But uh, it certainly helps to, in this position, go into the second half of the bit less of a gap between the teams if you're down by 3-1. 3-2 seems a lot better when the coach is given that half-time talk. If I was Baker, I'd probably get Saker on the court and get him to run at uh, the Southern United defence to try and draw that uh, sixth foul. Steele now, looking to dance down this far side. And he's still got it, does Steele. He ends himself a uh, kick in. 27 seconds on the clock. Eriksson now. We're going to go around Manikin, gets around him, shoots. Good ball there by uh, Ericsson, but it's cut out. Hawkins storming forward. John Steele does well to get over the back of him and win the ball. Good tackle there by Hall. Hawkins on goal. Hawkins shoots and it's a finish. 4-1 to Southern United over Capital in the first half of the semi-final at the Akutangi Sports Centre in Wellington. What a game we have here, Todd. I'm sure it's not all over. This is a great start here from Southern, having gone down 1-0 initially. Brought back into the game by their birthday boy, captain goalkeeper. And followed up by a series of uh, fortunate events for them, including a red card to Lucas De Silva for Capital. And there we have it. Half-time, 4-1 to Southern United over Capital Futsal. Crack of a first half, Todd. I'm, uh, yeah, sitting here <laughs> with my, my mouth open going, what's just happened? They're up 1-0 and uh, Southern have replied with four goals, Dom, and you could say that it's um, but I'm sure 
We're going to have an eventful second half as uh, both teams go on to the break. Coaches uh, have the opportunity to speak to their teams and um, we're probably going to take a short break. We are, um, yes, yes. We'll see you guys shortly. Uh, stay tuned. Go to a few commercial breaks. Uh, and yeah, see you in about a min uh, four minutes and a half. Catch you then. New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here with the second half of the Ford Futsal Super League men's semi-final. Southern United up four goals to one against Capital. Crack of the first half, I'm Dominic O'Sullivan. I have here with me Todd Bryant. Todd, what are you expecting to see in the second half? Oh, it's going to be interesting to see what Capital do um, strategically uh, in the second half. <clears throat> Did they go with a flying keeper early on? 
Uh, they are three goals behind. Um, or do they just sort of look to go through uh, their paces? And they certainly did create a number of opportunities in the first half. So um, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Grant Baker does. Um, as I said before half time, it is Southern's, Southern's game to lose now. Um, at the halftime break, I did nip over to court five and six, and the uh, other semi final uh, is currently nil all at halftime. Oh, interesting. Shot there from Hawkins, goes high and wide. Yeah, it was a pretty good start, like you said earlier on, for uh, Capital in that game. They were looking very strong, looking like they had, you know, their goal up. They had had uh, dominance over the court for a bit there. And Southern United just didn't let up. Obviously, that red card to Capital as Luke Taker goes forward there. Red card to Lucas De Silva for Capital. Made a bit of a, an impact on the game. Southern United were able to capitalise against the advantage momentarily. And it's followed up with a few. Uh, Pretty good futsal goals. And here we have it. Bit of a mountain to climb here perhaps for Capital. But like you said, Todd, they are ready for this. And they do have a very dangerous fifth man in their locker. It is also, um, depending on who you are, Dom, sometimes trailing in a game is just as hard as uh, being, a, being ahead. Um, Southern, I imagine, will uh, have to soak up a lot of pressure in this game to get through. Uh, but I imagine Capital will be uh, going all out and that will potentially open up a few opportunities for Southern United to potentially increase their scoreline. So uh, the women's semi-finals earlier on, we saw um, both teams that were trailing at half-time uh, come back and win the game. So um, <laughs> I think we're uh, installed for an action-packed second half-time. That's a great point you make, 100%. I... Uh have experienced that myself as a player, especially if you go for, a, you know, almost an entire half just in that role of defending, defending, being the ones with something to lose. It does sort of, you know, chip away. It's a lot of lot of energy and it's, yeah, it's only so, so long you can uh, manage that for. I think also the big key here is the momentum of the game. So, yes, Capital will be pushing forward. It is their game to get something from at this point, but it depends, you know, whether or not they are the ones to first, you know, can score a goal first and also when that happens they have to score first Dom uh, early I think as well that's going to be important for um, coach Grant Baker to make sure he also recycles through these players and doesn't give too many too many minutes to um, you know the likes of Malavuk and, and Saker Saker on the ball shoots it's another chance for Saker he's had a few of them As Capital press the southern side. Did we uh, touch on Fraser Hunter's stats before? It'd be interesting to see if there's any other goals he's got that he can add to that one. Fantastic goal earlier on from Fraser Hunter. Catching Sean Beresford slightly out of his goal. Managing to hit it spot on. Get himself a goal on his birthday. That's actually his first goal, Dom. It's his first goal? I mean, it, <laughs> it makes sense. 82 games. 82 Just games. And his first goal. Stats almost as good as yours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Capital now get us out back underway. Peden plays. The old uh, Canterbury United player, Ber Matt Bergen. And Saker now in a bit of space. Fantastic ball there from Mickey Malavik trying to find Saker, but uh, Fraser Hunter equal to it. Gets his head to it. Mickey Malavuk, you know, we said before, the amount of goals he's managed to, managed to score in his, you know, 103 in his 118 appearances, this being his 119th. He's one heck of a goal provider also, isn't he? He's very good at creating those opportunities for his teammates. Certainly is, Dom. No assist there, no. Be interesting to know that one. I'd love to uh, tell you I have the stats on that, but uh, I actually don't. Hawkins now on this near side, looking to get around Peden. Saker plays oh, Peden. Good work there from Capital. Well read there from the goal scorer Houston. Houston with two goals for his team in this game. 
Be good to see uh, Southern United to slow this game down a bit now in position. Just sort of look to get back into control. They're looking like they want more goals, Todd. <laughs> yeah. We talked earlier about, you know, them potentially sitting back and playing that role of the ones defending with something to lose, but you know, they're not exactly sitting back, uh, stepping back the whole time. They're looking hungry. My question is, when does uh, Capital go to the flying keeper? And who will it be? I think the Silver would normally uh, play that role for this Capital side, but he's no longer in the match. Hawkins now to Sanham. Yeah, well, we saw uh, earlier in the competition, I think it might have been the Hawks Bay Series, uh, Capital versus Auckland. Uh, we're trailing very late on in that game, and Capital managed to get a late, late equaliser through Tyler Erickson's left foot, top corner. So he could be a key man in this team for that purpose. So uh, Southern draw the foul now. Set piece opportunity for them. And Sanham's on the ball. He shoots and it's blocked by Malavuk. Send him now to Houston. Willis on the ball for Southern. And it's just good uh, position here from Southern United. Oh, that's a tight little ball there. To the legs of the defender. And a shot wide of Beresford. Well, it puts his uh, foot through that one, and as you said, Dolma Southern haven't sat back here. Eh? They're still, uh, yeah, still pressing as well. Ericsson on the ball for Capital, sort of threads the needle to McCann. Great ball, shoots and can't quite get the power now. Yeah, I have found at times, sometimes, if you uh, switch your mentality up a bit, if you are ahead in the game, sometimes it can be quite effective to press. And, you know, if the press is working for you like it has been for Southern, there's no, no, no reason to necessarily change that up. Sure, you do leave space, but if you're putting the immediate pressure on and it's working and they're not able to get into their rhythm, it can be quite effective. Great industry there from Don McCann. Barner, Matt Bergen. Bergen finds McCann. Good pace on the ball here from Capital. Tyler Erickson slows it down. Looking to square up Sanham. Good movement by the Capital runners here. But equally good defensive shape from Southern. Seeing a lot of the ball here, Capital, but they're just not able to find that piercing pass through the defence as they eventually lose out and it'll be a southern ball. I just remembered, Todd, the goalkeeper that preceded Fraser Hunter, is it Daniel Bacocious? See if we've got some stats for him. Remember him being a very good keeper, very hard to beat, and a great guy. So if he's watching, hope you're enjoying the stream. Was it Daniel De Sousa? No, no, it's Daniel De Sousa. No, it's um, maybe not Daniel Bacocious. Uh, I might be sorry if I'm butchering the name. Starts with the B. Perhaps uh, Sam Masterson could help me out here from over in England. I know who you're talking about, but can't find his name. It might not be Daniel, maybe this, yeah. So Southern give the ball away and Beresford gets us back underway here for Capital. So time's ticked by in the second half here. Southern United is still up 4-1 over this Capital side at the home of Futsal at the Akatangi Sports Centre. It's uh, just over 13 minutes to go. And it'll be interesting to see at what point Coach Baker 
makes some changes and uh, sort of kicks into another gear for this capital side who are currently trailing by three goals. What do you make of Capitals' response for the second half so far, Todd? It's, um, hasn't really been one yet, Dom. A, uh, I say it's been a balanced second half to date. And uh, as I said, I think Baker will look to um, potentially make some changes. Southern still... Uh, Tyler Erickson. Ooh. Good defence there from Michael Sanham. So looking to uh, press this capital side and And thank you, Sam Masterson. We have found Daniel Bacocious, 72 caps and one goal himself as well. Well done. Ericsson now on the ball for Capital. Here at Dera. The can goes down the line to Ericsson and uh, it's gone out for a kick in. Oh, and there's a goal there in the other quarter. I think it's from... Looks like Canterbury United. Canterbury United, United yeah. Shoots. Ericsson puts it wide of the uh, far post. And yes, it looks like uh, Canterbury United have gone up 1 0 over Auckland City in the other semi final. And as it stands, it could be a uh, South Island final. I don't think we've seen that before, Todd. Uh, no, we haven't. Exciting times. We'll see what happens. Still a lot of time to go. As they say, anything can happen in futsal. Indeed. As the uh, women's teams have showed us earlier in the day. Cooper Wink now on the ball. Yeah. Looking for a cleverly disguised pass, but a little bit too much on it. And here coach uh, Grant Baker telling his players to step. Just the one foul in this half so far from Capital. I think you're right, Todd. They're going to have to chuck on some players to run up this defence. Still plenty of time, but the clock is ticking. And the semi-final is Southern. Currently lead four goals to one over Capital. Oh, is that a foul there from... Uh, yep. Don McCann goes wide anyway. Southern get us back underway. Still now on the ball. Hedera oh, blocked out. Oh, Sean Cooper storming forward now. Can he get the shot off? Not quite. You know, the keeper's ball. Saker comes back on the court. So does Peterson. <laughs> Sullen will be happy uh, how they've started the second half and still got the. Uh, Three goal lead. Peterson now for Capital, wins the ball back. Looks to uh, play the ball down the line, loses out. And Cooper. Jono Steele now, 2v2. Looking for Saker at the back post, but cut out cleverly. Cooper Wink now, holding it up. And finding Hawkins. Great work there once again by Sean Cooper. Set piece time for Capital. Razook goes to the far post and it's uh, blocked from Southern United. And they go again. Saker now on the ball for Capital. Back to Razook. 
Southern United have defended uh, very well here in the second half. They defended it superbly, Todd. I've been very impressed. It doesn't look that exciting at times, but it's, a, it's the little things. It's the uh, the body shape. It's the making sure that they can visualise as much of the court as possible, and it's the coordination between them. So they're taking turns at putting pressure immediately on the ball. As we see Capital in the fifth man trying to move their shape around here. Sean Beresford opting himself to be that fifth man, setting up very high on the court here. Nothing to lose for Capital. They need a goal. And Sean Beresford with the volley. He loves a shot on goal, Sean Beresford. Quite a handy outfield player. It's like a timeout has been called here from Southern United. As uh, Ben O'Farrell looks to get some messages to his players. And I assume it's probably going to be around how they want to set up against this flying keeper of Capital. Yeah, I'd say so. It'd be quite specific to... Oh, and there's another goal there, it looks like, from Canterbury. Uh, yeah, looks like Canterbury United are up 2-0. Now the semi-final. You're uh, coaching this Capital side, Dom. What would your uh, messages be at this time out? Well, I'd first off apologise that I'm on commentary and not able to be of much use. No, I apologise. But um, look, I'd basically just... I, th I mean, the foul count's not really coming into play at this point, but I think it's worth trying to mix it up. The Southern United defence right now is far too solid, far too coordinated and far too well rehearsed. They're going to have to try something different. They're going to have to chuck on a few of those uh, X-Factor players to you know, mix it up, try and run at them, try and draw fouls and most importantly try and create some sort of a chance because at the moment they're few and far between. I couldn't agree more. Just over 10 minutes to go here in the second half. As uh, Steele does uh, well there, and Peden comes away with it. Cut out there by Southern United. Ooh. Looking for the hat trick is Adam Hewson. Looks like Tyler Erickson's uh, put on that fifth man shirt. Yeah, not surprising to see here. He's proven himself before, and he's a hungry, hungry player when it comes to scoring goals. So no steal. Manages to find his Captain Peterson. One there by Hewson. And cut out by Saker. Hawkins gets us uh, back underway here for Southern and Is that a third goal there yeah, from there's Canterbury? A third goal there from Canterbury on the other court. Wowza. Steele goes to the far post, blocked there by Senham. And yes, it's uh, three goals to nil on the other semi-final, Dom. So you, could, you could argue at this point we might be seeing potentially four upsets from all four semi-finals on display today. And that's a terrible challenge there from Pedersen. He's hurt himself in the process, and uh, we also see Hall, sorry, Lewis Wall. So like Peterson was going for the shot and um, didn't click the ball. He clicked the uh, Southern United player. That would have really hurt. Yeah. I think they're looking both equally as hurt. It's not good to see. It's opportunity here for Capital to gather themselves. There he is, the goal scorer from goal, Fraser Hunter. If I haven't mentioned yet, on his birthday. So both players are up, Peden's okay. And yeah, so is Wall. Malavuk comes on for Peden. And looks like Lewis Wall's gonna also have a bit of a rest. Replaced there by number two in Wantanabe. Fabulous work there from Jono Steele. He's an athlete, Jono Steele. I was just thinking that he's uh, very, very, very athletic, is Jono Steele. Have you had the pleasure of witnessing one of his uh, forward flips in real time? I mean, how good would it be if. Um, Jono Steele scores a goal and we might see some acrobatics from him. Can only hope. Steele goes down the line and 
can't find Matt Bergen. And that clock's ticking down just over nine minutes here in the second half. I think our Southern are quite smart. It appears as though when they do have the ball, at times they're looking just to try and keep position, try and avoid that capital press as much as they can in order to eat up the clock, as it is a stop clock. So every time it does go up, the clock pauses, no time's lost. But if they can keep position, or if they can keep capital with position in less potent positions, the more they can do that, the faster the time ticks away. The press now from capital. Very high. As uh, Steel catches Sanum, who's asking for a foul, but nothing given. And Tyler Erickson's on in the uh, flying keeper, number four. And this is where it gets exciting. It is. This is where the game can either really take a turn for the best for Capital, or there's always potential with this high risk, high reward for it to blow out and go the other way and for it to be over before we know it. Capital need to move the ball quickly and try and find the, the gap in the uh, defense of Southern. Malibuk now on this near side. Shoots. Mickey Malibuk going for his 104th goal. Tyler Erickson on the follow-up. And puts on the boosters. He almost ran up the fire exit trying to slow down on that run. Capital in position again, they get another go. Just over eight minutes. And I imagine this Southern are going to have to soak up a lot of pressure here. This is the familiar Southern call in the background, if you can hear it, Todd? Sure can. Wouldn't it be a futsal event without it? Malavuk, Peterson, to McCann, and it's well defended there by Southern. Can now to Saker. Erickson on this near side. Dummies back to Saker. Peterson now on the ball. Erickson just keeps that one in play. Southern United has set up well here. Erickson, healthy touch. No, it's not. And Southern come away with possession. So I to say, how's your hands, Todd? But we're good. And Malibu on the ball. Play Erickson. Southern sitting deep in their own half here. And Capital go again. Peterson. McCann. Razor Hunter going for a second. Oh, not far off there, Todd. Almost doubled his goal scoring tally for his career in the uh, Futsal Super League. That clock kick ticks down. Erickson now on the ball for Capital. Peterson down the line to McCann inside. Oh, Back great to Peterson. Work from those two. A shot there from Wantanabe. Collected by Saker, who charges forward. Immediately looking to set his capital side back up. Good fast work there from Tyler Erickson. Good from Don McCann. Peterson looking to square it up once again. Fraser Hunter. Getting shadowed by a couple of those capital players. Giving uh, Luke Saker enough time to go back and once again collect it. Saker looks like he's running out of steam here. Uh, Need to see a couple changes here from Coach Baker. Erickson now on the ball. Still haven't created an opportunity here from the uh, flying keeper. And now uh, Saker's hand goes up. He's signaling for a sub. As Khalid Wazouk steps up. A lot of experience in Khalid Wazouk. Saker's still got enough in the tank just to cleverly deal with that before he uh, is snuffed out in the end by Adam Hewson.
good footwork there from Malavuk, who comes through the centre of the court, finds McCann, and substitution time for both teams. Southern have done well to soak up the pressure of Capitals flying keeper, and he's got an update from uh, the other semi-final. The Dragons are currently three goals to nil over Auckland City. Well, we can confirm then, Todd. Another upset occurring. Malavuk, good touch from him. Steal. Still steal. Ericsson on the uh, quarter gain for Capital as we go through the motions again of the flying keeper. Looks like Sinclair is found some water on the court. Erickson now. Right back into it. Rizouk. I do like how uh, Ben O'Farrell set his side up here to defend this. Oh, there we go. A shot from Wall. Just wide. Yeah, I've got to agree, Todd. I've, um, I've been very impressed this entire half of how uh, Southern have responded to going up so early in the first half. And... The way they've set up, it's been very solid. They haven't really given Capital anything. Capital have looked to create something here and there, but it's it's not really looked like, um, yeah, they've been very likely to score at all in this first uh, the second half. Would you agree? Certainly would. And uh, it's looking over at the uh, Capital side. They um, almost like they're out of options. They need to change something up here, uh, otherwise the uh, scoreline is going to stay the same. As Beresford uh, gets us back underway now for Capital. And he goes long to Malavuk. Does get his head to it, but Fraser Hunter manages to get his fingertips also. And that's a great tackle there from John O'Steel. George Willer on the ball now for Southern United. Plays Hawkins. It's a good challenge there from Malavuk. Steele with the shot and well defended there. Sean Cooper, what a tackle. Looks like Capital have uh, not opted to put Ericsson back on the court. Razouk, the press there from... Southern United. This game has certainly lost its structure here in the second half. Steele with the shot. Pulls to Bergen. He does well. But again, the chances they are creating, they're not quite looking like their ideal. Ericsson uh, comes on for Beresford. Razouk, Bergen on this far side. Capital needs to move, move the ball a lot quicker. Razouk, Ericsson. Steal. Although there's only uh, just under five minutes remaining, Todd, I do think a goal here for Capital would still do wonders for their, for their spirit. I think the uh, momentum that it would provide and sort of the uh, psychological damage it could do to this uh, Southern United defence who have been set up superbly this entire time and haven't let anything through as Tyler Erickson gets a shot off. Fraser Hunter clashing there with John Steele and restarts. I think, yeah, it does sort of have an effect when you, you know, you get used to it almost. It's your comfort zone when you're not conceding. And as soon as uh, that changes, then I guess mentally all the possibilities change and a little bit of doubt might creep in as uh, John Steele manages to cleverly keep that ball in. Somehow finds Luke Saker, who's beaten to it quite comfortably in the end by Fraser Hunter. Who's been a standout player for this game so far, Todd? Um, I mean, Adam Houston's got the double. He uh, punished Capital with the double blow in the uh, first half. He's certainly been a standout player for me. 
Oban Hawkins always solid as a rock. Yeah, it kind of goes without saying with Oban. Mr. Consistency. And we've got a timeout here for Capital. In the second half, and it's a chance for the players to grab a drink. And I imagine uh, Southern's um, probably not much fuel left in that tank as uh, they've soaked up a lot of pressure at the back end of the second half. They still uh, lead Capital four goals to one. I got, I got asked, Todd, what do you think the message is here from Grant Breaker? He's, he's, he's looking quite composed, he's looking relaxed. He's a cool, calm and collected individual, is Grant. What do you think he's saying to his players? Um, patience, move the ball quicker. There's still plenty of time in this game to score. We've seen it happen before. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think um, it would be wise to sort of take that approach, just to sort of not put too much emphasis and too much urgency into it because... You know, I'd say I w it wouldn't be completely outrageous to see three goals occur within one minute of stop clock action. Just under four minutes left here. And we see Hewson going for his hat trick. And there he is, Adam Hewson. His third goal of the day. Fifth goal for Southern United. And what was looking already like a bit of a mountain to climb for Capital has just gotten that much larger. Todd? I'd say that's probably the nail in the coffin, Dom. Yeah, it's the old high risk, high reward that comes with the fifth man approach. Doesn't quite work out and they snuff you out early there. Adam Houston all the time in the world just to run the ball into goal. He's already celebrating. Looking like it's going to be a double blow for Capital. First in the women's and now in the men's. Women's uh, final though, at 12 o'clock. Yeah, it's going to be a cracker, Todd. What are your predictions there? You can't ride out a Wybot Power after that performance? Certainly not. Um, I would probably put my money on Papakura City. Yes. They've got some um, experience in that side, but as you said, Dom, the Wybop certainly um, showed some intent in their semi final coming back late in the game over Canterbury United. And at this stage, it's barring any ridiculous and uh, uncharacteristically quiet action in the other court. Uh, it looks like Auckland is still trailing to Canterbury, so it's looking like a Canterbury, Southern, and all South Island final, Todd, for the first time. What are your predictions there? If that were to be the case. Or should we just leave that one for now? It's a good question. Uh, it's always tough when you uh, get to the sort of last day of the uh, Futsal Super League. Players are tired, probably carrying injuries. It really does come down to fitness, experience. And both sides have won it before. Canterbury won it on a, on a couple of occasions. I think the difference there is Southern having won it once before, they probably still have a couple of players from that side, whereas I don't think it's quite the case for Canterbury. Take it that... now to Peden. What can uh, Capital cook up here with just uh, under three minutes to go here in the uh, second half? Five goals to one. Ericsson on the ball. Saka. I actually don't think Capitals produced a shot here from the flying keeper. Yeah, I think you're right there, Todd. Saker on the ball, Ericsson. I mean, they're good at it. I think it's more, more of a, less of a criticism for them and more of a um, compliment to how Southern have been. They've just been so lively. They've been so active and managing to shift their shape around and get someone pressing the ball as soon as they can. We talk about Capital wanting to move the ball faster, but I mean, Southern are just reading it superbly and they're just getting a player out there. And it's just... It's looking like it's too much. I mean, you know, as a capital player, you're hoping, you know, eventually the, the energy levels are going to run out and 
something's going to change, the momentum's going to shift, but they're just not letting up. Mara Manikin on the court here for South. Fantastic player, very experienced. He'll be very familiar with uh, seeing out a lead like this, having played for Auckland for all those years. Oban Hawkins faces up to Matt Bergen, finds himself as the uh, makeshift goalkeeper. He's done well there, Matt Bergen. Done very well. I thought he was going to catch the ball there, but he uses his body nicely. Peterson now for Capital. Tyler Erickson there, found himself in some good space. Dummies the right foot shot onto his favoured left, but it's read smartly by the defence there of Southern. Corner okay, kick now we'll for a Capital. Corner, yes. Erickson plays Peterson. Shot goes wide from Erickson. Minute 29 on the clock. Good ball there from Saker. Now Bergen back to Saker. Oh, and a great shot from Saker. Fraser Hunter getting his right elbow to that one. Just tipping it over the bar, up to the mezzanine above him. And Myra Manikin is looking to clear the ball there. Probably could have shot. Don't think he's too fast. And a shot here from Saker, initially wide. Fraser Hunter, Hunter does get a touch to it. It will be a, another corner for Capital. Here's the replay of that. You can see it is going wide just. Peterson now for Capital. Clock ticks down, end of the semi final, and it's going to be Southern United going through to the final to play the Academy United Dragons. Bergen shoots, gets another goal to, and again, this defence from Southern has been uh, solid as a rock in the second half. and. Certainly deserve to be the team that goes through. Yeah, some fantastic direction from uh, the coaching staff there, from Benjamin O'Farrell and Mikey Sanum, two extremely experienced players. I mean, Mikey Sanum himself acting as a player, but he's been there, done that, he's won it before. Benjamin O'Farrell, I believe, has won the tertiary competition. I can't quite recall if he did, I think he did win the, uh, he was part of the winning Southern side. Back in around 2017, I'm going to hazard a guess. And uh, Ben O'Farrell was also the main man for his Kavanaugh side. Back around maybe 2016, they managed to win the secondary school nationals. With no coach, just Ben Farrell, sort of leading the lines. Manica has done well there. He has. And uh, that's it, Todd. There we have it. Southern United are into the final. Defeating Capital Futsal. Five goals to one. Todd, what are your thoughts on the game, mate? Well, I mean, Capital started well. Took the lead early on and uh, they made a couple of mistakes and Southern United certainly punished them, took their chances. Capital didn't. And the second half was all very much Southern soaking up that pressure and um, they certainly deserve to be the team that goes through and they'll be playing uh, Canterbury United Dragons at 2 o'clock 
in the grand final of the men's futsal Ford Futsal Super League. And uh, at 12, we have the women's final. We have Papakura City taking on the Wybot Power. Some very big games coming up, Todd. But look, it's been a pleasure having you on. It's good to see you again. And thank you for uh, your fantastic commentary. Sorry, it didn't quite work out for uh, Capital there, but um, it was a great game of futsal. And uh, it'll be really interesting to see what happens at 2 o'clock when, uh, when Southern come up against Canterbury United. But until then, folks, have a good time. Be sure to see you then. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow.
Kia ora, no mai, hardy mai. Welcome to the Akatangi Sports Centre here in Wellington for the Ford Women's Futsal Super League Grand Final. We have uh, Waibot Power taking on Papakura City in the uh, inaugural Women's uh, Super League 
and the new format here at the Akitangi Sports Centre as the teams walk out onto the court for a 12 o'clock kickoff. I'm joined here by Jack from New Zealand Football. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Well, definitely woken up after some of the games we've already had here today uh, on the final day. Some absolute blinders, a few on paper upsets as well so far in the semi final. Obviously, should uh, mention Wybot Power beating Canterbury United Pride 3 2 with two goals coming in the last 23 seconds from the power to book their spot here in the playoff finals. So I'm sure we have an exciting final uh, of the Ford Futsal Super League ahead of us. Yeah, certainly uh, Futsal never disapp disappoints on uh, the finals weekend. Um, things never go the way you think. Uh, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Well, obviously Wybot Power will on paper be coming in as the underdogs here, but they've proven uh, over the past two games, giving Canterbury United Pride their first two defeats of the season, that they can beat big teams. They also beat Capital earlier in the season, so they're going to be up for the challenge. Papakura City, they came back from 2-0 down in the previous in their semi-final against Capital Futsal to win 3-2, and they're going to be up for this game. Obviously, they are the champions from the slightly smaller format last year. Um, I think it's going to be a close one. I would, if I was a betting man, put money on Papakura, but absolutely could go either way. As uh, We'll take a look at the Wybot Power lineup. The starting five for Wybot Power is Nicky White in goal, Courtney Stone, the captain, Jamie Evans, Elossi Bloomfield, and Lily Muspratt, an unchanged starting five from their semi final. And on the bench is Snowball, the backup goalkeeper, Barclay, Tilla, Simpson, Carter, McCormick, Hussein Ali, Brown, Mischewski, and coach is Kieran Mischewski. The coin toss now, both captains in the middle of the court. And shortly we'll be getting this game underway. If you are tuning in on the live stream, welcome. Hope you do enjoy this fixture. The uh, starting lineup for Papakura City. We have Bradley in goal, Anthony Cooper, Benmore, and Pretty is the captain. And Jack, I'm uh, probably on the same page as you. Uh, I probably put my money on uh, Papakura. Um, some experienced players in this team who have uh, won the title before. Um, but also, you can't count out the Wybot Power, certainly after their, um, their comeback earlier today over the Canterbury United Pride. Yeah, they'll be riding that high, carrying that momentum into this game. Papakura City, obviously, a lot of depth, strong coaching. Stuff there as well, Marvin Eakins, Mr. Futsal. Um, so it's another big challenge for Wybot Power, but let's see if they're up for it as Papakura City get us underway in the blue, playing left to right across your screen. And early chance there for Anthony, just flashes across goal. Wybot Power in the burgundy, I would say, playing right to left across your screen. The power get us back underway now here. Benmore on the ball. Plays it to the far side. And pretty. Sorry, Courtney Stone. Anthony on the ball. Holds the ball up nicely. Cooper. And runs out of runway there. Be interesting to see how these sides set themselves up for this game. Yeah, certainly, uh, judging by how they've both played previously, especially on this weekend, Papakura City comfortable to sort of hold the ball in possession as a tussle for possession comes in there. Not quite going out of play. Both teams still fight and turn it over, but it falls away for Papakura. Um, but they set up. They like to, you know, keep possession, knock it around the back, not try to force chances when it's, when it's not on. But when it is on, they'll lay it into their pivot player, usually right or... Ella James in that target role and look to play one twos off her and, and link up the power. Meanwhile, prone to a few more long shots, long chances from out the ball, out, out the box. They did seem to rush things a little bit in the semi final, and, and you know, maybe a little bit more composure would be the message between the two games from the head coach. But I think they're both, uh, both sides comfortable with the ball at feet, and both certainly have players in their ranks that can create a moment of. Magic and take the game by the grip of the teeth as Cooper there with a good interception on the cross ball. Steals possession for her side and tries to do herself, cuts inside. And the block eventually made by Wybot Power. Go, 
And Jamie Evans on this far side, right hand of your screen there, number eight for Wybot Power. Good game uh, against the Pride in the semi final. Great defensive player there, just knows how to shut down passing lanes and be in the right place at the right time. Certainly one to watch here in this game as they'll need her to shut down this dangerous Papakura side. Certainly be interesting. You've got Marvin Eakins at the realm of Papakura City. He's um, been involved as a player um, in the men's side. Um, coach of the uh, New Zealand football futsal whites. Um, he's certainly got some experience um, in this format of the game and um, I'm sure um, his players will be relying on him heavily um, as they look to, to win the uh, Ford Women's Futsal Super League. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of futsal experience, you'd be hard to find somebody more well-versed than Marvin Eakins. Been there, done that. And pretty much every single competition that is available to him. And now his, his playing days are slightly behind him. Head coach, he's passing on his experience to the next generation. And this Papakura City side definitely reaping the benefits of that. Obviously coached them last year to the title in the Ford Futsal Super League. And they'll be hoping to do the double here over Wybot Power. Good ball there, finds Stone. Shut out by Bradley as a great shot comes in there from Jamie Evans. Bradley had to make a double save and was up for it, but had to react quickly to tip that one over the bar. The corner kick there on the far side, Captain Courtney Stone of the Wybot Power to get us underway. Takes too long with that spot kit there, it seems. And play turned over to Papakura, but a loose back pass there from Ben Moore. Tidied up by Bradley, but Bloomfield was up for it. Two and a half minutes gone here in the Women's Ford Futsal Super League final. Um, Todd, if you had to make any early predictions, I know it's tough in futsal, but... Um, what, what would you say? How do you see this game developing? Well, you see uh, Eakins has just rolled on uh, four substitutes. Um, I think um, probably too early to say the game's been pretty balanced so far. Um, neither team is sort of... Oh, it's a good shot there from Papakura, and it hits the uh, woodwork, and it's gone out for a uh, goal line clearance. But yeah, too early to say, Jack. I think um, it'd be good to see both teams sort of move the ball around the court a little bit, get some position going, and sort of work into this game. Uh, both teams have had um, a couple chances each early on. So I think I said earlier, experience, uh, probably fitness as well, given the uh, the weekend's already been a busy one, is going to come into play today. Um, certainly I look at this Papakura City side and uh, experience sort of screams from them. Uh, so... We'll see, but I mean, this sort of enthusiastic Wybot power um, <laughs> come off a, a, a good result in their semi-final. Um, I, I imagine they'll probably um, sort of take it to this Papakura side. Yeah, absolutely. They're not going to make it easy for them. They also mentioned experience because they talk about the depth of quality across the Papakura City bench. You look at some of the names on the team sheet there and the names that still haven't seen the court yet. And it's uh, embarrassment of riches, really, for Coach Marvin Eakins. Uh, this Wybot Power side have proved that they have quality of their own, albeit less experienced, but still players that can make a difference for them all across their team sheet. There's a turnover there for right on the far side, flashes a shot across goal. Both teams with early chances in this game. Be a kick in there for Wybot Power on the near side just to get us back underway. Mischewski on the ball now, just trying to find the feet of a teammate to build a bit of possession, but it's turned over, and Sophie Williams for Papakura City will collect that. And this is how Papakura like to play. They'll combine with each other along this defensive third, invite the press almost, look for the gaps to play that killer ball forward or drive down either flank, and it doesn't quite work for them there, but if we make a note of that, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a few goals in this game for them to come 
through that style of play. That's certainly how Papakura have been approaching this weekend in the Ford Futsal Super League so far. It's always nice when you've got someone in the, the likes of Hannah Reddy as your target. Um, play the ball sort of through the through the middle of the defense to Hannah, and uh, she's definitely going to hold the ball up. She's um, really strong on the ball, and as she's uh, on the ball now, she's done exactly that. Bounces off a few challenges and earns her uh, side a corner kick. Yeah, it's classic Hannah Reddy there. She'll control the ball from a long throw or a pass in and just hold it up. A few rollovers on the ball. Just maintain possession and has a shot in her locker from anywhere really in that attacking third. Can generate power, so a threat for sure for this Wybot power side. And Papakuta City laying on some early pressure. A kick in which Sophie Williams will take and drop off the brim now. Quick one-two there. On the near side as a shot from distance comes in and that's not far away at all from Abby Wright. So second, uh, second time we've hit the woodwork as Papakura City look to uh, edge up in this game. Sort of dominated possession the last couple minutes and um, I'm sure Eakins will want to see some rewards for that. Yeah, certainly early warning signs for this Wybot Power side. They'll, we're talking... Uh, about focus in the first game of the day with Wybot Power and Canterbury United Pride. They're going to need a lot of that there. Can't afford to switch off at any moment during this game because as we saw, or as they experienced, all it takes is a couple seconds of magic and the game of futsal can absolutely turn up on its head. And knowing how strong this Papakura City side are at attacking, they're going to need to be defensively sound and keep that structure for the entire match here. There's a tempted switch of play there from Neve Simpson for Wybot Power. Doesn't quite link up with Carter on the far side. And already again holding up play. Well, finds Bremner who tries to turn out a danger there, but crowded out by two Wybot Power players, and they do well to earn themselves that kick in there. Applause from the Wybot bench. Had already with a bit of space to drive into now. She'll charge that shot, doesn't need much of an invitation. Get the shot away, does ready. And deflects off Wybot Power player for Another Papakura City kicking. And Williams just picking up the ball in a pocket of space in that corner. Drops to Bremner who finds the feet of Reddy. Comes back out to Williams and he'll potentially look just to recycle there. Back to right. Good challenge put in though from Emma Brown. Shrugs it off. And Papakura now with a bit of possession. Why Bob not really, oh, big challenge there. Not really looking to press that back line of Papakura too much so far. Potentially instructions to, to save the legs. Long game ahead of them. And not wanting to give up any pockets of space in behind if they do venture out of their defensive shape. It's another four come onto the court for Papakura. Looks like Eakins is... Uh Rotating his players in groups of four in this game. There's Wybop. Got to press now. And Papakura have done well. Yeah, Le James just with a good bit of footwork there to maintain possession. She drifted across the court. Anthony on the ball now. Who finds the feet of James. Plays a 1-2 for Anthony, but can't quite link up with the run made on the left flank. It'll be... Nikki White in goal. Had a great game against the Pride, did Nikki White for Wybot Power. Some absolutely crucial saves she made. And we'll be hoping to replicate some of that form against the Papakura City side, who will certainly have the work cut out for her. Yeah, that's Wybot Power just to get us restarted with play. A long shot comes in from Stevie Lee Tiller. 
She scored the first goal of the game in their semi-final from similar spot on the court, albeit in the other goal. Brilliant long shot that just snuck into the near post. Caught everybody off guard, I think, that one did. Is it a foul there, or is it kick in? I think a kick in there. I think it's uh, just taken a deflection off of one of the Papakura players there. Barkley, as she tried to hustle it out, did well there. So when that kick in, and Papakura now come away with a bit of possession. Again, not looking to rush things. Happy just to knock it around the back, Anthony. Finding Cooper on the ball now, who will cut inside and look for that ball up to James. She finds her, and James does well there just to lay it off to Anthony, but a bit of miscommunication there. And a counter-attacking opportunity now. 2v1, Tiller gets a shot away. Good save by Bradley at the end and cleared out of danger by Maxine Cooper. Wipe off uh, catching Papakura City out on that transition. Probably their best chance of the game so far. Ooh, oh, and a block off the line there from Ella James. I think that was hitting in. Had it not been for that intervention. But no, Todd, I think you're right. I think uh, certainly Wybop will look to break on that counter as, as much as possible. And I would say on the face of it, that's going to be their best chance at picking up a goal as a dangerous opportunity there cleared by Cooper. I think Coach uh, Mishnewski has probably said, look, let's, uh, let's set up strong in our four and uh, defend well and uh, catch out this Papakura City side um, when they do make an error and uh, they've done exactly that so far and it's fair to say this game's well balanced after the uh, first eight minutes. Yeah, absolutely, a good chance there from Hussein Ali, he tried the cheeky back heel. Almost caught Papakura's defence out but Bradley was equal to it. And you're right, but good start to the game from both teams. I think they've got their game plans and executing them well. To be expected, Papakura City with the share of the chances and the possession, but Wybot Power defending well and trying to make your opportunities count when they come their way. I think the power can stop that ball sort of going through to the target, um, which we've seen already happen a couple of times, is where Papakura are dangerous. They look to play off the likes of Reddy or... Um, Ella James in that role. Um, they can sort of probably be a little bit more narrow defensively. Um, I think they'll yeah, really challenge this Papakura side. Yeah, absolutely. That is a hot spot on the pitch for Papakura City. That long ball up from defense into the target player and looking to run off them. Cat Pretty, another player who fills that role for Papakura City and arguably three of the best players in that position, uh, some of across the country. Papakuri have so even if Waibot Power do set up to try to break that it'll be tough for them to win the ball off them as a good bit of play from Papakura City comes in there as Anthony on the ball now on this right flank looking for the ball forward and does well to find Cooper who tries to squeeze it across to James once twice no dice goes out for a kicking looks like um, Dave Payne's into the building Jack those, uh, Dave Payne, a, a steward of the game of futsal. Some would say the founder, the godfather of futsal in New Zealand. He's uh, probably going to be jumping on the uh, the mic at some point this afternoon. Oh, I'm sure he will. He was supposed to be in my position actually right now. Um, done a lot for the game. Dave Payne has, and it'll be absolute honour to get him on the commentary bench. And we'll look to get the the rolling sub off the commentary bench on uh, when he makes his way over to us. But in the meantime, you're stuck with me. And why about power? Have a corner. It's like uh, Papakura have done the usual four subs as well. Good set play there. Rolled out to Stone, who dangerous left foot. Courtney Stone has. Another one of the goal scorers in their semi-final, but blocked out well by Waters it was. And 
and Wirebot definitely have the, the support, the majority in the crowd today. You see the men's players there, both Bath and Serge and the Rapids cheering them on. Their bench, as always, nice and vocal. And that could be the sixth man, if you will, to get them across the line here, this extra level of support. a uh, nice sort of addition uh, this year, Jack, of having the men's and women's teams play um, together over each series. Um, sort of brings the community together a little bit. And um, it's good to see uh, the men's team from uh, the Surge and the Rapids supporting their fellow teammates from uh, the uh, Bay of Plenty and Waikato region. Yeah, absolutely. I've you know, heard whispers that Relationships between the Rapids and the Surge are a bit of love and hate, but they have a shared shared goal here in supporting the Wybot Power team. Obviously, those two sides didn't quite make the playoff bracket, the top four. Um, but good to see this Wybot Power side making their way all the way to the finals and giving the Waikato Bay of Plenty region something to cheer for. They're always big presence in the Super Leagues, uh, that part of the country. We've got a corner now for Papakura City. It's Sophie Williams who will drop it back to Bremna. Gets a shot in. Buckley arriving late at the far post. Almost turned that in, but couldn't quite get the connection with it. As two balls come out of the advertising board there. Yeah, just through a crowd of bodies there. Buckley maybe not quite aware of that pass coming in, but... Again, danger signs for Wybot Power as a good challenge there. The follow-up on the ground from Evans, I believe it was. Shot comes in from Buckley, but not going to trouble White. I think it's taken a deflection on the way through, and it will be another corner. Finally uh, found the ball and Papakura have a set piece corner kick. Shot in there, healthy, but oh, and the follow up from Williams puts it over the bar. Yeah, it's potentially another source of goals for this Papakura City side. Uh, those set pieces as Bloomfield gets a bit of space in behind. She skips past Bradley, calls for foul. From the Waikato support base, but I don't think there was anything too malicious in that one. And play restarts down this right flank. Good one, two there. Waters linking up with Bremner. Trying to find the late run of Buckley on the far side, but didn't quite get it there. And another ball into Bloomfield. Does well to bring that down, and we'll just play it out. Cycle possession. Muspratt getting on the scraps of that one, finds Bloomfield, who tries to fashion a bit of space, but it was Bremner on the far side, who just got a foot in, made the challenge. Yeah, Bloomfield's uh, looking dangerous in that sort of pivot role for the Wybop side. She's certainly going to be causing some issues if they can find her feet. Yeah, she's another one of those players that are super integral to the setup of this Wybot Power team. Plays her outfield football for Auckland United, I believe. Might be completely off the mark there. But a good player in both codes and finds herself in Ford Futsal Super League final, tussling for the ball with Venmore, and she's brought down. But the referees, a good position to... See that one and deems it legal. Bloomfield again comes away with possession. And well defended there by Papakura and they have a chance now. That's good recovery there from the power. James shoots. Looks like that's gone out for a corner kick for Papakura. Yeah, 
Yeah, just over halfway in this first half of the Ford Futsal Super League Women's Final. We get a replay of that chance there from James. Both teams still equal, no goals uh, found for either of them, but uh, interesting matchup between the two. Both teams have their chances and it's still anybody's game. It's a Papakura City, probably the share of possession and the better chances so far, but Waiba Power have looked dangerous in moments. And the long ball there tries to find the feet of McCormick. Tussling with it there was Simpson and just smashed out of play by Anthony. Power now in position. So uh, well defended there by Pretty. Yeah, and Waiwa Power there trying to force a long ball down the right flank. Picked up by James and a shot spills out from Vimmore. Uh, Power get the block in and manage to clear their lines. Yeah, Papakura City kicking over on the far side. Looks to be Venmore who will restart play. Drops it to James who cycles it out to Anthony. Finds James again in a bit of space to turn. And Venmore now shooting chance. Blocked out well there. She still comes away with it though. Drops it back for Anthony. And sorry, it was Cat Pretty there with a shooting chance. And she was on the ball again. Cup got a city now just... Bit of possession on the ball, happy to wait for the right opportunity to show itself as Anthony tries to pounce on the scraps, but Nicky White collected. The shot comes in from Carter. Maybe we're going to trouble Bradley that kind of distance. As she gets the throw in and finds Pretty, who does well to bring it down in a chest and turn there. Big thumping challenge in there from uh, James uh, of Venmore, I believe. And she stayed on the ground here as Venmore. The referees will just come over and see if she's all right. Looks to be fine. And with the shot there was Venmore, but not her best work, wide of the post. See Tiller, we start play. Simpson trying to play the 1-2 with her on that far side, but cut out well. I got power kicking. Rolling subs here, Hussain Ali joins the fray for Wybot Power. Bottom right of your screen. And the long ball just cut out well by Venmore for Papakura. Shooting chance from the kick in. I think that's a, a save there. I think a goal will certainly sort of open this game up a little bit. Hopefully we get one before half time. Both teams sort of going through the motions at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I do get the feeling. I mean, they're both relatively evenly matched. Both teams see four rolling subs here for Papakura City. Um, it's most likely going to take a bit of either individual brilliance or let's say a team play more likely for Papakura than Waibot Power. Ball crashes into the commentary bench. Um, but you're right, no, goal would certainly open things up here. It'll be interesting to see how the game changes depending on which team does get the first goal. Whether if it goes the way of Wybop, they choose to set up a bit more defensively, take the, take the goal and see if they can ride it out till the end of the game, whereas Papakura City, uh, I'm sure they'll just feel a bit of relief if they can get that goal. I, I don't think they'll change their game plan too much. Should they find themselves in front with still this much time to play? 
But it will make for a more comfortable halftime team talk from Coach Marvin Eakins if they can find themselves in front. And an ambitious effort there from McCormick. Doesn't quite come off for her. I think the longer the uh, power can hold off this Papakura side, that more impatient they'll become and probably force some errors. And it'll be good to see the power go up. Papakura yeah. certainly moving the ball a little bit better than the power, but. Ooh. Good save there from Mickey White. Better to see from Papakura moving the ball around nicely, using the uh, Hannah Reddy to their advantage. And the press coming in from Wyabop, chasing that ball down, but Sophie Williams, good defending. Just see that run out of play. Good ball through, finds the feet of Reddy. Does well there again, does Reddy, to just hold possession for her team. And Cooper plays the ball across to Williams, who looks to link up with Cooper. Sells it, though, and goes cross-court. Bremner now cutting inside, trying to slip Reddy through. And Hussain Ali with a chance to counter. Bremner right on her tail and manages to get back. Good defending, but a link-up play with Williams there, and they've done well. Papakura counter-attacking opportunity now through Reddy. Just slows the ball down. Finds Cooper. The right-hand side. Tries to beat McCormick, but she's just run out of play there. Good defending by McCormick, who stood Cooper up well. And Wybot Power can't quite find the feet of Brooke Barkley making the run. Good to see Barkley back on the court. She had a nasty ankle injury in that semi-final. Arrested her after that, but all clear from the Wybot physios. And ready now, shrugging off a challenge. Potentially calls for foul there. Referee's right in front of it. A bit of view that we have here in the commentary box. It only looked like a tackle from behind, but all ball. Their corner for Papakura City. Another good challenge there, this time Barkley. Just not letting Reddy any space, not allowing her any space to turn. Dangerous player is Henny Reddy if she can even get half a second of time to think about putting a shot away. She'll take it. Papakura just can't quite find their opening. The power of uh, setting themselves up nicely defensively. Soaking up that pressure. They do need to close that middle though because they're finding ready every single time. Yeah, well played there. Bremner and Cooper just linking up, but challenge comes in. Bit of a tussle there, middle of the court. And it will roll out for a Papakura kick in in a relatively dangerous position for them. You see Captain Courtney Stone take the field for Wybot Power. Just under five minutes to go here and the first half, both teams will be wanting to pick up the first goal of the game. Just to settle the nerves somewhat before the halftime break as a scrambling bit of defensive play there. Shuts down the turn from Reddy. Can't quite bring that one under control, does Reddy. And the tackle made, knocking it. Out of play. Cooper will lay this off to Williams. Evaluator options. Tries to get the shot, but shut down well by Barkley and left to roll all the way for Nikki White and go. Calls from Eakins for his players to stay high and has worked well. The 
in the ball back and four substitutions coming on the court for Papakura. Certainly have uh, it's all been Papakura the last couple of minutes and we're just uh, under four minutes to go here in the first half. Score still at nil all apiece. Stone gets us back underway for the power. Oh. Foul there from Papakura City. See what the power can do with the set piece. Yeah, Jamie Evans did well there just to ride off a few challenges and that foul must Pratt lining up a free kick into a dangerous area Bloomfield goes for the spectacular and defended well by Papakura and it's must Pratt who plays a ball forward I think that's taken a deflection off a Papakura City player it has and they earn themselves a corner and a relatively rare chance for them to put a bit of pressure on, test Danielle Bradley in goal. As Mas Pratt whips a shot in, and that's off the underside of the bar. <laughs> I thought that went in, Jack. I thought it went in. <laughs> we'll get a replay of that one, but that's the closest either side have come to this first goal. It's Muspratt who took the shot, and look at that, just knocks off those square posts doing bits. And here she is again, surging run. She's got options on her right if she can find them. Blocked out by Anthony, but Bradley comes out, shuts down the space. And warning signs now for Papakura City. Why about Power finding their stride? And <laughs> another shot from Muspratt there, a bit more comfortable for Bradley. Had to be aware to it. And a good throw finds Pretty, who will... Try to get that one on target. Tough technique there. Courtney Stone shrugs off the challenge from Bremner. Tries to find a player on the left, but a good interception there from Anthony. And a good bit of link-up play here. Ball's just gone out of play, though. And Courtney Stone interfering with Anthony's kicking. it would be a yellow card for her. Completely necessary, I don't think. But, you know, passion, tension, and <laughs> finals futsal. And Anthony just waiting for the all clear now from the refs. She's got it, and she'll get play underway with a ball to the feet of Pretty. Drops it off for Venmore. Sorry, Abby Wright. Fine for Rosso there, has just been shut down by. Evans. Pretty does well there just to keep position, knock it back. And Anthony linking up with Barroso, who's gone down, holding her knee. Saw one there. Next of these will just stop play as Fizio comes over to have a look at this one. Yeah, two minutes to go in this first half here, and still nil-nil. Honestly, I it could either team could could be taking the first goal. I would, if I was a betting man, again put money on Papakura taking it. But at the same time, why about power? A few good shots through Lily Muspratt, who's on the ball now. Almost a counter-attacking opportunity there for Papakura, but it's turned away. And now Bloomfield, but a space tries to beat Cat Pretty, tracking back. The momentum keeps sort of switching, Jack. It was all Papakura City for a healthy five minutes, and now uh, the power is sort of taking it back to Papakura at the back end of the first half. Oh, it'll be great to see a goal before halftime, though. Oh, and uh, I'd love to. And I think this game does need a goal just to open it up. It's been a bit of a cagey affair so far. Both teams not wanting to overcommit when going forward. A bit conservative in their, their rotations. 
Certainly, both teams would love a goal before half time. It would be a uh, interesting team talk, I think, for both sides should it remain nil all. Not sure how the coaches would approach that. Reddy does well there to turn away from danger, but uh, tracking Bloomfield manages to get a foot in. Broso's lost her shoe over on the far side of the court. Back on now. And Muspratt now winding up a shot, but not going to trouble Bradley there. Wide of the post. Corner kick. Yeah, I've seen a deflection somewhere in there. I'm not quite sure where it came from, but referees made the call. Better view than us. And I'll probably leave it again there for Muspratt. Yeah, and a good save forced out by Danielle Bradley. Low into her left. Say if Waibop are going to score, it's probably going to be through one of those Muspratt long shots. She's <laughs> been peppering them. Probably up almost to the double digits now, the chances. And they do look dangerous. Has another good long pass there. That's the link up with McCormick, but Anthony does well to cut that out and receives the ball back from Reddy. Gets a shot across and on target. Ah, not too difficult there for Nikki White just to get down and make the save. Power now. Plays it long to Bloomfield, who skips past Anthony. That's yeah, most likely going to be a yellow card there. I think Anthony's just grabbed the ankle of Bloomfield as she's run past her. There it is. Interesting battle between those two players. Set piece here for the power. Probably will be a shot. Yeah. <laughs> I'd imagine we're going to be uh, resorting to the number one player in the book, which is letting Lily Muspratt rip it from range and on target again. Good save from Bradley. Bloomfield trying to bring that down, but first from again, and Muspratt has another try. They're not far away at all. Certainly wouldn't be surprised to see one of those nestle on the top corner at some point in this game. 40 seconds on the clock. Bradley will go long. Cut out well by Muspratt initially, but position turned over. And 20 seconds roughly to go now. Papakura City not necessarily looking to force it. Maybe want to run the clock down and just give themselves one more chance to get a goal here. Good back heel, finds Reddy. We will try to turn inside. Blocked out by two Wybot Power players and counter-attack was almost on. But Papakura City now with a few seconds left on the clock. It's Barroso, Bremner on the far side. Barroso it was. And it's half time. Nil all. Interesting matchup. Two teams, but no goals to show for either side here in the Women's Ford Futsal Super League Grand Final. Exciting half of futsal awaits us. Bit of an arm wrestle the first half. Um, we've said it, I think we've both said it, Jack. A goal, I think, will certainly open up this game, but both teams go into the break. Nil all. Coaches have an opportunity to have a chat, and uh, we're going to have to take a five minute break ourselves. Sounds we'll see good. You soon. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style, and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range, and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow.
We believe in supporting and nurturing our extended sporting whānau, working towards promoting a healthy group activity that kids, parents and friends love. We want everyone to feel invited. It is in our DNA. We are accessible to all. We are football in Aotearoa. We are the beautiful game and we are proud to be the largest sporting whānau in New Zealand. Ford, we are always looking towards the future. So while we are proud of our range of vehicles, we are even prouder of being the first company to support not only the football ferns, but the next generation. And the legends we grew up wanting to be. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. And we're back here, folks, in the Women's Ford Futsal Super League Grand Final between Papakura City and Waibot Power. Nil all, first half ended. But not without the lack of chances for both sides. A couple good opportunities from Muspratt with long-range efforts. One rattling the underside of the crossbar. And Papakura City also looking dangerous through their pivot play. Through Ready or Cap Pretty. Um, still anybody's game, very much so in this one. I think it's very much a case of whoever scores the next goal will change the complexion of the game. I can't see this being a 9-10 goal thriller from here. I think it's going to be quite a tight finish. Wybot Power obviously beating Canterbury United Pride uh, in their semi-final. Two goals in the last 23 seconds to overturn that result. So certainly riding that high. But Papakura City, their depth and quality might prove too much for this young Wybot Power side. All to play for in the second half though. 45 seconds till we get underway. Wave at the camera there. And it will be interesting to see how both sides approach this second half. A bit of a cagey affair there. Um, Papakura City obviously looking for possession along the back line. Not trying to force anything too much, but when it's on, dropping the hammer, so to speak, and playing some nice tight combination play, especially around their pivot player. You see Auckland City on the screen there. Fell 3-1 to Canterbury United Dragons in their semi-final. Yeah out of the competition. Relative upset for the Dragons. On paper, that was first place versus fourth place. And obviously in the men's final, we do have Canterbury United Dragons playing Southern United, which will be happening at 2 p.m. straight after this game. But for now, we're looking at the second half. We should get some action ahead of us. Somebody needs to win this game. Whether it takes extra time and penalties to get to that point, we'll find out. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, the second half of the 2023 Women's Ford Futsal Super League Grand Final gets underway. What do you think the old half-time messages were, Jack? I couldn't quite hear my bot power over on that far side, but I did manage to catch a bit of the Papakura City one. And very much just reiterating the danger of losing focus, falling asleep. Um, they know that... Well, that they're the best team according to themselves in, in this competition but they have to play like the champions and so a bit of a rework to how they've been pressing looking to shut down a few of their identified shooters obviously Muspratt had a lot of good chances from deep with relative little pressure so it's a bit of a restructuring and how and when they press but I think overall happy with their performance I bought power, not sure. We did get a wave to the camera from one of their players, but in terms of a team talk, I'm not quite sure what the strategies will be. So it will be interesting to see how both teams approach the second half as both sides search for the first goal in this grand final. It does uh, finish nil all at full time. Jack will uh, we'll be treated to some extra time and maybe even a penalty shootout. But um, I like to think 
The lock is going to open soon, and that almost squeezes through the goalkeeper's legs and Nikki White, but she clicks it. I guess that's the danger of this sort of game, right, where it's tight as it has been. Um, chances are it'll come down to a moment of magic or a mistake, and you'd hate to see a mistake causing being the decider here in a grand final. If we do have to go all the way to extra time and penalties, I'd, I'd hope that it's a something like a 3-3 draw rather than a nil all. Bit of excitement. But regardless, one of these teams have to win. One of these teams will be the Ford Futsal Super League champions 2023. Whether it's the relative underdogs, Waibot Power, or Papakura City making a back-to-back -back title. We'll wait and find out. Attempted link up play there on this near side between Ben Moore and Anthony. Doesn't quite come off as it's crowded by a couple Wobot Power players and goalkeeper Nicky White goes long, but Anthony's with that well and Cat Pretty has a bit of space to turn into and holds on to the ball well, finds Ben Moore on the left flank. Turns, tries to shake off her markers, but crowded out there by Wobot Power defense. It'll be pretty much a corner. On the kick in line for Papakura City. Anthony, good ball in to Cooper, who tries to lay off Venmore there, and Anthony in support. Did well initially to shrug the challenges off, but heavy touch. And it'll be Wybot Power to get us underway as we see Neve Simpson and Hussain Ali take to the court, rolling subs for the power. We saw Hussein Ali also played during the week uh, in the New Zealand secondary schools um, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes, yeah, she did, representing uh, Hamilton Girls High, I believe. Good player, good, really promising young player, actually, Hussein Ali. Still only in that secondary school age bracket, but doesn't look out of place at all in this Super League. Highest level of domestic futsal in the country is... She charges down that shot from Ben Moore on the right flank. Certainly been a busy week of futsal in Wellington. So everything sort of jammed into one week. Does, yeah, feel that way. Um, I mean, it is, you know, great to see so much futsal on show, uh, especially as I was saying last night, you know, COVID obviously had quite a pause on competition. So they do come fast, thick and fast, these Futsal competitions this week has been a long week for the support staff involved, but it is just great to see futsal at any level being played. And we've had some brilliant, brilliant games across this week. Potentially the best still in store. As Abby, Sophie Williams passed there, just not quite finding anybody. The power can just be patient here and I think they'll start to frustrate this Papakura side and hopefully uh, opens up an opportunity. I would like to see the power go up 1-0. I think that uh, for the neutral, maybe that's the uh, team that they'd throw their support behind. A good underdog story everybody loves. But Papakura City will be doing everything they can to ruin that fairy tale. There's a good bit of skill there from Hussain Ali. And ready, well played to just bring that under control. But no, you're right. I think if Wybot Power are to score, I think it'll be a similar vein to their goals against Pride and an <laughs> absolute screamer, the most likely source of a goal for them from, from distance. This Papakura City defense is hard to break down and find any room for combination play in the attacking third. So be interesting to see how that goal does go in, if it does. But Papakura City certainly... Stepping it up a gear in the second half here. As you say, they might, as the half goes on, feel frustrated that the chances aren't quite falling for them. But sure, they'll be wanting to keep their head and just keep the game plan going. Keep the, the chances are coming for them. And all it takes is one moment, one goal for this game to, as I've said, open up completely. That's Barkley trying to bring the ball down, but a good challenge from Sophie Williams. Hussain Ali to get the ball 
Get play underway. She'll drop it for Tiller, who charges up a long shot. Yeah, both coaches up on their feet, offering instruction to their teams. Constant tweaks and changes. As that ball's just cut out there by Hussain Lee, but a space for a teammate on the left flank to drive into and trying to find the feet of Barclay there in the middle, well cut out by Venmore. It's where the power are dangerous from a set piece. Yeah, absolutely. Saw it in the first half. Uh, Mus Pratt, who's not on the court now. Stevie Lee Tiller there as well, has a long shot in her locker. That's all. Powell will be happy with this. As that shot comes in, but Papakura City aware of it. Part of that halftime team talk, they know they've identified the shooters for Waibot Power, and they know as soon as they get half a chance, a bit of space in Papakura's half, they're going to look to just rip one. As it comes in again from Stevie Lee Tiller, quite wide of the goal there. But you've got to say, that certainly looks the most realistic way for power to get themselves ahead of this game. Let's do a long range screamer. Not really testing uh, the Papakura City structure, defensive structure there is really slid in trying to nip the ball off Nikki White. Worth mentioning as well, Papakura City have swapped the goalkeepers for this half. Karina Brown on the ball now, replacing Danielle Bradley. Two very experienced goalkeepers there. Again, an embarrassment of riches on the bench across every position on the court for Papakura City. I think um, Jack, uh, Karina Brown actually um, signed for the Wines and Phoenix women's team uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, they had a, a goalkeeper crisis and um, I think she travelled over the ditch actually and um, went away with the team for one of uh, their away fixtures in the A-League. Yeah, I think I remember seeing her on the, uh, on the bench there. Of the team, that's great experience for her. And I guess, yeah, just proves her, her quality, regardless of the size of goal. And it's Bremner now finding the feet of Reddy, almost slips away from her, and it does. Good challenge, though, from Bremner, fighting with Tiller to get the ball. It's a wide bop power kicking. It's Captain Courtney Stone. Links up with Barclay. Tiller now, but a space to drive into on the left. She'll get a shot away. Good save, Karina Brown. Needed to be made that one. Looked on target. Just over five minutes gone in the second half. Still goalless, but see both teams slightly changing their approach. Obviously. This tactic of long shots is still there as almost a flicking from Evans comes off. Not quite for the power. Um, but still, yeah, relatively hard to predict where that first goal is going to come from. Could be Lily Muspratt with a long shot like that. It's where uh, the power are dangerous. Sort of their game plan really, isn't it? Get a seat piece high up the court and um, pepper that goal. Eventually one will probably go in. <laughs> You miss every shot you don't take, as they say. Um, I mean, so far they've missed every shot they have taken, but they won't let that deter them. A few on target, and they won't mind how this game has developed. Certainly the happier of the two teams with the scores tied at nil-nil. And as you've said before, Papakura City maybe just getting a bit frustrated as this game progresses if they don't manage to find their way ahead. Papakura City will be very well aware of the fact that games can change in a matter of seconds. They're trailing to the pride up until the last 30 seconds where they scored two to win it. So they won't mind this at all. They'll be happy with how the game's developing so far and confident that should push come to shove, they'll be able to pick up the winner. Well cut out there from Evans on Cooper. Cooper now on the ball, across to Anthony. 
Good ball there to find the feet of Ella James, who squeezed it out for Cooper, but that's a little bit too much on that one for Cooper to get a hold of. Goes for a kick in, a goal kick. Goal restart, I should say, for Nicky White. And Anthony again, well read. Good game so far in the defense has Anthony. And she's on the ball now, a bit of space on that right flank. Drops it off to Cooper. Cooper back to Anthony. And it's just to beat Bloomfield and find Buckley. Uh, Buckley can't quite find her player, much to the <laughs> delight of the Waikato Anthony crowd. And it's must right now, the call to press coming out from the coach, and Cooper does well there, but... Ooh, good challenge from Muskrat. Cooper's just hit the ground hard there. Should have hit, I think, on the way down, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit tough challenge, but she got the ball. And yeah. next thing, Cooper looks like she's okay, which is good. Yeah. Here's the replay now. See, initially, good challenge from Cooper to win the ball back. All ball from Muskrat, but uh, yeah, rough one as the head comes down onto the court there. Potentially lucky to come away not too knocked up from that. Always a sore one. Kicking now, Ella James with a shot of Bloomfield. Here we go, bit of space to drive into. Buckley does well to track back there and earns her team the foul. Yeah, I've heard teammates clapping her on for that one. That was a crucial intervention from Mickey Buckley for Papakura City. As you see again there, just gets in front of Bloomfield, gets the ball across, wins the foul, backflip for good measure. Happy days. And Anthony now finds James, good long ball there. James lines up Buckley, who had a bit of space on that right-hand side, but just scuffs the shot, pulls it wide of that far post. And the game's starting to slightly open up a little bit more here as both teams look for that first goal. Still no sign of Dave Payne on the commentary bench. Sure he'll make his way over here at some point for the men's final. Buckley on the ball now. Back to Anthony. Thought about going long, but just rolls it off to Cooper on her right side, who tries to find out of James. Great tackle there from Lily Muspratt. Again, having a good game is Muspratt. And Buckley just does well to get a foot in there. Shut down that. Ball through to Bloomfield. What are the chances here of Lily Mas Pratt ripping a long shot? <laughs> Takes a touch though. Oh, she chooses to pass. It's a Courtney Stoney captain. Cut out well there by Cooper. Looks to be okay after that head knock a minute ago. Courtney Stone rips one. Thought that had gone in. Rattles the side netting. She scored from a similar position in her semi final. Yeah, just the wrong side of the post this time. See a few substitutions. Both number 10s taking the field. There's one on the ball now. Amy Waters for Papakura City. And the other one, Morgan McCormick, taking it off of her and getting a good surging run forward. But a half chance there. Great defending in the end by Cooper with two. Why what power players on the ground? Karina Brown initially came out well to make the save. On Miss Chusky, I believe it was. And Power will be happy with this. This is, as we say, where they look dangerous. Muspratt lurking from deep. And here it is. Not a best work, though. Do you think we'll see uh, either team adopt the flying keeper if the scores are still nil all, maybe in the last five or six minutes of the second half? Or do you think we'll... Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Obviously, high risk, high reward. I believe both teams do use the flying keeper. Got it in their locker, but I would be hesitant if I was the coach to deploy there unless they were trailing the game. It's a good shot there from Anthony. You know, obviously, flying keeper, good for when you're Trying to get a goal, but it doesn't leave you very exposed at the back. And 
unless you can capitalise on that with the goal straight away, the chance of a turnover and going down, especially in a tight game like this, may be too much of a risk for the coaches to consider. Calls for handball off that shot from Cooper, but no dice, and Muskrat again with another good tackle. I think Coach Eakins might roll the dice, Jack. I could be wrong. I mean, personally, I'd love to see it. Yeah. I always love it when the flying keeper gets introduced, just livens the game up. Still 12 minutes to go. They might not be thinking about it just yet, but as the minutes tick down, good shot from Anthony. Finds James in the middle, trying to fashion the space, but crowded out by Wybot Power, and they clear their lines. Hypocrite are almost a little bit guilty here of maybe overplaying it. Um, we've seen the power rather direct when they're in the uh, Pepper Crew is half, and I'd probably say they've had more shots on goal, but I'd like to see the Pepper Crew side maybe pull the trigger a bit more often. I think that's a, a good point there. They obviously are comfortable with their link up play and their combinations. Why about power? Oh, it's just cut inside there. Cooper Hilton on the left, and he hasn't seen her. Um, but no, you're right, why about power? Certainly being a far less conservative with when they choose to rip the shots in and take on players and drive. So we get a set piece here for Papakura City. Chance for them potentially to rip a shot in. There it is, not far away. There's Waters. Took that one, but won't trouble Nikki White. She goes long. Sophie Williams well placed to cut that one out and find her teammate Bremner. Pretty pressing there. And why about Plower now? Playing out, but still going. Good save, Karina Brown. That was a great opportunity for the power. Cormac's had a uh, pretty good impact since she's come on. She's uh, created a couple opportunities and she's battled well there. Bit of luck in the process, but draws the save from Karina Brown. Here the uh, Wybot bench. Rather vocal. Yeah, what was a shot coming from there from Tiller? I think Brown's had to make the save there. Oh, it's just sailed wide. Yeah, you're right. You'd think they'll just get more and more vocal, especially if the scores stay tied up. Heading into the final few minutes of the second half. Good ball there for Waters, who couldn't quite find the target. Had a bit of space, but hard technique on her left foot to hit that first time. Bit of pressure applied. On a right from Emma Brown, closing it down. Looks like Nikki White had it covered. Falls to Sophie Williams now, who finds Bremner, trying to drive forward, links up. Look pretty, looking for it, sizing up the shot, and Tiller out to it, good block. But yeah, maybe that's what we need to see more of from Papakuna, just taking those chances a little bit earlier, potentially. I'm saying that, why, Bob? They're quick to get out. And as soon as they sniff <laughs> these type of Kuda players lining up to take a shot, they absolutely crowd it out. Scramble of bodies we've seen multiple times. As the cross in from Bremner, cut up by Tiller and driving forward now. Hussein Ali on her right and she finds her. She'll drop back inside and drop it back to Tiller who gets the shot away. Good block from Bremner. And oh, sixes and sevens in the back line. Falls to Hussein Ali who has a shot and scuffs it wide. Got players down here. So oh, good. dangerous on that transition again. Almost catching up Pepper Crew, and it looks like Williams got one to the head and she's uh, coming off. Yeah, got her body in front of that ball there. Vital block made. Good positioning, but getting blasted full power by a futsal ball from close range is never nice. And on the receiving end of that one there is pretty. Shoots it rather ambitiously. Trying to find it, forced through a crowd of players and blocked out. It's interesting here, Wybot Power setting up that wall right in front of this kick in, not wanting Bremner to get a shot away. So instead she'll opt to play it back to Anthony. And she'll find Bremner, but that press coming in from Power does well to chip. 
Good marker and almost comes away for Pretty, but I got power now. Playing out and earning themselves a kicking. Just past 10 minutes gone now in the first half, second half. Still goal. No goals. Goalless in this grand final. Let's see if either team can change that. It's a good bit of link up play here from Papakota City. He finds Anthony and pulls it out to Bremner on the far side. It's found Benmore, I think that is. Waters, sorry. Bit of space on the far side. And foul call from the ref there. Not quite sure I've caught what that is for, but two fouls to Wybot. And another chance here through Anthony. Just can't quite get underneath that one as a bobbling ball. She'll get another chance though. Blocked out well by the power. Clock's winding down, Jack. Nine minutes, still nine minutes to go here in the second half, and still nil all. Yeah. Interesting to see if uh, either coach changes the game plan slightly. Papakura not necessarily creating as many chances, chances as they would like. As one comes in there, and it's almost the goal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe I should uh, <laughs> say that more often. Well, Bremner rattling the far post. Probably the best, closest chance of the second half. Similar to Muspratt's effort on that same goal in the first half. And a bit of momentum now, potentially swinging for the way of Papakura. No, you're right, it will be interesting to see. I think, obviously, nil all here certainly falls more in the favour of Waibop than it would for Papakura. As we've spoken about before, maybe a bit of frustration could be coming out for Papakura, leaving players forward, not necessarily keeping that defensive structure as they go hunting for a goal, but I think for Wybot Power, they'd want to just keep doing what they're doing. They're defending well, pressing well as well, and hoping that they can pick up a goal on a counter-attack or a, a set piece. So have eight minutes of play left here in the second half. And as you said earlier as well, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a flying keeper pulled out from either side. See some rolling substitutions here for Wybot Power, Stone, Bloomfield, Muspratt and Evans. The starting five now, all back on the court. Seeing what they can do here, chasing a goal, Evans. Dragging off a couple challenges, does well initially, and gets a shot away. Karina Brown holds on to that well. Bloomfield was lurking, trying to pounce on any scraps, but Karina Brown did well there. Bring it under possession and find the feet of Pretty, who drops it off there for uh, Waters. Sorry, Abby Wright, but blocked well. There's that Wybop crowd trying to surge their players on. Stone finding Bloomfield on that far side. He'll drop it off to Muspratt. Papakota City do well there. Just aware of the danger Muspratt poses from that sort of distance and rushed out to shut that shot down. Comes out for Cat Pretty. Great shot there and a good save by Nikki White. Good there from uh, Papakura. Moving the ball nicely was um, Anthony through the centre of the court. Forcing the save from Nikki White. Nice crowd just got across there to shut that down. They'll get another corner though, will Papakura. And we'll see what they can do there as Anthony rolls it back for James. Good shot there, charged down. By Jamie Evans. Thirteen minutes gone in the second half and still goalless. Interesting tactical battle between the two teams. And ball knocks off the hand of Evans there, but ball to hand is the call as it finds its way to the back post. Stone running onto it. Just wide. Certainly looked to be a handball from my angle, but 
I haven't done any referee courses, so I wouldn't actually know. And it's ready there, holding the play up well. Finds Anthony across the court, who drops it off to James. Now we'll just bring it back to Anthony. Good bit of play here, finding Reddy. She gets on the ball, a couple rollovers, tries to cut it back, and recovering Evans. Just knocks that out of play. Vicious effort there from Abby Wright. Just sails over Nikki White's goal. Muspratt on the ball now. Find Stone. Thanks back up with Muspratt. Good one-two there. And the shot comes in. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's off the post from Bloomfield, that was. That could have been it, Jack. We could have seen the, uh, the locker open, but... Denied by the woodwork. Ooh. Again. Again, yeah. I think third time in this game. We'll get a replay there. And open goal there to aim at Karina Brown. He come out to block the initial shot. Bloomfield may regret that one as game goes on. Ready just gets a foul on Muspratt there. But yeah, that's two chances now. Great chances off the woodwork. I would say that's probably the closest out of, out of the three we've had across the game. Maybe Bloomfield not quite expecting that to come all the way out to her. A little time to react to it. I think everybody in the, uh, the crowd here, the half second of just silence as they saw the connection from Bloomfield's boot. And relief for Papakura, but not so much for Wybop as they saw it come bounce back off that far post. Brenda Brown now with a long ball searching, trying to find another James up top there, but... Cut out. And why about power now? Counter-attacking opportunity. Papakura City do well to get back in numbers. Tidy it up. And Reddy holds on to the ball now. She's got to play a free in front of her if she can find her and can't quite do it. I think that's Stone with the interception there. Five and a half minutes to go. I want a goal, Jack. I want need a goal. <laughs> Me too, Todd. Certainly would not want to go purely from a spectator's perspective into extra time and in penalties at nil all. But if that's the way that the cookie crumbles here, then that's, that's what we'll have to deal with. As both teams will also want a goal. So they long campaign for them. Both uh, played two games yesterday and they've had their semi-final earlier today. So tired legs will be starting to set in, especially if we do get to extra time. Sure, they will both be happy to seal it up. And regulation play calls the screen on Muspratt there, but good challenge from the Papakura City defender. Lever right, right off to Williams and James on the ball now, finding Reddy. Can't quite control that, and it's Muspratt now. Good challenge. Ball almost takes out the broadcasting booth. Would have been disastrous for all you viewers watching at home. Luckily, didn't quite happen. And it's a wide up power kicking. But, uh, can't quite get underneath that one, find the control. Had a half pocket of space there on that right flank, but harmlessly rolls out to the way of Papakura City. Eakins is uh, probably figuring out what his plan is here to wind down the last five minutes of the game. I do want to see a flying keeper. I want to see something, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this crowd would absolutely erupt if we do get this, this goal. It's going to be a long time coming, and maybe it comes down through Reddy. Good bit of hold-up play, but can't quite find the inside run. And a counter-attack now through Stone. James does well, though, to shut that down. As we get closer and closer to that full-time whistle, I'm sure the thoughts of a flying goalkeeper will be creeping in through the heads of both coaches. But obviously, as we were saying, that comes higher goal-scoring opportunity, but a lot of risk leaving your goal exposed at the back. And as it stands, one goal will probably decide it. So
So, whether they want to roll that dice, takes a braver man than I to make that call as a shot comes in from Lily Muspratt, but dealt with by Papakura City. And another chance here, Muspratt, bit of space. But almost a great challenge there from Reddy. Good tackle, but James across the block and Reddy following it up. Had a good game, Lily Muspratt, defensively and offensively. It's dangerous on the ball, especially when she's driving towards that goal. She's got a rocket of a shot on her. And uh, continue to see this power side just try and batter that goal from a set piece. Absolutely, just hoping that something squeezes in. They had three go their way against the Pride. It's rolled off for a shot there, but pressure applied through Venmore, I think it was, and harmlessly goes wide. We ended the last four minutes here in the Ford Futsal Super League Women's Grand Final. Karina Brown, long ball up, trying to find the feet of Pretty, but not quite bring that one down. Searching ball there. Can't quite link up with Tillo who's waiting up front. Bremner collects and Papakura City will try to beat this wide bot press. They find Bremner just about well cut out there by Evans. Who skips past another player, but heavy touch. Brings it out of play. And that high line coming up from power. Papakura City though, they beat the press. Roll it out to Cooper on this near side who finds the feet of Pretty. Drops it back for Bremner. And Papakura City now, just a bit of possession, looking for the right ball forwards. Maybe it comes now. Cat Pretty takes the ball away from Muspratt, but just as quickly as she did that, Muspratt gets on it and shrugs off a couple challenges. She's still going as Lily Muspratt and a shot comes in, but a great block there from Maxine Cooper. Shut that run down, Muspratt. Another set piece here in a dangerous position for Wybot Power. Muspratt to take, and we'll see what they have up their sleeve here as it goes across the tiller and just blasts it over the bar. Final three minutes here of regulation time. Is there a goal to be had, or will we be heading in to the first round of extra time? across the whole competition. Ball rolled into Pretty there. Drops it off to Bremner who finds Cooper. Can't quite link up again with Cap Pretty. And a thumbs up, the idea was good, but execution just not quite there. And I'm sure the energy levels from both sides is their fourth game played across the weekend. He's starting to have a toll. Potentially the coaches starting to wonder about rotation, rotating some players. Just should extra time be a reality? Sophie Williams will chase that all the way down and actually gets around it as well. If I was a player, Jack, I would um, not be too thrilled of extra time, <laughs> especially after a long weekend. No, and... Certainly on the commentary bench as well. Do value these 20 minute breaks in between games, which won't be so long. Should we get extra time here, but two minutes left on the clock for a moment of magic. I think we'll see it. By yeah. the optimism. I hope you're right. Be very interesting to see just where that comes from. Maybe it's now as Bremner gets an opportunity just to drive forward on that right flank and a good tackle there from Tiller. Shuts that attack down. Rolling sub there, Williams. Anthony comes on. And they drop it off for Cooper who gets a shot across. Finds the feet of Pretty. He'll drop it back for Cooper and she gets a shot in. Late challenge is the call, but referee don't agree. And it'll go out for restart of play through Nikki White. Well, 
cut out there by Rimna. Bit of a nothing pass that one, just harmlessly rolls to Karina Brown and goal, who finds Cap pretty relatively uncontested there. He's able to bring that ball down. As we enter the last 90 seconds here, as you see it, I'm sure these players will be hoping it doesn't go to extra time and be pushing for a goal. Definitely, you would say that if a goal is scored, it will be the deciding goal in this grand final. So why what power have a kick in on the far side? I thought it was a bit further out the court than that, but hoping for a shot, Jack. <laughs> well, you might have one soon as that just rolls all the way through. No deflection by Papakura. Just over a minute on the clock. Will one of these players steal the headlines with a moment of magic. Good play there from Cooper. Shake off a couple of players. Cap pretty turns. Drives forwards, tries to just slip Cooper through, but can't quite get it past that power back line. And Cooper will get us back underway. Final 45 seconds here. Regulation time. Score still nil all. And Anthony finds the Peter Cooper who does well to spin and turn on there, but can't quite link up with Pretty in the middle. Final 30 seconds. Not often futsal games ending nil all, but as you can say, result of A, tied legs, but also B, two teams who probably want this win just as much as the other one does. And leaving everything out there on the court is a great touch there by Bloomfield just to bring it down. Remna gets on the ball and shrugs off a couple challenges. Now 2v1 situation for Papakota City and Tiller with a crucial block in there. Cat Pretty was free. In the final eight seconds here, you reckon a shot just comes in? Eight seconds, yep. Anthony put it to the far post. And almost does that. Uh, looks like we'll be going extra time, Jack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, get your coffees. Don't go anywhere. Be two five minute periods, which uh, will get underway relatively quickly after the full time whistle. And obviously, should the score still remain tied up at the end, as we do head in to extra time here in this women's grand final in the Ford Futsal Super League, obviously, should the score still remain tied up after these two five minute halves of extra time, we'll be going to a penalty shootout which will be excitement in of its own right. And be interesting to see here how the teams approach this, uh, this, this extra time. I think uh, both teams stay the way they're playing. And coaches will have an opportunity now to get some messages across and quite outstanding how uh, well this power team's defended uh, in the second half and you saw at the end bodies chucked on the line yeah that block by uh, Stevie Lee Tiller I believe it was to shut down that 2v1 right at the death there absolutely crucial but I think that's what's got them to this final why what power they're all playing with their heart on their sleeve leaving everything out on the court defensively been very very solid Lily Muspratt also worth mentioning in there but Papakura City they've had a good game they honestly can't quite find the goal but their combination play around the middle of the court and their composure to beat the Wybot press has has been good yeah, they just as they make their way into the box can't quite find their way through the crowded Wybot uh, defensive zone as you say they have been defending very very well have Wybot power the experience of this Papakura City side you're looking to players like Anthony, Cooper, Williams, you know, Bradley, Futsal Ferns to uh, step up here and um, show their experience. But that commitment from the power, <laughs> tough to break down. Absolutely, and they haven't been able to over 40 minutes of regulation time. 
See if extra time has anything else in store for us as we approach the final minute of this break. Coaches giving their teams their last words. Power ready, ready taking the court. A little bit eager, still 45 seconds to go. As we'll have a coin toss here to decide which way the teams attack. Looks like Papakura will start us off the first half of extra time. A few tired bodies out there on the court, I imagine. Oh, absolutely. It's uh, been a long weekend for these two teams. Obviously both travelling down either late Friday night or early Saturday morning to get to Wellington. Akitangi Sports Centre is where these finals are being played. And after a quick match, 160 minutes of futsal for both teams, they find themselves in extra time in the grand final. Everything on the line. And who will be the difference maker here? As... The clock gets set to five minutes. The referees are just about happy to roll. And it'll be Cat Pretty for Papakura City who gets us underway here in the first half of extra time in the Ford Puzzle Super League Women's Grand Final. And again, much of the same sort of play we've seen uh, throughout this whole game. Papakura City building from the back well, linking up with their pivot, who rolls it off and and just a great last touch tackle from Muspratt in there. And Wybot Power now, a chance to drive forward. The call to press coming out. And oh, she's done well there. Has McCormick just to turn and shake off her marker. Still with the ball is McCormick. She'll flash the ball across, but nobody waiting in the middle to get on the end of that as Remna just sends her. One for the highlight reel, that one. Good ball flicked on by Pretty, but bit too much on it for Bremner to get a hold of. That was the restart of play here. Must prep. Carrying it up from deep. Goes for the long ball, almost finding McCormick, but goalkeeper Karina Brown, happy to leave that. Let it roll out. Showing her experience with that one as she does well to find the feet of Pretty. Pretty almost slides in and gets it across to Bremner, but a turnover now from McCormick who gets a shot away, and Brown comfortable. Make sure of that one. And she'll bring it out to Cooper. Drops it to Anthony, who returns it. And does well to find the feet of Pretty in the middle. Bit of space there on the right side for Bremner, trying to beat America, but McCormick comes away with it now. Anthony, last line of defense, skips inside. And in the end, a good challenge. Brenda Brown. Good, ch good chance there for the Wybot Power. See some errors coming in. The players are tired. Still plenty of time in this game, really. Well, you think about it, it's 10 minutes of, you know, on court action. But with all the stoppages and retrieving the balls back, those minutes add up. And certainly, if we do get into the penalty shootout, should the scores still be tied up. I'll be looking at a lot of game time here as a half chance for Cat Pretty on this left flank. But again, why but power just scramble, get across to it and shut down the danger for it as a chance to develop. We see four substitutions here for Papakura City. It's Buckley, Williams, James and Reddy tagging the court. Plenty of goal scorers in that four is one of them there, James trying to feed of another Reddy. And Wybot Power through McCormick again, surging down that left-hand flank. Can't quite link up with the player on the inside. As ready now, but a hold-up play in her defensive third. That's Muspratt now for Wybot Power. Papa City were happy to invite. Pressure, the offensive pressure. Not too keen to step out and Engage that press over the halfway line. Fair enough, too. Some tired legs out there. Two and a half minutes gone here in this first half of the extra time. Good score still 
Goalless. Nil nil. Pretty tight game this one, the grand final. If it does end up with the win, we'll feel like they deserve it. And I'm sure the other team on the receiving end will feel rightly so devastated. Hard done by both teams have put it all out in the court here so far. And a slip there from James. Can't quite find the connection she's after with that one. Won't be searching for that moment on the live stream replay. And Muspratt does well there to find Barclay, but a good tackle from Williams. Out for a wide bot to kick him. Stops the Muspratt again. Good press from Reddy to shut down that chance of a shot from Muspratt. As she gets close here, looking for it. He's just rolled out of play there. Ball oh, trying to find Barkley. Buckley playing a good ball up to Reddy, who will look to hold it up and find the feet of Buckley again. Bit of charge. Buckley keeps it come out in. Just off that near post. Tight angle for her to find the finish, but it was there. Only the best chance of extra time so far. Winding down to the end of the first half, extra time. Just over a minute and a half on the clock. It's uh, flown by. A couple chances for both sides. So uh, Papakura probably having the better of the two. Still very much in the theme of the rest of this game. That goal could come from anywhere, and it almost came there from Ella James. Good angle on the shot, just got her body around it. A bit too high. And here she is again, James. Driving forward and turning out of trouble to drop it off to Williams. Who will link up with Reddy, does well there. Good bit of combination play here from Papakura. As... A tame shot comes in there from Williams on that right flank. Muspratt driving forward, dropping it off to Carter and Muspratt picking it up again. The shot comes in, Ella James with a great block there. One minute to go now, first half of the extra time. Shot comes in, but not really troubling Hannah Reddy. And there's a potential shove in the back there. No dice again from the referee. Deflected out for a wide bot power corner kick. And a chance, potentially, for one of their long shots. Must Pratt lurking. The left of your screen and comes in, but Reddy equal to it. Aware of the danger. And just got out to shut that down. Good turn on the ball there from Carter. Linking up with McCormick. I think it was on the far side, but Williams steals it. 2v1. Wobot players tracking back, but Williams trying to find the feet of Buckley. And miscommunication there in the back line. Looked like White had it covered, but Fender got a foot in and cleared it out almost to the feet of Buckley looking at that back post just over 30 seconds to go now to be a kick in and a charge just to test that defensive shape again get another try here yeah, shot comes in almost for Ella James over 30 seconds on the clock in this first half and Todd the more these minutes tick away the more I wonder if we're going to be deciding this game on a penalty shootout certainly hitting that way at the moment optimistically I I do believe we will get a goal and before the end of extra time the question is who will score it 
still a balanced this game. The power soaking up sort of the heavily possessed Papakura side. But certainly uh, they are creating some chances. I think Papakura probably just need to be patient and the referees blow the whistle for the uh, end of the first half of extra time as the teams will take a break before we are uh, into the last five minutes of the match. Yeah, I believe a relatively quick, quick break here, not much time. Quick drink of water, get some of the vitamins in, the electrolytes, and I'll be straight back out, taken to the court very, very shortly. But still 25 minutes of futsal played here in the Women's Ford Futsal Super League Grand Final. Neither side managing to break the deadlock. A few good chances. Three times uh, the posts have been rattled. In another day, you could be looking at a game with uh, three, four goals apiece, but not today. No all. Two teams that are very well set up defensively. Sort of matching each other, if you will, in, in their shape and, and their setup. Five more minutes to go here in the grand final before we head to a penalty shootout. Let's see what the second half of extra time has in store for us. I think at this point, Todd, I'd not even need a banger, just a <laughs> scrappy goal tapped in from a meter out off the corner. That'll do it for me. Yes, I, um, it's going to come, Jack. I'm feeling it. It's going to definitely come. I think Papakura may sneak one in before that whistle goes for full time, but beauty of uh, futsal is that in a grand final we are going to get a result, and I do enjoy a penalty shootout as well. Certainly good uh, entertainment factor, penalty shootout. And you know, as they say sometimes, penalty shootout, there is obviously skill involved in converting and saving penalties, but there's a little bit of a, a flip of the coin. Penalty shootouts, they can go either way. And perhaps on the face of this game, that would be the fair result. Obviously, you know, barring any late drama here, both teams have been evenly matched. Papakura City, the share of the possession and chances, but Waibot Power, every single time they've been called upon defensively, they've, they've been equal to it. And it's not to say they haven't been creating chances of their own. So, be interesting to see how this women's grand final ends up. As you say, we do need a winner. And in roughly, let's say 15, 20 minutes, we will know who that winner is. But right now, we're none the wiser as to where it's going to come. Capretti just laying off Anthony there, does well to turn and a bit of space for Bremner to find Cooper on that far side. Thumbs up from Cooper. And Nicky White just gets us restarted with the long throw there to Bloomfield who gets the ball and able to turn on it. Fighting for it, but Capretti comes away with it, 1v1. Bates the challenge out and looks across the middle for the teammate making the run of the back post, Nicky White. Made herself big and managed to shut that down. As we look at a kick in here, Cooper will get us underway. Just over three minutes left. Good ball there to Pretty. Just lays it back off to Williams. Who come across to Cooper, tries to cut inside, does well to maintain position and gets a shot away. Straight into the hands of Nicky White. Good chance there from Cooper. She'll be disappointed she didn't bend that one round. Yeah, seen her score from tougher positions from there. But again, we're about a, again, a bit of quick math. 100 and 
70 odd minutes of futsal played for these players across the weekend and the composure in the finish and you see it as well with a bit of the presses being engaged as the shot comes in from Williams those tired legs certainly going to be having an effect coaches discussing plans maybe looking at their penalty taker list surely we don't see a flying keeper <laughs> good cut inside from Bremner and a great pass across to find that was uh, Cooper on the far side Nicky White again forced him to the save and Papakuta City piling on the pressure in the second half here I think that's four shots in the past few minutes finds pretty again just lays it off to Bremner who drive forward trying to link up with Cooper on the far stick and cut out by the power but Papakuta City in possession again through Williams good link up play there from Pretty as the shot comes in I think that's Cooper, actually a save there Cooper's done well on that far side I think I said it earlier Jack um, shooting a little bit earlier and she's uh, yeah, forced a couple good saves out of Nikki White I think maybe the Papakuta City bench just uh, heard our conversation there and the message was passed on it does seem to be bit more frequent now but also symptomatic of the game just opening up a little bit as these legs tire and both teams want more and more to get that goal to put the game to bed as the ball spills out after reflection to Bremner and Pretty links up with her the one two Bremner finds Cooper in the back stick as Cooper is the goal there it is 38 minutes of futsal later and we have our first goal in the grand final and who else but Maxine Cooper you get the replay there, good bit of interplay between Bremner and Pretty and Cooper just free on the back post, good finish. And now the challenge is can they hold this? Why what power? They are uh, shown uh, earlier today they can overturn deficits in the blink of an eye. The game's not over yet but as it stands Papakota City finally breaks the deadlock. Thoughts on that goal there Todd? Oh Maxine Cooper, she's a uh, talented player years of experience and um, she had a couple good opportunities this half and uh, that one she made no mistake and it's good leadership from her putting her side up 1-0 in extra time of a grand final yeah, it's, uh, probably a good feeling and if they can hold out this last minute uh, the Papakura City will be crowned champions of the 2023 Ford Futsal Super League absolutely yeah. well it looks like we've got the flying keeper coming out there Lily Muskrat, surely there's no universe where a long shot Lily Muskrat goal ties the game up it's calls for a foul here, brought down It's going to be a yellow card I imagine um, Sophie Williams, yes Probably a good tactical foul Jack, I probably would have done the same thing yep. myself <laughs> Professional foul uh, Identified the danger of letting Evans get in behind her and realised with no further matches to play in this competition she'll be happy to collect the yellow 50 seconds to go here as the power all five players in Papakura's half shot comes in from Tiller good block there from Cat Pretty and now for Papakura it's just an exercise in defensive stability they're going to be most likely warding off a few more attacks from this Wybot power side as the seconds tick down they certainly won't want to be making any mistakes they'll need to be switched on coach Marvin Eakins straight up there Calling every shot with them. And we'll see what the power have. Good ball into the middle there. Spills out to flying keeper Muspratt who finds a captain Stone. Tries to get that ball across play, but good block by Pretty. Forty seconds will seem like a long time for Pepakura right now, but I'm sure it's going to be the longest 40 seconds of their life. But should they hold off, and I think the ball's actually crossed the line there, but luckily it was outside of regulation play. Um, should they hold on here, that late, late goal from Maxine Cooper will be enough to get them across the line and earn them the uh, Ford Futsal Super League champion ship for the second year in a row. 
Big press coming out there from wide, but Papakura looking to hold position. Long ball up to Pretty, who does well hold it up, and she just use her body here. Just eat up a few more valuable seconds. Well played by Cat Pretty there. Drops it back off to Sophie Williams. The press coming straight away from Wybot. And Williams just trying to find the feet of Pretty into the final 10 seconds here. Barring any absolutely outrageous scenes, we think it'll be Papakura City taking 2023 Ford Futsal Super League. As time ticks away here, it needs to come now if it's going to come at all. And ladies and gentlemen, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Suspense. The referee all eyes on him as he blew the final whistle. And they were made to work for it. We were at Papakura City. Wybot Power did not make it easy for them. But in the final two minutes of that match, of the second half of extra time, it's Futsal Fern Maxine Cooper who is the difference maker. One goal to nil. Scored by Maxine Cooper. And Papakura City FC are your Ford Futsal Super League 2023 champions. Any final thoughts on that match there, Todd? Maxine Cooper take a bow. Certainly uh, has done the job for Papakura City. Congratulations to the team. 2023 champions. Uh, also acknowledging Wybot Power. Uh, I don't think we could... Uh, forget the, the enormous amount of defensive work they did um, and coming from a, a tough semi-final um, and putting on performance like that in the final was uh, a good credit to the, the region. Um, but yeah, Papakura City just uh, edged them at the end there and um, that's the end of the Ford Futsal Super League for the women's and uh, up next we have the men's. Southern United taking on Canterbury United Dragons, which is kicking off in uh, 10 minutes, Jack. So we're <laughs> going to take a quick break. Congrats, uh, Papakura City. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range. And coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what a game we just saw in the women's grand final. Papakura City winning the game through Maxine Cooper in the last 90 seconds. Uh, and a quick turnaround straight into the men's grand final. We've got two teams, Canterbury United Dragons on your screen now and Southern United. Interestingly, they were the third and fourth place finishers overall, but they've won their semi-finals and made their way into the grand final as we take a quick look at uh, the Dragons starting lineup. It'll be Hamish Mitchell, great game he just played in goal against Auckland City. Um, Cam Emberton, Charlie Bailey, Hemi Innes and Mark Zimmerman are uh, the starting five and on the bench you've got Klink, Gorbsett, Oikawa, Ribeiro, Oakman, Grosvenor, Mitchell, Richards and Joseph rounding that team off. Obviously coached by Valance and over on the Southern United on your screen now starting five Hunter, Watanabe, Hawkins, Sanum, and Cooper. And on the sub bench, backup keeper Stevenson, Wall, Willett, Houston, Myron Manikin, uh, Wink, Diaz, and Marcus Reed. Joined with me on the commentary bench is my privilege, uh, privilege to uh, welcome Dave Payne, David Payne, into the bench. Dave, how are you uh, feeling ahead of this men's final? Yeah, look, it's, Jack, it's great to be back here. Thank you for the invite to come along and commentate today. Back in. Um, or back in the ASB Sports Centre, which is uh, you know where futsal really took off many, many years ago. So yeah, good to be here. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, no, great to have you here. And uh, much needed substitute for Todd Bryant on the commentary bench. I know he was <laughs> feeling the effects of a uh, busy night last night, it sounded like. And we've got an action-packed game on our hands here. Uh, both teams impressed in their semi-finals. Southern United uh, played capital futsal and won 5-1. And quite a dominant performance from them. And Canterbury United obviously beating Auckland City 3-1 with three quick-fire goals in pretty much the space of three minutes uh, for the Dragons. Saw them make their way and book their spot into mm. this grand final. Yeah, interesting looking at the... Uh, you know, we've been watching the league online this year. Been great watching the, the action and listening to the commentary. But yeah, Canterbury Dragons in the Women's League very dominant and then uh, not quite making it through to the final and then even with uh, Capital and Auckland City again two of the dominant teams on the men's side and and not making it through into the final as well and that's uh, that's finals futsal for you. Well, exactly and that's why we love the sport anything can happen um, obviously yeah Canterbury pride on the women's side uh, faced Wybot Power in their semi-final earlier today and they were winning for the majority of the game but in the last 30 seconds two quick fire goals turned that game on its head and why but Power uh, booked their spot in the final. And a great performance, we've got to say, from them in that final. Uh, Papakura City are a great side. And to go through about 36, 37 minutes of futsal, equal, uh, only conceding right at the last, they can be incredibly proud with their efforts this weekend in the finals of the Ford Futsal Super League. But on our screens now, the men's grand final. And the last game here in the 2023 competition. Yeah, two two very strong sides here. Just looking at the list and the lineup here, you know, many players I've known for a number of years, and actually seen um, a few players changing shirts this season. Myron Manikin uh, playing for Southern United, always been an Auckland player. And he's now re relocated to Wanaka. I could catch up with him as I came in watching the women's final earlier. Um, he's enjoyed his season with Southern United, that's for sure. And uh, the veteran there, Michael Sanham, number five. Sure, we're gonna see him fire up. He loves a good final, does Michael? Uh, but again, I was uh, watching him strap his strap up his hammy before the game, so I think um, he's carrying a, an injury or two. Yeah, and certainly those tied legs may start coming into play here. Obviously, all fit and healthy athletes, all these players are. But four games of futsal apiece over the weekend, as a late challenge there from Hawkins on Bailey. No malicious intent there. Yeah, usually when you get to the final of the, the National League, there's always a few injuries and a few uh, a few tired bodies, but I'm sure we'll see both teams lift. They know what's at stake here. Oh, absolutely, and a great opportunity, potentially coming into the playoffs. Maybe these teams didn't quite expect. There's an early chance here for Hemi. Hemi Ennis rattles the inside of that near post, almost getting the first goal of this grand final. Oh, very well-weighted shot there by Ennis. The bottom left hand corner. Yeah, he's another one of those good players there, Hemi Innes. He was, uh, I believe, suspended for their last game of the day yesterday, but perhaps a good bit of gamesmanship there, making sure that his suspensions have all run dry. Is available 
in the semi-final against Auckland City. Had a great game there. And now, obviously, starting for the Dragons. A key player for them in this side. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, it's not good getting a suspension, but sometimes he plays in your favour in finals. But so you're getting that one match break, and uh, he's going to have the fresher legs, isn't he? So. Yeah, absolutely. As I was saying earlier, a lot of these players have uh, played three or four games already this weekend, flying down late Friday night or early Saturday morning. Um, so, as always in this format of the Super League, shot comes in there from Hawkins. Great, great save by Mitchell and goal. That's uh, a great shot by, uh, shot by Oregon Hawkins. Again, even though he's a young, young fella, he's been on the futsal court for many, many years. I remember watching Oban, um, oh, probably a decade ago now, playing futsal up in the northern region. Coming to the youth nationals and all through the system. Now obviously residing in Otago, I believe he's at University of Otago. Yeah. Yeah, as a shot comes in there, forces a good save from Hunter. Also part of the futsal wide setup is Urban Hawkins and yep. his younger brother, Dominic, actually starting to burst onto the scene. He's been uh, a key part of the Auckland City side oh, okay. this season. Um, people have told me that uh, he's actually better than Urban oh. was at that <laughs> same age, which is a big call to make, but be interesting to track his development over the next few years. Very handy player and obviously testament to his ability already at a young age to be fitting into pretty star-studded Auckland City lineup. Oh, good for him, he's yes. clearly in the blood. I mean, you see that a lot with um, in the futsal community, but such a family-type community, and you do see what we call these these futsal families, where a number of brothers and sisters and on the court, but sometimes refereeing and coaching and involved in administration of the game. It's just great to see. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you want to talk players already in the Super League. We see a few of them with uh, Myron Manikin, uh on the Southern United team sheet for this game. Brother Dylan Manikin, uh playing for Auckland City in the Super yeah. League. Also the Three Twig brothers, can't go past them over on yeah. the Auckland City lineup. Oh, the Twigs are renowned. And actually, there was three mannequins. There was a Callum mannequin at uh, one point. We actually had three mannequins playing in the Futsal Whites once, uh, which was interesting. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Certainly makes it easier for yeah. the commentators Yeah. when you've got three players sharing a last name on yeah. the court. <laughs> yeah, there was lots of mannequin to mannequin to mannequin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's Haw Hawkins on the ball now. Hawkins certainly getting very involved with this match. Oh, calls for a foul. It's not given. Hawkins again. It's the kick in. Yeah, the big game in the semi-final. Did Hawkins scored? Scored a goal, maybe two, uh, if my memory serves me correct. Definitely one very well-placed finish uh, into the bottom corner for the, for the third goal, but it's a turnover oh. there for the Dragons. 2v1 situation. Hemi Innes plays his uh, teammate out on the right. Great save there. Uh, that was a great piece of defensive play there from Innes, and then, uh, then led that counter-attack. Solid vision there. Yeah, we see Richards take the court here for the Dragons. Rolling sub. Had a good campaign. Has Richards. Solid, as always, at the back for the Dragons. It's oh, Emberton. There he is, Richards, making their run up in that right flank. Can't quite get a hold of the ball. Tough technique to be able to bring it down on the bounce like that. And it'll be a kick in for Southern United. So Lewis Wall's just come on for Southern United, number four now. Moving into that fixo position. Good bit of defending there by the Dragons, set up well, and another good block in there from, uh, from Wall. No goals yet, but plenty of chances in the first five minutes here. Men's Grand Final. Be interesting to see which team breaks the deadlock first. Could definitely go either way, too. Very evenly matched teams full of quality, as that would have been a stunning goal had that gone in, but yeah. out for a kick in in the end. Yeah, Adam Houston there. Just too much height on that shot. Well, fairly even so far, Jack. Yeah, I mean, two 
Very evenly placed teams. We obviously saw in the women's final a goalless game all the way up until the second half of the second half of extra time. Um, I don't think that will be the case here. I think both teams do have goals in them and just judging by the style of play uh, we've seen in the first five minutes, they both want to get an early lead here as a turnover through Ennis. Oh. Does well to skip past his player on the left flank and cuts oh. inside. Great, Great work by Ennis, fantastic run. I mean, look to be fair, and I think they've called the foul there. There was actually a foul they played advantage uh, on Ennis, and yep, Riley right, says that's accumulated foul. Yeah, definitely something else to be aware of, those yep. accumulated fouls. Uh, finals futsal can get quite physical, quite intense. Um, neither team will be wanting to concede any 10 metre penalties as another foul comes in for the Dragons, two apiece for both sides. That was Richards on uh, Southern United four. Uh, Lewis Wall, I believe. And Sandham gets us underway now. Sandham's been fairly quiet so far on the court. Expect to see more from him. I'm sure he's got a plan in mind. He does tend to fire up as the match goes on. Short corner there. Oh, great shot by Sean Cooper. Yeah, and a good save, followed it up by Tyler Klink. I'd just like to apologise for those uh, uh, starting five. It looks like Klink has gotten the nod in goal. I look across to the Dragons bench and Hamish Mitchell. Looks to be yeah. in a sling, bit of an injury. He had a great game, Hamish Mitchell, in the semi final against Auckland. Arguably their, their best player on the pitch. Save after save after save. Yeah. Um, and. Looks like maybe the toll that took uh, has left him out. But Hamish Mitchell, a uh, very worthy replacement. Good keeper in his own right. Yeah, I, I um, unfortunately I was uh, in the car on the way over. I actually missed that semi-final, but I do hear uh, it's about 50 shots <laughs> put at Hamish, apparently, quite literally in that in that match. And um, yeah, he did, he did well, but he's clearly feeling the, the pain from that now. And speaking of the pain, just a heavy collision here. I'm not sure if it's a foul, they're just checking the head knock on Oikawa and he just caught his eye there as well yeah, saw one there looks like both players will be alright, smiles from each nothing malicious in that one must be a number, must be a seven thing right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see this too often but play will restart with the drop ball on the far side Referee just making sure that the Dragons are legal distance away from the restart and we're underway here. It's Sandham picking up the ball and just knocking it around the back line. Cooper feeds it into Houston who almost gets on the end of that but a good defensive intervention there from Richards. Yeah. Good to see uh, Max Lauritsen, uh, second referee. This is his first final. Another stalwart of the futsal community, been involved from the game right from almost from its inception. Um, getting the opportunity to to officiate a final, it's always a, a good reward for a referee. Yeah, absolutely, and Anthony Riley and Ben Norman also two very experienced referees. Thank you very much so. Yes, Anthony Riley coming back from the World Cup in Lithuania. Um, that was a bit of a journey. Took six months overall going there and back. <laughs> Got stuck during COVID, yeah, quite a good write a book on what uh, Chris Sinclair and Anthony Knight went through to represent New Zealand on the global stage. Needs to get through to the final. Sanam now. We're going to see some magic from Sanam today. You can just see he's just pulling up a bit on that left leg. Yeah, I'm sure they like Sanam, even if he is feeling. Bit of a niggle, he'll just play and play and play until he physically can't anymore, though. Oh, safe and sorry, rolling yeah. off as we say that. Now Hawkins on now, good substitution about it, mate. What a shot from Hawkins. Follow up, and it's a goal! Fantastic goal from Adam Hewson coming back from that head collision. Well, they say seven's a lucky number. It wasn't for them two when they got the head collision, but it was for that shot. <laughs> What a great goal. Hawkins coming on, making an impact straight away. Fantastic ball. 
over to Houston and just slammed that one home. Clint didn't stand a chance there. Southern United won. Canterbury nil. 12 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock for the first half. Yeah, I think also uh, in that phase of goal, uh, Lewis Hall, Lewis Wall, sorry, for Southern United just identified that Adam Houston was coming up, ripping up the shot. He thought about a shot himself, did Wall, and then just dropped his shoulder and, and left it. Smart play. It proved to be the right decision. And also in there, Hawkins, probably unlucky not to get that goal for himself. This shot rattling off the underside of the crossbar as Canterbury United Dragons immediately asking questions, trying to get one back. And manages to do well there on the far side was uh, Mitchell. Earned himself a kick in. Yeah, he's, he's done well there. Yeah, Mitchell, another another solid player from a, from a well-renowned futsal family. The Mitchells down in Christchurch. Played a big part in getting futsal set up in the South Island. Giving some lovely messages here from some of my uh, former friends and colleagues. Uh, good to hear from you, Benjamin Hill. <laughs> So Hawkins here with the kick in. And we've just got Tarnby up there in that target position, just calling out for the ball. Rotate back round into fix. So good, good movement here, good rotational play from Southern. Yeah, looking dangerous through there, Hawkins as well. Uh, coming across, just playing a quick one too with his teammate with Tarnby and setting up that opportunity. But Southern United looking quite dangerous in the first eight minutes here. Yeah, and they, good ball across there for Watambi, but good defending by Oikawa comes away with it. And he continues driving forward, dazzling footwork. Good roll off there for uh, Mitchell it was, who had the shot, but comfortable for Hunter in goal. Yeah, no, it was a good, good shot by Mitchell. Ooh. It was a nice... Uh, Roll back there and... Uh, yeah, and this oh, will be a brilliant ooh. goal if it was to come away. Be good to get a replay of that one. Sorry to cut you off there, but Oban Hawkins with a no. great bit of skill over on that left flank just to beat his man. That was Set well that worth cutting me off, Jack, for that. That was a good <laughs> piece of play. No, there's certainly something United. They look dangerous on the counter. I think um, you know, Canterbury, you're trying to open them up there. You just need to be mindful of... Uh, Making sure they can actually get back in time when they do push forward. Yeah, early timeout called here by the Dragons. Coach uh, Valance just wants to, I guess, reaffirm some messages. Have you seen some things that doesn't quite like? One goal in it, but they want to be, I guess, aware of the threat that Southern United do pose. They knocked five goals past a very strong capital side yeah. uh, in the semi final. And, you know, with the players they have on the court and the likes of Hawkins, Sanham. Manikin even, you know, lurking there. Lots of quality around their team. Uh, they want to make sure that they don't let Southern get too much of a hit of momentum behind them. Yeah, it was a shock result, the semi-final. I actually bumped into a lot of the capital players in the car park coming up. And uh, to be honest, I had to say, I did expect to see them in the final. But um, yeah, 5-1, a great result from Southern. I suppose the other concern here, can it, we have having, you know, Fraser Hunt, a very, very experienced goalkeeper there for Southern. Very hard to score against. That will concern them um, as well. They, they, yeah, they don't want to. They certainly don't want to concede again. Not in this half, anyway. No, absolutely. I mean, one goal deficit, not a huge mountain to climb in futsal. But as soon as you start going two, three, four in finals futsal, uh, that task does become quite difficult. So Dragons want to keep things tight here at the back and not let any more chances through as that ball just rolls yeah. harmlessly for Clink. Well, as we saw with with Mitchell in the. In the semi-final against Auckland City, I mean, futsal goalkeepers, I mean, any goalkeeper's pivotal, but in futsal they are so, so important to the match and they can just make or break a, a team and a result and having the likes of Hunter in for Southern United and actually Mit and Mitchell being off for Canterbury, you know, that, that is a, not taking any credit away from Clink, but, you know, Mitchell is their number one goalkeeper for a reason. And absolutely, as we've already said, massive role he played in their 3-1 uh, win over Auckland City. Uh, surprisingly as well, uh, Dragons, I think they were the only team to beat Auckland City in pool play and doing so again in the playoffs. Maybe have the keys to unlocking that Auckland City team. Um, but 
We're here now as a bit of battle in the midcourt. Yeah. Does well to lay it off to Hennis and almost finds Mitchell. Making the run on the right flank. Yeah, there's a few hands flying around there. They did well actually not to get a foul there. Yeah, still only two fouls apiece. Uh, ten minutes, ten minutes to go. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, certainly as the game ticks closer and closer to the full-time whistle that a few challenges get left, left late. Also keeping in mind the tired legs from these players. You don't want your side to go down. Lose the Super League, Ford Futsal Super League Grand Final based on 10 metre penalty due to disciplinary foul count. So they yeah. want to be careful there. We've got a corner now for Southern United. When time be taking this ice, actually a kick in by the looks of it. So Riley just moving them further up the court. Hawkins with a shot. Oh, I Ooh. thought it was a shot, but actually it was a fantastic back post uh, pass there across the Cooper. Just couldn't quite get the weight on it. Yeah, but another good opportunity there for Southern. And it's Hawkins again, playing creator. Dragons now, a bit of possession. Looking for that piercing through ball, which they find to Ennis. Does well there to oh, get a bit of hold-up play. Get upset, making his way down the left flank. It's a sign where rotate back in, but now he stayed forward. Manages to get it. Over to Joseph, but just not quite enough pace there. And Hunter to restart from the back there for Southern. Hawkins again. Yeah, I think you've got to say, Jack, at the moment, if you're looking at Southern's movement, it does seem to be a bit superior to Canterbury as, as we stand 10 minutes in. Yeah, certainly, especially in that attacking third. They just seem to be a bit sharper with their combination play. Their individual skill as well, just a little bit more, I guess, precise, if you want to say that. Um, yeah. Dragons, though, you know, still sitting up well in the defence, although, as I say there, another link up between Hawkins and Cooper. Yeah. Oh, it's all Hawkins at the moment. Hawkins is at his pivotal in this match. Um, he seems to be everywhere. That quality player is Open Hawkins. Seems to be sporting a, a moustache as well. New look for him, but <laughs> doing well. I believe he was actually at Targo, and again, I've not seen him for a few years, but I know he was, uh, his plan, plan was to be a doctor one day, and there's a few, quite a few doctors actually involved in the futsal scene. Um, and he's certainly an intelligent player. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, credit uh, one of the, obviously, competitions here in New Zealand for futsal is the tertiary championship so those keen futsal players uh, that want to play as much futsal as they can will look to grab degrees to be yeah. part of that competition also the <laughs> you know world university championships which the uh, international university sides are able to go over to so yeah whether it's the degree that comes first or the futsal that comes first arguments could be made for both well why not go and do a medical, medical degree you can have seven years of it can't you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why we've got so many doctors in the futsal scene. As, yeah, we've got a kick in now. Dangerous territory for the Dragons. Looks to be Innes that will take it. Yeah. Oh, it's in! Innes! Oh, fantastic kick in. Set piece there. He just rolled off to Emberton, who got a little lucky with that deflection, but full credit to that strike. We see it again. Boom, yeah, just deflection caught. Mitchell oh, off guard. Actually, um, sorry, Hunter off guard. Look, fantastic set play there, Jack. But actually, that was um, a pretty, pretty common set piece there um, that will be practiced on the court many a time in an attacking position, but equally to defend from. And I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised Southern didn't actually read that. Uh, that's a soft goal for, for Southern. Great goal, not taken away from it, but um, soft piece of defensive work there from Southern, unfortunately. Yeah, in that unfortunate deflection, just. Taking it past Hunter, but Canterbury United Dragons be very happy with that, bringing the oh. goal that they needed to get back into this game. Oh, you can already see, look at them left. Yeah, that'll do wonders for them, especially with quite a bit of game time left in this first half. They'll be wanting to press on and take the lead before half time. Southern United, though, certainly showing signs even before that goal of adding more to their tally as in this now with another opportunity and a good save. Hunter just scrambles to collect that. But 
So anybody's game at this point. Ennis, bit of space to turn into. Options on his left. He drops it off there for Emberton, who tries to bring it back into Ennis. And well defended there by Southern. Got a breakaway there and foul called. Houston goes down. Not sure if it was the challenge in the back or the leg left trailing by the defender in front of them, but see it again on the replay there. Bit of both, really. Yeah. And it'll be a yellow card shown to Cameron Emberton for the Dragons. A dangerous free kick here for Southern. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a good place to get a free kick from. Just going to wave there from Ken Wallace, the former New Zealand football referee development manager. I'll go catch up with him after. So he's still involved when uh, one of the... He's been assessing the referees, I believe, over the National League series. Oh, Maddie looked like he was going to go for a shot. He wasn't being rolled off to Saddam. And he cracks it into the bottom right-hand corner. Very, very well-positioned shot. He had a small gap, and he found it. Yeah, through, the, through the needle there. Tough finish, that one. There's really only part of the goal to aim at was the part that he got it in. We'll see a replay on that one. Brilliant set piece. Fakes the shot and just lays it off there to Sanham, who through the legs of Emberton, it looks like, as well. I think he just caught Emberton getting down into that defensive uh, position, sort of going low, and he did the right thing, and it just came off the back of his ankle there as well. Enough power in the shot just to deflect and go in. Yeah, uh, tough tough there for uh, for Clint as well. I mean, that was, you know, you could see he kind of was getting himself ready to make the save. If it was going straight, the deflection wouldn't have helped. But, hey, can't take away from Sanham. A uh, brilliant set-piece routine there, and just a minute after conceding the equaliser, Southern, they put themselves back in the lead and a half chance there to add to their tally, but Dragons do well to turn it around and looking for Ennis making the run in behind the defensive line. It's a uh, good run in the end there from Willett. Can't quite make anything of it, but did well there just to yeah. break the press. And so Charlie Bailey now coming on from for Grosner. Again, two to uh, veterans of futsal, and they're still young, they've been playing for a long, long time. Bailey, Bailey can make a difference here, he's an explosive young player. Yeah, it's good Charlie Bailey, good player, been very good. It's 2023 Ford Futsal Super League campaign for the Dragons. And we see Ribeiro there as well, playing uh, that target role, number 10, for the Dragons. Between the two of them, they've definitely scored a few. A few bangers uh, this season, and it's Ribeiro on the ball now, just right. stolen out there. One, and one move too many from Ribeiro. Uh, oh. Clint, fantastic save there by Clint. Sorry, Clink. Not Clint. Oh, geez. Yeah, a bit of a flurry both ways there. Play settles down a little bit. Seven minutes left on the clock in this first half. See Hawkins take the field again for Southern United. Yeah, they actually missed having, it just, it just shows you him coming off just for that small period of time. It shows you how much control he's actually having on this match. Oh, absolutely, and it's not just the offensive combinations, but just his, his futsal brain. Just seems to be in the right position, defensively and offensively. But a chance there for Hemi Ennis, oh, yeah. and not far wide. Good chance there for the Dragons to pull one back. Hemi Ennis knows it. Yeah, the thing is with Hawkins, he knows when to hold the ball up as well, and actually lets his team rotate into the right position. He's... Yeah, he's certainly a class act. On the ball now, it's Hawkins. Old chip ball runs into <laughs> Charlie Bailey there, I believe it was, but maybe sold a little bit of that. And it'll be Southern United kicking. Uh, Lewis Wall did well there just to keep possession for his side and trying to find Hawkins on the far side. Blocked out well there, I think Hemis, uh, Hemi Innes, apologies, got the, the touch there and it'll be <laughs> a, a corner for Southern United. Hawkins. Oh, strike away there yeah, from Houston. Just waiting for that run of uh, Watambi at the back post, but he just came off the bench and didn't quite make it there in time. A miscommunication between the two players, but all's well. Something United, good tussle there to gain position back to Cooper. And it's Hawkins on the ball now, back to Cooper. Just rolls it off. Hawkins now back to Houston. Houston, bit of space in the midcourt to drive into. Plays it inside to Cooper. And that's a good combination play here from Southern United. Just waiting for that killer pass to open itself up and a bit of a wayward one there. Almost brung under control by Cooper, but just out. But that was a good 
bit of rotationary attack by Southern United. It's Ennis again. Oikawa now back on. Number seven there for Canterbury. Oh, good ball. Oh, <laughs> fantastic ball from Oikawa going through to Emberton. Just couldn't quite get on the end of it. Because Emberton was the goal scorer, I believe, wasn't it? For that First goal, goal, yeah, yes. yep, yep. Off, off Ennis on the kick-in. Yep. yep, Ennis rolled it off and Emberton smashed yep. it home. Adding to his tally for the season. As Ennis just slowing it down now. Zoe Kawa, good rotational play, good movement by Canterbury. Looking for the line ball there through to Bailey. Bailey wasn't quite on, it was the right ball, Bailey wasn't quite there to receive. It's Hawkins. Another opportunity here for Southern United. Just <laughs> pulled back to get the kick in the right spot, but Hawkins will get us underway and Dragons will engage that press pretty much straight away. Good ball there to beat it from, uh, from Wink. And it's back to Wink now. And cut out there in the middle. I think it was Emberton who got the foot on the ball and Bailey. But a footwork, beats one, beats two, gets a shot across. Not far away, rippling the side netting on that far post. Would have been a great goal had that yep. gone in. Well, I've got four minutes and 36 seconds remaining on the clock here at the full Futsal Super League final here in Wellington. It's Southern or Canterbury 1, Southern United 2. Oh, wayward pass there. But Hunter, aware of the danger, equal to it. That was uh, a tight match up here, only one goal in it. Um, Southern United uh, looking. Potentially the better of the two teams, but it's incredibly tight. I think Dragon still uh, can can get something from this game. But what have you made from the first 15 minutes here so far? As a strong <laughs> challenge comes in there right in front of us. Um, look, it, it, it's a, it's a final. It's a final game, so you're always going with a bit of uh, anticipation, and there's always a bit more defensive play you tend to see happen. But look, it's um, I've got to say the first the first 10 minutes, it, it, Southern United certainly had the um, the better movement, but Canterbury are the back in this now, and I think it's a fairly even match. Yeah, it's still only one goal, the, the difference. It's still definitely anybody's game. As we see Oikawa now on the ball for Canterbury. Just uh, moving the ball around this back line here, wanting to keep possession. Good play by Canterbury. Not wanting to, to rush things. And Richards now sees the run of, I think it was Emberton there moving forward. Oh, sorry, Zimmerman, but it turned over through Watambi and now Hawkins. Bit of space on that left flank to get it across and clink where that, where that ball was going. Just gets his leg across and out for a corner. Another ambitious effort there from Lewis Wall. Maybe a practice routine there between Hawkins and Wall. Yeah. First we've seen of uh, Myron Manikin for Southern United in this final. Yep, former, you know, known, known to be wearing uh, the blue of Auckland usually in the past. He's playing for Southern United. Always a good solid player, Myron Manikin. Around the futsal scene for some time now, his brother Dylan watching on in the crowd. It's the Auckland City players. And here he is to restart play with a kick in on that far side. Comes out here for Houston, who does well to find Cooper, but well blocked by Charlie Bailey and Richards now. Pressure coming straight away from Cooper as yeah, the foul comes in from the back there. Good call from yeah. the referee. Yeah, good on uh, Mannequin for not 
Not continuing trying to get that ball from down there. That would have been painful. And just under three minutes to go here in the first half of this 2023 Ford Futsal Super League Grand Final. Southern United, narrow lead, but a lead nonetheless. Two goals to Canterbury's one. And Canterbury, I'm sure, will be hoping to just get a goal back. It's a great bit of play there from Zimmerman on the far side. Doesn't result to anything. And Southern now will just turn around and look to get a bit of possession on the ball. Just getting uh, some messages in here. Some of the people watching from around the rail. Well, Kareem Osman, Futsal White legend. I think he's been playing for Wybop as well. Uh, a cap? Oh no, Wybop, yes, yes. yes. Um, Rapids. Back in Brisbane at the moment. Again, another very intelligent uh, New Zealander. It's over there, I believe, if he is still in that, uh, applying the trade of cardiothoracic surgeon. Um, but look, a uh, fantastic man, and again, another, another stalwart futsal game. Good to see he's watching from afar. We've got plenty of New Zealand men and women playing futsal now overseas in the UK, in Italy, in Spain. Great to see. Yeah, we we're discussing that on the live stream yesterday. Uh, three futsal ferns and three futsal whites over at uh, Bloomsbury Futsal in the UK. Yeah. Taking over. Taking over, sure are. <laughs> I and actually believe I saw a picture. Uh, there's our way from there. Also, seems to be running one of the pubs over there as well, which was quite <laughs> interesting to see. Oh, that is class, and obviously from that division as well. There's the uh, qualification to the UEFA Futsal Champions League, which I may have my facts wrong here, but I don't believe New Zealand's ever. Oh, as a narrow shot comes in there from Zimmerman. No, they haven't. No, it'd be interesting, or well, not that I know of. No. Yeah, so certainly one for the history books there if they can finish the season strong with their respective sides with Bloomsbury. Hamish Gray, another one, signing a pro contract over in Italy for tier two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Dio Sola. Adam Paulson too in the talks of yeah. finalising his contracts there, and a few other names I've heard knocking around. As Oikawa gets a good turn over there, but a great challenge from Wall and another strong one followed up there. Straight into the face of Anthony Riley. He didn't even blink. <laughs> Made a steal, Anthony Riley. Yeah. You have to be to be able to. Referee Futsal at the level that he has. Yeah. And we're into the final minute here. Grand final. And the clock's running down now. 30 seconds to go. Hunter just clearing it away. Not wanting to risk any offensive efforts in the last 30 seconds around his D. Oh. Great ball through to number 14, Mark Zimmerman in the target position there. Couldn't quite get around Sanam and Co. And Riley just calling Ben Norman across with the towel. Just seems to be a few slippery areas on the call. Oh, one of them sit down and can't find it now. <laughs> There's somewhere. And sure tell so, at someone's going to find it, I'm sure, in a minute. <laughs> Hopefully not leading to serious injury as the shot comes in there from Zimmerman. Hey, great save by Hunter. Yeah, good bit of footwork from Houston down in that corner there. Couldn't quite come away with it. And 15 seconds left on the clock now. Canterbury in a promising position here as that shot flashes across the goal. Tight angle to score from and to, to beat Hunter, but not far off. Another one comes in, that one less tight. Nine seconds remaining. Canberra one, Southern two. Well, McDonald's will be happy with the men's final turnout, the sponsorship, won't they? <laughs> big M's all over the place. There goes the buzzer. So it's half time here. 
of the Ford Futsal Men's Super League final. Canterbury United 1, goal from Emberton. Southern United 2, goals from Houston and Sanham. Well, Jack, it's been a good half. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, exactly heading into this game, we were expecting an action-packed half, two great teams, um, and, and we've got exactly that. It'll be interesting to see or hear the team talks at half-time, um, how they both set up for the second second half, whether changes are needed or if it's a matter of, you know, what they're doing is, is working. I think for Southern, definitely a case of that. Some great combination play in there, and Hawkins looking very dangerous as always, but maybe for the Dragons, a slight approach, a change of approach to the second half. We'll find out soon And the Ford Futsal Super League. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll run a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with you very shortly. Rosine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The FIFA Women's World Cup is coming to the shores of Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Uniting Aotearoa, it offers an unprecedented opportunity to make our game bigger, better and bolder for everyone, especially for girls and women. Its legacy starts now. Our leverage and legacy plan will supercharge football in Aotearoa, grounded in two principles. Mana Wahine, elevating the spirit and mana of Wahine. And Tūranga Waiwai, our place of belonging, our foundation, our home. Built on four po or pillars, the power of opportunities, Faka Mana. Partnerships, Mana Natahi. Pathways, Ada. And Tiaki, people and places. Committed to the people and the land of Aotearoa, New Zealand, this plan leads the way by breaking barriers, paves the way for future generations, grows and strengthens the game through meaningful relationships, and creates a game for all and a place of connection. With Aotearoa United, Legacy starts now. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. So welcome back to the men's, the Ford Men's Futsal Super League 2023 final here in Wellington at the Akutangi Sports Centre in Kilburnie. Currently Canterbury United won that goal from Cameron Emberton, a lovely little set piece from the kick in from Hemi Innes. And Southern United two, first goal from Adam Hewson and then a Rocket there into the bottom right there from Michael Sanham. So, looking forward to the next 20 minutes. The Southern Challenge, who will be sporting that trophy in the airport. Well, it's an airport this evening. There's going to be one happy team, one not so much. And we're off. 
Yeah, it'd be exciting to see what the second half holds. I'm sure Southern aren't going to want to drop off and a one goal lead is not much in futsal. They're going to keep attacking, keep bringing it to Dragons, but the score stays the same as we get closer and closer to the second half. Maybe start to drop off a little bit, look to get more possession on the ball and just chew up some valuable seconds, although still plenty of time left to go in this game before we get to those sorts of decisions needing to be made. So both teams will come out firing. Yes, yeah, for sure. Good bit of link-up play there between Hawkins and Salmon, but just can't quite get that under control, the heavy touch there. Yeah, it's good, good hold-up play there from Zimmerman, still battling, manages to come away with it and drop it to Okawa, but turned over and ends up with Sanum for Southern United. I've got to say this, uh, just on the ball there, Watonvi. Um, for Southern, he's number two. Oh, fantastic first half. He's a, he's a dangerous player there for Southern United. Absolutely starting in that target role. Yeah. Still has to be up there. I think a uh, unchanged starting five to what they put out in the first half for Southern. So yeah, seems to be the case. Certainly they've got their game plan. They know how they want to approach this game and just a nice place ball there from Sanum. I was impressed by the whole Southern team, to be fair. Uh, in that first half, they it's a good combination play, good rotations. Definitely deserve the lead heading into the break, but it'll be interesting to see how the second half develops. Canterbury United Dragons obviously finding their stride a bit more as that game went on. And we get the ball out to Cooper, who tends to chip ball to Hawkins. Can't quite keep that in play there. Joseph to drop it to Okawa to get us restarted. And Joseph on the ball now. Brings it across to Zimmerman. Yeah. Again, good rotational play. Sanum opts for the Instant hit there, can bring it down. Maybe a well controlled, well weighted pass, but I don't think Cooper was quite ready there to react. He's actually one on one there, he could have turned. Yeah, I'm not sure he realised the time and space he had there. No. Uh, Southern United won't mind that. Is it? <laughs> Wanna Great be? turn Gets there from one time of Eve. Wow. That was a good bit of play there from the Southern United number two. Sounds a corner. The ball just dropped down there from uh, Chris Sinclair. Another FIFA referee. Obviously he's also a football development officer for the mainland region, so that's why he's not in this final. Yeah, wayward pass there, trying to find the feet of Hawkins, but just a bit too much on that. Relatively quiet start here for the teams. Two minutes into the second half. One chance from the man on the ball now, Joseph. And another one for him as oh, the shot shoot! comes in. And there it is. That's a brilliant finish from wow. Monty Joseph. Fintan Monty Joseph. What a fantastic shot that was and converted that excellently. Well, it's two apiece now. It's equal. It's a level setting. Two minutes in. Canterbury 2, Southern United 2, cracking shot. Just watching that again now on the replay. Yeah. Rockets that FIFA flag in the back of the net there. Great turn initially as well. Good bit of hold-up play just wow. to shrug off his man and well, first-time finish. The hunter became hunted there, didn't he? He couldn't <laughs> get, quite get onto the end of that one. Oh, that's brilliant. And 2 all. Even Stevens here in the grand final of the Ford Futsal Super League. Cut out there by Houston. Finding oh. Hawkins and potentially inviting Calls a foul there. Foul. Foul. It went out pretty hard there, Hawkins. And that was Oakman. Yeah, it's came over to apologise there. I'm not sure 
If there's anything in it, we get the replay right in front of our cameras. Yeah, that's a nasty one. Yeah, it was uh, Oakman almost Oak, that's in as an oak tree there. Just kind of <laughs> went straight into, well, Hawkins went straight into him. and yeah. a cracking start to the first half from you there, Dave. <laughs> Having the wordplay. <laughs> Second half, I should say, as we get another kick in. Similar territory to where the Dragons scored their goal in the first half, but they defend that well. As Hawk is on that far side, gets a shot, but blocked out by Ennis. Ennis has been pivotal in this match, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a key player for this Dragons. Uh, Canterbury United Dragons side. I think he's been a mainstay. Foots all in the Canterbury region for some time. Oh, that wasn't far away from Hawkins. Uh, but yeah, he's features for the uh, university sides as well. I believe uh, memory recalls correctly the MVP for the University of Canterbury winning men's team last year at the tertiary championships. Yeah. Great player. He's interesting. He's always been one of the, these players where he, he, he's just an engine. He's always working hard and he's always on the scene. Yeah, he's never he's never had that national call up that I, well, I understand anyway as of yet. But um, but yeah, no, he's certainly he's certainly an energetic player that's good to have on your side. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be in contention. Head coach uh, Futsal the White's Marvin Eakins, obviously just coached Papakura City to their second Super League Ford Futsal Super League title in a row uh, in the previous game on the same court, and I'm sure he'll be watching. This game very closely. Yeah, I believe the uh, FIFA futsal match windows for the men's and women's team were released a few weeks ago, so they'll be looking at what the schedule's going to be for the for the year and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, this year the uh, qualification for the FIFA Futsal World Cup. That's right, November. Yep. yep. And, you know, off the back of their recent oceanic success, the Futsal Whites, uh, I'd say they're a better place than ever to make a run into that competition and for the first time in history qualify as a attempted shot comes in there. Hard technique to pull off the wall. Yes, and uh, FIFA also announcing that there will be a Women's Futsal World Cup. I haven't seen the dates of that yet, but... Um, yeah, I'm not too clear on the, the dates either, but long overdue. I think it is great long news. Overdue, yeah. um, and just, yeah, brilliant for... Let's see. Young female futsal is in the country here. Those pathways just keep growing and increasing. I think it was yeah. at this very arena. Last, last year we were down for Youth Futsal Championships when that news got announced. Yeah, no, it's good, good to see. We're lobbying, people are lobbying that for a long, long time. Ooh, good shot there. Houston it was. Couldn't quite get his body over it and keep it down, but good power, good connection. Yeah. I like uh, I like the format you've got this year, Jack, as well, and losing a football with uh, men's and women's leagues being combined. Maybe that's something FIFA can think about for the Futsal World Cup. Absolutely. I mean, you see it in the background there, all the men's players even especially you know i think it was great to see in the women's final the uh, rapids and the surge like had on bay of plenty of teams um obviously didn't quite make that top four in the playoffs but they all turned out in support of their their respective women's team that's right and i think it's just great for the futsal community being able to support each other and watch these games oh 100 percent and then with the secondary school champs leading up to this this during the week as well the Students getting the opportunity to, the, those that are hanging around are going to see how they can aspire to the National League and then, of course, then beyond onto national teams. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's even a few players that played in that secondary schools championship that are across the Super League. Um, Fatima Hussein Ali, who was in the final for Waiwat Power, uh, was playing for Hamilton Girls High School. Very wow. promising young player she is. Oh, I saw, I actually, I um, this one scored, scored a super goal. Oh, yes. And yeah. I saw that in, um, on Facebook during the week yeah well some of the well, it goes to show you that some of these players would have played a lot of matches in this week <laughs> yeah I know yeah. lots and lots of futsal but I guess for those players in that secondary school age bracket there's a chance here for him Ennis, Ennis and a great goal oh Captain Ennis <laughs> what a sculpture <laughs> oh that is class the celebrations from the pride players on the bench we'll get another look at that one 
He's just shaking off his man, running down the left flank and on the volley, bam! Ripples the net. Oh, he's making a big difference here in this. That was his second goal, wasn't he? Got the first one early on as well, is that correct? So it's 3-2 now. 3-2, yeah, Canterbury United Dragons. Um, I think his first goal of the day, I believe, was uh, Emberton with the first goal. The Dragons, that's a great save there from Clink straight in his face. That's a sore one. Um, oh, no, you're correct, actually, yeah. yes. Hemi Ennis's brace. Yeah. Double for the day. So, yeah, trailing 2-1 at half time. The Dragons find themselves 3-2 ahead as a sore one there for Tyler Clink. And I'm sure this is worrying for the Dragons support staff, obviously. Mitchell ruled out of this game through injury. And they won't want Clink to go down. No, he's looking. He's looking pretty dazed there. I think Riley's boy oh, doesn't want to make that call, does he? Because he's the only he knows that the keeper that the keeper's off, but he's dazed. He's gonna get sent off. He's gonna have to go and get checked out, I think, there, Jack. Yeah, this is bad news for the Dragons. Looks to be Richards readying as that replacement goalkeeper. <laughs> Could see a very early fifth man <laughs> yeah. going on here. I don't think I've ever seen a fifth man where you're leading one goal up, 15 minutes to go in the second half of a final, but first time Whoa. for everything. Hey, do you know what? <laughs> 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 Could end up becoming a blessing in disguise, who knows? We'll see Richards now called into action. He'll be hoping that his teammate Clink can get the all clear from the medical team here. But for now, he sets up in goal and Charlie Bailey now with a bit of a breakaway but great challenge across there from Lewis Wall. Yeah, that was a good challenge there. He knew he was the last man, he had to make that. And looks like Richard's <laughs> goalkeeping debut is cut short. Kept a clean sheet. Yeah, he did, he was happy with that. <laughs>, <laughs>, Laughs coming from the bench. I'm sure a big sigh of relief as well. Yeah, good to see Clink's okay. That was a nasty, nasty hit he took to the head there. Good save, but nice football balls. They pack a bit of a punch from close range. Good seeing uh, Benjamin O'Farrell coaching Southern United team. Fantastic player as well. I'm surprised he's not playing anything on that, Jack. Just yeah, no, no, no insider knowledge there. Um, I know he's been coaching this whole season, so potentially, potentially a passion for coaching more than playing. Oh, he's fan fantastic player, that's for sure. Doing well here, obviously finding himself in the final of the Ford Futsal Super League but also finding his team trailing, so see what he has up his sleeve to try to turn this game around. And well defended there. Will it? Just muscled in this up the ball to see that roll out of play and he'll chop it short for Sanum here. Here's Will it to Sanum, here's Hawkins. Going to go back to Woollett. No, it's not. Oh, it's an uncharacteristic poor ball there from Hawkins. Laid it straight off to Mitchell. So Woollett's managed to get it back. Fantastic oh. footwork by Willett. He's got two options. Sanum and Hawkins goes for Sanum. Sanum quite, quite, can't quite control it. Yeah, that was unfortunate. That was a brilliant bit of play down the middle there from Willett. And obviously, a misplaced pass from Hawkins at the start. And then lack of control from Sanum at the end there. Nothing came from it, but hopefully just a bit of a wake-up call. Keep that focus. So important in these finals. You have to stay switched on the entire game. All it takes is a couple seconds. You switch off and... It's Willett again. I'm liking Willett at the moment, Jack. He's having a fantastic match. Look at this. Yeah, he gets a shot away as well. And he's got that passion in his eyes there. He wants to see his team equalise. Yeah, had a great game against Capital, semi-final. And here he is, ripping the shot away. And powerful one there, blocked out by Mitchell for the Dragons. And Hawkins will just recycle it across to Willett. Sanum and Richards battling there. Richards comes away with that and he's through a goal. The shot oh! and the goal! Sam! Sam Richards, the number 13, doubles the lead for the Dragons. Four goals to two. Sam Mitchell. I mean, but yes, fantastic goal. Sam Mitchell, I apologise. <laughs> Next to each other on the team sheet, Sam Mitchell. Yeah. They've done well there, mate. That's a brilliant finish. Oh, that was a fantastic finish. And, like, you can see what that means to Mitchell. 
Yeah, that celebration, you love that. Yeah. He bleeds Canterbury, and that was a fantastic finish there by Mitchell. It's also a massive goal in the context of the game. Obviously, a one-goal buffer. It's dangerous, dangerous lead. It's uh, one goal, and then, you know, straight back in it. But two goals will be feeling a lot more comfortable for the Dragons. They approach the second half of the second half. Now, what does Southern have, United have to get the way back into this game? Oh, and a bit of space there for Charlie Batley. Tries the cheeky shot around the corner. Innes comes away with it on this near side. And well defended in the end by Sanham. Anywhere will do for Cooper. But interesting, uh, David, obviously... 2-1 down at half-time, we're yeah. Canterbury United Dragons. Um, Southern, I would say, on the phase of it, looking a better team in the first half, but ever since that half-time break, they've come out and been the better team. Three goals. Yeah. No, look, uh, they've definitely been the more explosive side in their second half. I've got to say, like, going into half-time now, I mean, I, Southern were certainly looking the more dominant of the two. Um, but, hey, to be fair, if you look at you know, Hawkins having to put in some big shifts in that first half, looking a bit more tired in the second half and he was making a big difference there you're gonna have to hope the players such as uh Willett, and we're seeing that he's starting to play more more involvement in the game but they're gonna have to um you know they're two goals down they've got 12 and a half minutes to go still a long time in futsal but certainly at the moment canterbury are looking to be the more dominant not just on the scoreline but actually in possession as well yeah absolutely and southern united but the possession here Seeing if they can find the feet of Cooper. Mannequin finds him, but tussle over there. Well defended in the end by Dragons, although they don't quite clear their lines, and it's Cooper again with a good bit of hold-up play. Uh, Richards manages to make it out, and the foot left in there by Otambi. Yeah, Dragons kicking down on that far side as Grosner takes the court. Bottom of your screen. He's gone for the long one, so Richards. Oh, they've done well there, actually. <laughs> He's done very well to keep that down. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was planned or not, but Grosner, good control there. And it's Canterbury Bulls the ball again, and uh, Grosner stepping up by the looks of it. Yeah, just trying to find... Sorry, not Grosner. Basin behind. Richards. Grosner, number 12 in the Tiger roll, although rotating back now. And, yeah, just a bit of space out here on this near side. He's looking for that run. You see him... Off he goes. Well, they turned over for Southern United through Watambi. And a good tackle there from Bailey. Oh, um, yeah. Gave Watambi way too much space there. He was, he was on. Absolutely. Play restarts. Mannequin on the ball now. Finds Hawkins. Good control this there. Better play from Southern now. Mannequin. Yeah, some tight passes there. Doing well to keep possession, but Canterbury just shifting across, moving their shape. Yeah, they're just going, you can see now that Southern are actually just going for that wider option now in that rotation. So they're actually trying to stretch Canterbury a bit further out, and create some space through the middle. In fact, that's what they were doing very well at that in the, the first part of the first half, Southern. We're starting to see that again. So maybe they're looking back in the memories of what they were doing in the first half and see if they can replicate some of that now. Position shifts over to the Dragons. Attempting to beat his man on the far side there was a Canterbury United player, but that was off for a deflection. They'll take the kick in there, Grosner. A little bit of <laughs> fancy feet there, right in front of the crowd. Oh, we can all do that, Grosner. <laughs> yeah, well played there from Mannequin, just a, a bit of a Challenge in on Richards there and turnover possession through a kick in. Good link up play there on the far side and a foul called on Tarnaby, it looks like. Dangerous position here. All of a sudden, kick in. Let's see if they've got a set piece routine. Only the two fouls so far in this half, both the way of Canterbury United. And it looks to be Hewson lining up to take this one. On his left pig. Yeah, this uh, 
Oh, he's going for the shot. I thought he was going to lay off to Hawkins, and he has. Oh, and Hawkins going high. Just get over the top of it there. Jasper. in there at the end there but right in front of Anthony Riley he doesn't think there was anything and in the end great defending by Jacob Grasner yeah it was good defending there solid tackle but there's no foul Galp set oh. trying to receive and make that run up the flank could, could see he was clear but again good defense from Southern Yeah, well cut out there on the far side by Houston. He's charging down, shakes off the challenge and tries to find Watami in the middle. Hawkins tidying it up and a great block in the end there. Because Galt's it. He got the final yeah, touch he, on the ball. He did well there, didn't he? Desperation run back there to block that shot. Good opportunity though for Southern United. Made through Houston as the shot comes in there from Mannequin, but another block in. Is that a timeout called or not? I'm not too sure. Uh, potentially uh, another court. Something going on. I haven't seen any timeout sheets handed no. in front of us. Galp set calls. Oh, he's off here, but well read. Hunter and goal. Yeah, thinking about it, I think there's been a, a couple saves, but apart from those two goals, it's actually been relatively quiet half for Fraser Hunter yeah. and goal. Yeah, it's kind of these sort of spurts of action. Most most of the play is, <laughs> is to be fair, oh. at this stage, has been very much Canterbury defending, but they're defending well and, and Southern just not finding the gap. A bit more clinical on the counter there as well. Uh, Dragons as Southern try to fashion something there, but through a crowd of bodies. Reflects off for another corner. Just over 10 minutes gone in the second half here. As a shot comes in there from Lewis Wall. Another good block in there from the Dragons. And they come forward now. Wall on the ball. Sizing up his man, trying to find the right pass. He'll lay it off. So Houston, who <laughs> bit of footwork there from Wall, gets a shot across. And Cam yep. Emberton. Yeah, well blocked block by Emberton there. And again, the Dragons just Locking every attempt so far from Southern United. Yeah. Just shouts there from Coach O'Farrell just telling his players to hit that back post. Sam him lurking around on there for the tap in. And it's great defensive work. Great phase of having to weather the storm a little bit from Southern. And they're moving as a unit. Other Dragons getting in front. Every opportunity, another good tackle there on the far side. So it's Canterbury 4, Southern 2 here at the Fold Futsal Super League men's final. Just over nine minutes on the clock. Certainly Southern in these last three or four minutes seem to be having all the attack in play. But equally Canterbury defending very well and on that counter, explosive. As we saw from Sam Mitchell. Absolutely, I mean the Dragons, they had a pretty good exercise and exactly what they're doing here against Auckland City in the semi-final. I managed to catch the final five or six minutes of that game and it was fifth man, Ashby Peckham uh, for Auckland City, just peppering shot after shot after shot and the Dragons are equal to everything as a shot force wide from Sanham. So they're a good defensive team, our Dragons, they can hold on to a lead. Well, they still nine minutes to go in this half and... Southern looking yeah. not to let up. Be a tough ask for them to keep the scores as they are. Certainly would like another goal just to extend that buffer. Yes, yeah, certainly. A good ball over the top there for Ennis. Can't quite find him. Rolls out for Hunter and goal. 
So, Watambi back on. Had a short break there for Southern United. He makes a big difference when he's on the court. Good pressure there from Canterbury, but Watambi equal to the task. Good run down the flank to Willett. Back to Hewson. Hewson acting in that fixed toe position now. He's doing well there. Sanham, this is a good... It's a good four on the court, or five on the court here for, for Southern. It's making a difference. Oh. This is great play by Southern. Oh, and a great save in the end from Clink. That was brilliant by Southern. Yeah, Southern really stretching that Canterbury defence there with that rotational movement. Good fix, though, to flank and play, looking for the target and send him up there, just working between them two back posts and keeping the defence guessing. Foul comes in there. Oh, is that four? Oh, foul for the Dragons. Yep, scoreboard goes up. So Southern United committed the foul. No player wants to touch the ball. And a bit of a Mexican standoff here as referees just hurry the game along. So Max Lauritsen. Second referee, he's had, a, he's had a good match uh, under the watchful eye of Anthony Riley. Yeah, they've controlled this game well. They have. Let, let the play run. It's always going to be a physical encounter in yep. the final. Um, and I think every call they've made has been as I've seen it. I mean, I'm no ref. <laughs> <laughs> But I, yeah, I think they've had a good game. I think across the board, honestly, I've been impressed by the standard of refereeing in the Super League this season. Has a chance here. Hunter comes out of goal and he beats oh. him with another. Sam oh. Mitchell with the second. Look, great goal by Mitchell and Hunter. He knew he just came. Well, what choice did he have? But he came out and, and if you don't make the tackle, you're the last man. It's never going to win well, is it? And uh, look, oh, rolls it through the legs there as well. Cheeky uh, nutmeg. They poked the dragon and it breathed fire. <laughs> I mean, probably caught in two minds there as yeah. well. He had an option to his right than Sam Mitchell. So as Hunter's coming out, he's seeing that, that pass, but also aware, wanting to commit and, and stop the shot. And maybe just half second too late there. As we get a timeout called now, I believe yep. from Southern. Just want to steady the ship here. 5-2, Canterbury. And yeah, big task ahead for Southern if they want to get something from this match. Yeah, this, uh, this is not where you want to be. I mean, again, I mean, just uh, cliche, a game of two halves. But look, kind of coming into this half, you just thought Southern United had that edge. But Canterbury, certainly, different team. Um, yeah, it's not looking good for Southern at the moment, is it, Jack? No, no, it's not. But, you know, they've still got that quality on, on the court. And especially if they can kick into the same gear that they started the game with, they were ripping the Dragons apart. So... Seven minutes on the clock, three goals. Stranger things have definitely happened. But they want to make sure that they certainly they don't concede another and they can get on the scoreboard soon. I'm sure that'll lift the lift the spirits back up. Interesting to hit, see what effect that timeout team talk would have had on the players as no dice on the challenge there. Hemi Innes, one on one with Oban Hawkins and draws the foul there. Great challenge. Tough call that one. Oh, this is a, a dangerous place for Southern. They do not want to concede again now. But three goals in seven minutes is certainly never unheard of <laughs> no. in futsal. There's a long way to go yet, but you do feel that the momentum is certainly in the Dragons' favour at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, and with this free kick pretty much back bang on the 10 metre line there. Got players who can score from this distance. Southern United, everybody in the wall, including Hunter, the goalkeeper. Possibly just setting it up, though, before he moves. Oh, good oh, set running piece. Out. Oh, I like that. That is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Routine there. But That's a trickery. Uh, yeah, I just um, Coach O'Farrell looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Even he wasn't expecting that. That was a nice set piece. Um, yeah, look at that. They've practiced that one for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But Southern United defended that well. Well placed wall. And turned over now. Bit of room for Oban Hawkins almost finds 
Runner Cooper on that far side. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, Willett making that run there. Hawkins again. Oh, again, he just not quite as crisp as he was in that first half. Do it. Do it. Do it again. Managed to come away with the kick and though on that far side and yeah. see what they can do from here. Movement from Hawkins. Oh, he playing so he's completely run out of steam, Hawkins. He's got still got a lot more in him yet. Yeah, he's definitely one of those players that can just go and go and go, although. And going, going, going for a lot of the weekend so far. And as we let's tick down here, pressure of the situation and the tight legs across yep. the board uh, will be starting to have an effect on these players. Good, good ball. ball. Oh, oh fantastic good goal. goal. Uh, Open the ball up wide there. Great run into the back post. Classic futsal goal. And that's With exactly yeah, what Southern United needed. Get themselves a leg back in this game. Brilliant ball across there from Hawkins and actually a very tough finish there. Didn't have a lot of time to place that one in. Clink coming across to, to shut down the angle. So brilliant goal from Southern United. Still two goals to go, but it's a big, big step forward uh, in, in turning this result back around in their favour. Five goals, Canterbury, three to seven. Six minutes to go here in the grand final. I'm sure there's more drama in store for us. Hawkins again. Oh, Southern really putting that pressure on high up the court now. There's uh, Sean Cooper. Pressing, you can see actually, Jack, what's going on. Southern United are actually pressing much higher up the court now. So their defensive positioning, which was quite far back actually early on in this half, you can see now their position and their defensive structure much higher up the court, which is giving them the opportunity to get more shots away when they do get possession again. Yeah, just providing a bit of an overload, but it but, opens up risks well, like it, this, it where it's a 2v1, a great challenge there from Adam Houston. Tracking back, that had to be made. Him yeah. was about to pull the trigger. But as you say, that is the the you know risk reward of leaving players up. You create those overloads and give yourselves uh, more outlets and, and attack, but counter-attacking leaves you open there. And if not for the intervention of Houston, that yeah. brilliant goal that they just scored would be all for naught as the ball hits the roof here. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be a kick in from the side for that. Don't see it often happen with these high roofs, but it does happen occasionally. I think it happened in the uh, the women's final as well. I have quite a bit of power on you to get it that high. But yeah. Houston on the ball now with Hawkins and Southern looking strong and scoring their goal. Yeah, good play there. Fashion a bit of space. Matambi tried to spin away from it, but it's. Hemi Innes now on the break for the Dragons and Bailey trying to slip him around the corner. Can't quite sneak it past Cooper there it was. It's going to be again goal scorer a few minutes ago. Appeals there for a foul but nothing doing. It's good play by the Dragons actually. And that's a foul. Smashes into the ref fence. There's Charlie Bailey. Can't see him there on his screens but... Yeah. Saw one. Uh, he's just having a little lie down there, having a chat. <laughs> That's a Ben Norman from there. The, <laughs> from the floorboards. Yeah, not nice there. The rough one is a uh, third foul now for Southern, and they'll just want to keep an eye on that, especially as they get closer and closer to this full time. Yeah, well, can it be? Uh, they'll be looking to, to try and press that foul as well, and trying to get their five fouls on the ball. And of course, once you've got the five fouls on there, every free kick then on is a six metre. Kick from the second spot. Not easy to score from, though. I've got to say. No, no, certainly not as much of a shoe in as a uh, you know penalty kick in football would be, for example. Yeah. But I mean, there's players on this court that can certainly score from that distance. Yeah. And it's still, regardless, not something you want to be conceding. No. Certainly not in the finals of the Ford Football Super League. See a couple of substitutions there for Southern. Uh, Lewis Wall and Cooper Wink. Making their way onto the court. 
As you see that southern, southern bench clapping away now. Can, there's a bit of momentum coming back on the southern side now. Four minutes to go here at the Ford <laughs> Futsal Super League men's final. <laughs> the Akutangi Sports Centre in Wellington. Canterbury 5, Southern 3. Two goals from Innes, two from Mitchell, one from Emberton for Canterbury. And three goals from Southern coming from Watanabe, Sanham and Hewson. Here's Sanham now. Back to Sanham. Oh, just gets it to him. Oh, good play from Canterbury. Looking for a back post pass, hoping that Vincent Monte Joseph was going to make it there, but he didn't quite. And again, Charlie Bailey just pressing high into Sanham. So now uh, the Dragons giving Southern a taste of their own medicine and they're defending high now. Putting the pressure back on, probably realising, Jack, that they gave Southern a bit too much space and they conceded that goal from it. Yeah, absolutely. I think they'll be well aware, you know, two-goal lead is a dangerous one, <laughs> as they tend to say. Uh, if Southern do manage to get a, ga a goal back here in the final few minutes, um, that'll make for a very nervy ending to this game for Canterbury. So they certainly won't want to invite that pressure and, and you know, sit back too early and let Southern get their combinations, uh, you know, rolling around their goal. But in saying that, it's certainly also like another goal. They can make a three-goal lead here with three minutes on the clock. I'm sure they'd start thinking at the back of their minds that got one hand on the trophy. It's Richards now, good bit of play on that left flank. It's a shot across and almost. It's a good shot by Richards again. You just saw that, looking for that back post run as well. You need to have them back post runs coming on as a second option. Oh, okay, Carwood's just not quite, quite getting there. Again, you could say symptom of the tired leg, symptom of not wanting to overcommit. Numbers forward for Canterbury United Dragons. Yeah. There's been a couple chances there. Bailey a little earlier as well. Back post pass, not quite met by a Dragons player. No, Farrell just shouting to his team there, come on, last game of the season, give it everything. And that they are. Hawkins gets a shot away, hits the left post. <laughs> Bailey to the rescue for Dragons. And um, <laughs> that's just quick enough to react there. I need to got a ball to the head, but hey, you OK, Jack? Did I yeah, get you? we're all good, yeah. all good. Thumbs up to the people at home. Got your mic, I think, a bit. A bit. <laughs> so <laughs> Ali's still here, so we're still going all live here. Lucky he didn't hit the laptop or the control <laughs> desk. Um, but no, great shot there from Hawkins. Uh, <laughs> inches away from bringing this two-goal deficit to one. That had gone in, it's going to be a different different game as a 2v1 here. Cooper Jars gets a toe on it, and sorry, uh, Houston with the defensive intervention there. Bumped to the floor by Richards. Just over two minutes on the clock now. Southern hunting, pressing for this ball. But the uh, Dragons do well there to find Richards. Beat the press and there he is. Using he's body. everywhere at the moment, isn't he, Richards? He's oh. really getting stuck in. He's been having a great, not only a great final, but a, a great season uh, in the Ford Futsal Super League. Has Richards, solid, solid player. And there's Charlie Bailey. Oh, and just enough defensive work there from Kusin to take the sting out of Bailey's foray up front. And just under two minutes to go now. Potentially for the Dragons, starting to think a little bit about game management. Not going to want any cheap turnovers. But Oikawa here with a chance oh. and shot on the half volley. Couldn't quite get his body over it. I think you just feel Cooper breathing down his neck there and, and Cooper did just enough to put him off that shot. Yeah, shouts of one minute 30. On both benches, the Dragons, 90 seconds, they can hold out. And uh, we can see Sanham is putting on the fifth, fifth man jersey now. And here we go, action packed, end to this final, awaits us. Handball. There's handball there, yep. Yep. Middle of the court. Of course, if he kept his hands low and to the sides, they were okay there, but he did raise them, so that is a handball. Unnatural position, yep. And Southern, they need to get a goal in this now. And here comes Sanham with the fifth man jersey. It's all or nothing. Nothing to lose for Southern United. And need to keep that in. One minute on the clock. Canterbury 5, Southern United 3. 
fifth man power play now in action with Sanum putting on the fifth man jersey almost fine in the head uh, Batana behind that far post but not quite Sanum rotating out for Hunter that's on this defensive phase but with 53 seconds on the clock you have to think it's now or never for Southern oh and they give it away Canterbury with the ball 50 seconds and Canterbury going to just try and run this clock down it's the earlier in the day oh that's a shot flashes across there from Ribeiro earlier in the day obviously why but power two goals in the last 23 seconds to, to win the game Southern United will be hoping for similar scenes here in the men's final yep gone for the long ball and out the play and it'll be a corner they need to get one here in the next if they can get one in these next 15 seconds it gives them 30 seconds for the equaliser and it would be off into extra time if that does happen I'm sure Akutangi Sports Centre would absolutely explode if we get those scenes there's Sanum fifth man now happily uh, numbered five back of his jersey uh, good challenge in there from Ribeiro oh great work by Ribeiro strong defensive play oh it's there it is for Sanum that's one. 30 seconds. Was that with Tonabe again? It was. And um, a fantastic goal there. Yeah, initially That's great good. defensive work from Ribeiro, but crowded out. And then a bit of pinball in there. And it looks to oh be no, Cooper. That was Cooper. Getting the toe in there. Four, five, 30 seconds to go. Oh, you've got to feel for Ribeiro there. He put everything into defending that position. And it just wasn't quite enough. He just felt actually Canterbury just didn't surround that. Just the handball, but the position Southern. Out. <laughs> They'll get a corner off that. 24 seconds. They have the corner. They have momentum, Southern. It's Canterbury 5, Southern 4. Can they get the equaliser, Jack? That is the question. Oh, it'll be absolutely outrageous if they do. Stranger things have happened in futsal. It's good ball there. Finds oh, no. space in the middle. And that'll roll out. 15 seconds on the clock, you think one more chance really for Southern to get this equaliser. So what do you do, do you go long, would you build up? They've gone for the build up, Hawkins, still Hawkins. Oh, oh and Hawkins oh, gives it pass. away. Maybe, maybe one more chance in here for Southern, but the Dragons are going to do everything they can not to turn the ball over. The shot comes in there from Zimmerman, played it across, Ow. 3.6 seconds. You just got to throw that long, and get everybody up there. That's all you can do. This is going to be a, have to be a long throw from <laughs> from Sanum. There's a cannonball coming here, and here we go. And it's off, and it's coming down. Oh! Not far away at all. Almost in from the throw. Not sure if that would have counted. Oh, he has to oh, take a touch. Maybe it would actually. Play. I'm not sure. I've got a but feeling it does actually. I think it does, you're right. And that will be that. Canterbury United Dragons are your 2023 Ford Futsal Super League champions. A brilliant game of futsal that was. Oh look, and look, all credit to, to Southern Hay. They came back well there in the in the in the last few minutes of that of that match. And look, put up a fantastic performance. They can definitely hold their heads up high. But the full futsal Super League champions for the for the men's for 2023, the Canterbury United Futsal Dragons. What a great match, Jack! Yeah, absolutely it was. And you know, coming into the playoffs, Canterbury United Dragons they were in fourth place. They had the first v fourth playoff against Auckland City, which they won 3-1 after a, a similar defensive performance that we saw here, and then beating Southern United uh, on a relatively close game um, puts them. Uh, first place champions they'll be taking the trophy back to Canterbury yeah. and they will be incredibly stoked with their performance but as you say full credit to a Southern United side who fought till the very end and you know can hold their heads high uh, heading back home after this series they've had a great campaign both teams well and you look at that I mean look at what, what, a, what a great um, what a great form for the Southern I uh, South Island actually having two teams getting that far and I've seen in Canterbury winning, so yeah. Look, and uh, there's a uh, Hamish Mitchell with the arm all strapped up, playing with a reserve cold goalkeeper as well in the final for Canterbury. And, and look, he was up for the challenge, wasn't he, Clink? Yeah. Took a big, took a big hit as well uh, in the second half there early on. 
Had to cut step off for a bit. Richards come on. But uh, back in the game and he performed well. He did, he did well for the Dragons. Yeah, no, that they did. And as we see the scenes of their celebration, just a quick debrief, team talk, led by Captain Ennis. They'll certainly be stoked. And the smiles, I can't imagine, will disappear from their faces anytime soon. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I guess as they applaud their fans, and we see, we see Southern United also just reflecting on that game, a great game from them, as we've said. But we'll give the Canterbury United Dragons a moment to celebrate yeah. as they applaud the arena. And we'll be back very shortly. We'll take a quick break and get set up for the awards ceremony. Obviously, we know who the first place finishers will be, but we'll find out the Razine Golden Boot winner, Golden Gloves and MVPs. So don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back with the prize giving in just a moment. Thanks, Jack. Ford has a long history of building the cars you love while leading the charge on innovation. Harnessing the strength, style and capability you know and electrifying it. Because every generation has its own defining moments. The Ford EV and hybrid range and coming soon, the Mustang Mark E. Ford, built for now, ready for tomorrow. Razine has been voted New Zealand's most trusted paint brand every year for the last 11 years. Razine, the paint Kiwis trust for years and years. The fern is a symbolic representation for all New Zealanders and has been reimagined to represent all of football in Aotearoa, New Zealand. A circular shape not only symbolises the round ball used by all those that play the game, but also, and more importantly, represents the strength and infinite connection created by all those that play a part of the game. With each piece of the fern recognising and acknowledging those that make the beautiful game beautiful. The stalk represents our grassroots, our communities, our clubs, our volunteers and our fans. They are the foundation and are at the centre of all we do. The pinna represents our federations across the whole of New Zealand. Our federations guide and protect our clubs and communities, allowing everyone to be heard, to be represented and provide guidance and opportunities at every pathway. One brand identity with regional differentiation. Federations in New Zealand football working together to serve our communities, creating more than a game, creating a sporting whānau where everyone is welcome.
Hello? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, and they put it in front. Yeah. Hello? Hello, can you guys hear me? Can people hear me? No? Awesome. Cool. So, um, welcome to the awards presentation of the 2023 Ford Futsal Super League. My name is Georgie and I'm the Futsal Competi Competitions Manager at New Zealand Football. I, along with many other people, are so pleased to finally have completed a full Super League competition. After a revised Super League competition in 2022, it is fantastic to be able to deliver the complete competition in the new time frame after the calendar changes. It's been a great competition, played over six weekends across New Zealand, and it's capped off a big week for futsal with secondary school championships finishing up this week and our brand new inaugural Northern Regional Cup happening in Tauranga. This has been great to be able to showcase the futsal pathway for New Zealand and there were lots of secondary school uh, participants here today and vice versa Super League participants coaching and helping out at secondary schools. 
New Zealand Football would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our partners and sponsors, who without their support we wouldn't be playing Super Leagues this weekend. The partners and sponsors we wish to thank are Ford New Zealand, Resine, McDonald's, NZCT, Nike, Entech. For the, further to the sponsors and partners, there's a contingent of extremely dedicated New Zealand football staff who have helped make this competition happen. Special mentions go to New Zealand Football De Futsal Development Manager Ronan, Referees Coordinator Jamie Mew and the Brand and Partnership Team members Caitlin Troy and Jack Stenning. It was great to see some very skillful and competitive futsal played across the whole series. So once again, just a big thank you to all the players, spectators, coaches, facilities and support staff for making this competition happen. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dave Payne. Dave, Dave Payne. It's not working, so I'm just going to yell for a bit. <laughs> uh, futsal guru, former COO and futsal development manager for New Zealand Football to say a few words and pre present the individual awards for the competition. It stopped working. Like, That's all right. Well, I'm going to have to shout. Um, look, first of all, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be here this weekend, seeing everyone again, all the friendly faces and the community. It's an absolute pleasure and honour to be back here with you all. Um, uh, first of all, before I start talking and getting everyone up, I want to acknowledge Georgina, who has basically been here for the entire week running all these competitions, and although she's had lots of support, I know how hard that is. So look, Georgina, fantastic, well done. Please a round of applause for Georgina. I won't go into one of my big, big old long speeches. We're just going to crack straight into it because you probably can't all hear me anyway. Um, but look, we're lucky enough to have Giuliano Schmeling, uh, futsal consultant for OFC and uh, compatriot in futsal for decades uh, here, getting established in New Zealand. Uh, welcome, Giuliano. Thank you. And again, we have Rakesh Naido from the New Zealand Football Board. Again, a big supporter of futsal, helped drive the game forward over the years as well. Good to have you here, Rakesh. Thank you. Is it loud enough? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so first of all, we're going to kick off with the individual awards. Uh, we're going to start off with the men's Resine Golden Boots, first of all. And for the men's Ford Futsal Super League 2023, the Golden Boot, boot Adam Hewson with 13 goals for Southern United. Do you want to go in the goal and... Yeah. Hey, well done, mate. Okay, now for the women's full futsal Super League Golden Boot for 2023. And a famous face on the futsal scene, great to see. And that goes to Serena Patel with 14 goals for Canterbury United Futsal Pride. Yeah. 
not sure unless it's something. I'll yeah. go triple check, but yeah. Yeah, just let us know. Is it on? It, oh, it, not yet. It was. I, I did have it on. That's weird. Yeah, it's, it's We're just waiting to. Mike's still not working, so I'll just keep shouting as loud as I can. Um, it might come on in a minute. Okay, so the next award for the Golden Gloves, and you will get the plaque sent to you, but we want you to come up and get a photo as well. So we're starting off with the men, and for Golden Glove for the Men's Fut Fut Futsal Super League 2023, Southern United's very own Fraser Hunter! No, it's going to get sent to him. Good to see you again, mate. Okay, now going into the Women's Full Futsal Super League 2023 Golden Gloves. And this one is for Ybot Power and it goes to Nikki White. Congratulations. Well done. Well done, Nikki. Okay, now we're going on to the MVP for the competition. So, for the full Futsal Super League 2023 MVP for the men, starting off with Southern United, Adam Hewison. Congratulations, Adam. Congratulations, Adam. Okay, now moving on to the MVP for the Full Futsal Super League 2023 for the women. And this one goes to Papakura City FC's Jordana Bremner. Congratulations, Jordana. Well done, eh? You're going to get a photo with there and you've got your trophies going to come in the post. Yeah. Okay. Right, so before we go on to uh, the team presentations and the team awards, I just want to first of all have a big acknowledgement here. I'm going to start first of all with the futsal community itself. I didn't get a chance to say it before because the mic wasn't working. You might have heard it on the stream. But look, it's fantastic to be back here again, those of you who do know me. But those that you don't, it's just really good to see that this community is kept on strong throughout COVID into the next season and actually seeing the, the secondary school champs and then moving into this full futsal Super League. Um, this weekend, it's just great to see the strong community that still exists within futsal. And thank you to everybody that's been involved with actually the second school champs and organising this. And I'm talking about the people off the court. So I want a round of applause for everyone that goes and does all the work off the court as well. Thank you. And then we also just want to have an acknowledgement. We ask them to come up. Referees, can you please make your way up? We just want to acknowledge the work that you've done as well. Can you just make your way forward? Oh, well. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll get a photo with all of them. 
Nick at the four, yeah. Get the four that the yeah. Takes. Okay, thank you. Just going to get a photo with you all. Okay. Let's go by the goal. We'll get a photo with everyone, then we get the four of you from the final come up. Yeah. Or stay. Okay. Good four, actually, the, the four of you with the final. Can you stay in goal? Yeah, yeah cheers. Okay, well cheers. done. Well done, mate. Good to yeah. see. Ben, keep the four, four from the final, stay in the goal. And then you get the medals. You guys get the medals. Do men, men's final first. Okay. And um, we just want to now present the award for the men's final. The referees. And now for the women's final, for the full futsal Super League, the referees. Thank you, guys. <laughs> right, round of applause for the referees. We won't have this match without them. Well done. Okay, now we're going to go into the runners up for the women's and the men's full futsal Super, Super League 2023. Look, it was a, a tough final. It was great to come and, come and see that first final today with, with Wybop and Papakura. Sorry. Papakura City FC. Um, look, it was a great final to watch, and look, Wybop gave it the all, but you didn't quite get there. In the end, we want to welcome you up to come and get your runners-up trophy. Why what power, please come up to the centre stage. So you grab your medals and make your way to the goal. Make your way to the goal, please. Yeah. yeah. Hey, unlucky. I watched your goal from the secondary school chance. About 20,000 views on that, something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Unlucky. It's such a young child. <laughs> Okay, so a big round of applause for the Full Futsal Super League 2023 runners up. Why Bart Power? Okay, now going into the men's competition for the Full Futsal Super League 2023. What a fantastic final to watch. You know, the boys in blue, they, they went hard, they gave it their all, they pressed hard in that second half, wasn't quite enough. But look, fantastic final to watch. Southern United, please make your way up to the centre stage. So, you good, mate? Good to see you, brother. Hey, I'm like, it's a great guy.
And a round of applause for Southern United, runners up of the Full Futsal Super League 2023. Okay, so we'll start with the first final. Again, fantastic match. Good to see some of the veteran faces uh, and also the young faces in the team as well with Papakura City. They needed an extra time to win it. Wybop took them to the challenge. They went the whole way. But Papakura City got that goal in the end. The 2023 Women's Full Futsal Super League champions, Papakura City FC, make your way up to the centre stage. Still going, well done. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take, well, I think we need to take it over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Cat Pretty, can you just make your way just to the front, please? Where are you? Maybe just, just to the side there, and look. So, the full Futsal Super League 2023 champions, Papakura City FC! You get a lot of champagne in that cup. Fantastic, congratulations Papakura. Just put it to the side of the goal, thank you. So, the 2023 Men's Ford Futsal Super League champions. They poked the Dragons, they breathed fire. They came back in that second half. 5-4 is a fantastic final. The champions, Canberra United Futsal Dragons, make your way to the centre stage. Hey, 
Hamish. See you, mate. Yeah, broken mate. wing. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, thank you very hey, well done. Yeah. Great game, mate. It was brilliant. Well done. Good. Yeah. It's so funny looking at one grown up. I think uh, just before we uh, give out the trophy, I just want to acknowledge, you can see it in this team, I was saying on the commentary, there's quite often a lot of family names where you see the Manicums and, and the Sadams, etc. that are involved with doing futsal in the community, and the Mitchells in this team as well, and, and the Lapsleys as well in Christchurch. Again, I just want to acknowledge the families that drive futsal behind the scenes, and that happens a lot in the southern region. So quick round of applause for the families involved with futsal. Yeah. So, the men's full futsal Super League champions. Can the captain please make their way? Hemi Innes, just, oh, he's here there, sorry. There you go, I'm looking at the team. The men's full futsal Super League champions, 2023 Canterbury United Futsal Dragons. Congratulations, guys. And that concludes the full futsal Super League for 2023. On behalf of New Zealand Football, we'd like to thank you all for your support and all our sponsors as well. Safe travels home, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you.